Can soundtracks. Have have you guys heard the Battlefield 2042 rendition of the Battlefield theme? I have, and I really actually, don't like it. It's actually absolute haven't. horseshit. I kind <laughs> of nice. the thing that's in the game then. Though, is, uh, yeah. It's the, the the woman who composed it. She did the Joker soundtrack, and she did Shadow. Oh. I don't really get good. It. I just She's don't. Really yeah, good, but I don't. I don't she know what. I don't know music, what the right? deal is with this one. one? Uh, I don't know. No, Dune was uh, Hans Zimmer, but but okay. yeah, she's really because I, you know, she did a great job with both of those. But yeah, the Battlefield twenty forty two one is so like it's terrible, confused. It's uh, I, yeah. I, I watched Angry Joe uh, his review of it, and he was sampling a lot. He was showing, he was talking about the soundtrack. That soundtrack is one of the worst soundtracks I've ever ever heard in a video game. You've ever so witnessed. It's, it's oh, uh, it's interesting because um yeah I I remember because Angry Joe he didn't like the Battlefield three rendition of it but like Frank I I think that uh I'd the have theme to hear it again. Thing, I really like it I really <laughs> like three and four's renditions of it because I think that both of those games despite you know obviously not relying as much on like the trumpets and everything they still managed to retain the theme like you can yeah. hear it um whereas with I this think... one it's it's really tough to like it's it's almost like it. a cyberpunky electro it, yeah. I, it's it, electro screech i think would be just a good way to describe it um mm -hmm. i i think my favorite battlefield theme was battlefield one battlefield one's really good yeah, it had a great cool. orchestrally um mm -hmm. you know sound to it it's it felt very grand uh yeah. and serious and I, I really really liked it Battlefield Fives is okay. Um, uh, Fives is yeah, I it's it's, it's alright. It's okay, um, but the I will say I you know Battlefield One's music in general is good. I will say there's a lot of really great in-game music for Battlefield Five, um, right. menu music and stuff because they I know they have they released tracks for when when they had the Pacific uh, War DLC that came out they had a lot of music that's appropriate to that and a lot of it sounds really really good but man the battlefield 2042 music just sucks it just sucks man i'm enjoying these pictures too yeah i'm we just cycling through while we have a little chat look at me there hanging out in the car i have that one where he with the Geralt statue i have that little statue right up here i i have that one it's a it's a good one he's got the school of the bear outfit one of my favorites. Is the sword even sharp, though? Oh, Halo Infinite's out now. I just yeah. realized. Hey, yeah. Fringy, why don't we have a really cool four-player co-op of the campaign for EFAP Gaming? Uh, oh my no. god, that's amazing. Let's do it. Oh, what a great right. idea. Shit. No. Let's do it. Oh, hey, uh, after I play a mission, I might want to go back and replay that mission. <laughs> Can no, do that? finish the no, whole game. I I no, you're you're asking a lot there, Fringy. I mean... Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I wonder if they it, actually do a free play <laughs> after you finished it, so you can do all the stuff again. I don't know. Do you remember? I heard, um, I got different kind. Of, uh, I heard different things. Do you guys remember Game Dev Tycoon? That game. Do you ever play it? Uh, I do. Yeah. I know of it. I really never played it. it. Do you remember? I, like, I found it. You run a couple trees in that game, and one of the one of them is when you're building your engine, you can put in different like features, and I'm pretty sure. In like the initial fucking era, being like all the way back when gaming started, one of the first things you can put in is level select. Well, I mean, it, it's uh, I know it's an open world game, but like Grand Theft Auto Five had fucking Grand Theft Auto Four. I'm pretty sure it had like that you could reselect missions and replay them. This <laughs> like, is the um, open not... bar thumbnail, by the way. Yeah, it's great. How it's neat really is that? Nice. Felt like it was pretty awesome to show it on on whatever stream I end up on. Look at that bunny lady back there. back there. That's, uh, yeah, yeah. Look at, look she's at scaring you. you oh, wait, you, you know what? This that. one isn't the newest one. Damn it. I don't know where the newest one is because there's Rags oh, is in the newest one. <laughs> oh, my God. Idiot. I'm sorry. If you, well, you know God. what? That'll be cool. This is like a little bait, and you'll see the complete one tomorrow, huh? I guess. That's when open the bar is next. Yeah, there you go. Oh, my goodness. I'll, I'll, have to, I'll have to go to see it. But now, I have to see it now that I've been told I'm in it. Now I, you'll I have to be satisfied with seeing more of me and Ranks hanging out with yeah. movies. 
American Psycho, The Room, The Lord of the Rings. <laughs> the perfect trio. <laughs> we, we got our AR-15, our doggo. We didn't even realize there was, one, there was a gun there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't even see that, too. Nice. That's what I noticed first. <laughs> Just, I'm like, hey. Gun. <laughs> We're doing Grimbus. Oh, that is Grimbus. Wait, what is Fringy's face? Uh. So... Maybe a crocodile? In terms of Lego, I'm not yeah. sure, actually. I'm what Lego sure piece that. is that? That's the crocodile know. seven. <laughs> I like I like Mahler's eyes. <laughs> Your big ol' eyes. I look a little scary. You're like, mm -hmm. You have your carrot? I got a carrot and your, um your nose. I'm holding something else there too. That's a I think that's a drink. Am I backhanding Mjolnir for double damage? Oh, uh, for double damage. Fringy's got his beverage. It's it's got the 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 foam on top. We got mm -hmm. a bit of head on that booze, and uh, I got my mistletoe. I'm just looking for a kissing. It's the out out prowling for smooches. Adorable. Got some memes now. If you guys are ready for that. Let's see. Thanks for helping with my crochet project, Mahler. No problem, buddy. They're both watching RLM together. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, representative of real life. We do this every once in a while. I, I like that how the, the yarn is all around you, like over your head and everything. <laughs> I'm helping. I wonder where the crochet thing came from, if that's a reference to something that we've said. I don't know. Might be. I can't recall. I can't recall. Well, we got a laptop stand and everything. Yeah, we come we company people through many different events in life. It's pretty cool. Imagine someone walking in on this and you have to explain to them that no, 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 this is a laptop. <laughs> it's not even on the desk. It's not even. It's not on your lap. It's on the desk, but it's even one removed from. The it's even up above the desk. It has a stand uh, that keeps a, it off the desk. That keeps it off your lap. Keeps it nice it's and top, cool. top. It's top, top. I look very much ready to be autopsied here. Hopefully I'm still alive though. I seem to be. The, the happy expression. I'm glad the tentacles seem to be really still springy and sticky outy. Yeah. Even after being in the bag and all that. Look who it is, Doctor Who. Oh my goodness, it is Doctor We're Who. We're just chilling down there. Is Where's that... Doctor Where? <laughs> so there's a, um, that's Santa. Is that Santa? I think so. I think so. Looks like he it. He must be a very young Santa. A young like Santa, the Chris, yeah. Like the Chris Kringle uh, claymation one. I forget what it's called. I think it's called Santa Claus is coming to town. Coming all over town. What you doing? Just viking. Oh, there's two ragos. Ooh, boy. <laughs> Double damage. Uh Mm-hmm. Hello, Infinite is on. You guys are doing super chats, fake Halo fans. Hey, if they would have given me fucking preload, I would have played for an hour on stream. But they were like, there's no preload, fuck you. But I didn't for some reason. If they would have made me care, I would have. Here's another fun thing. He's Microsoft great. has been advertising for a whole week that there's going to be a preload, but there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> this room like Microsoft on the Xbox was like preload soon and free for free was like no we never said we do a preload what are you doing <laughs> so How there was a happen? fault here what it, I feel so like this... Microsoft just says things and just lets 343 take all the, the shit <laughs> that's what it feels like to some degree at least we have a lot going on in this room so this is clear this is a Nintendo themed oh, room boy. right yes it is We've got the controllers on the wall on the right. We've yes. got our NES controllers. And this... Got this... a bunch of Yoshi. Got Kirby are those SNES the controllers? No, those are N64. What, N64s are, are like rectangles, aren't they? In our, in our oh, hands. Sorry. One no, not N64. NES are rectangles. No, those are the SNES ones. Yeah, those are SNES hands. ones. The NES one is behind you. And on the wall yeah. is the N64. That's my thought. 
I out nintendo you, Fringy. Are you embarrassed? You didn't out Nintendo me. I was looking at you <laughs> while you had it hovered over the N64 controllers. I just imagine. No, I was, I was talking to Rags, and, and then you. I was talking about what Rags said. I don't care what you saw on my stream. <laughs> what I want to discuss is what this piece of furniture is. Is there like a part underneath the cushions that you pull out? Yeah, that's you pull yeah. that bomb bit out fully, and then you'll be able to. Those little handles will make up a bed once you can pull yep. it. I, uh, oh, okay. Man, I think I want that Yoshi plush or that Luma plush. That's uh, that's cool stuff. I like those. Mm hmm. I like the Book of Mormon poster. Look at that. Or well, yeah, uh, so do I. Looks like it's autographed by all the. Uh, yeah. It does. Uh, yeah. the, the music to uh, people. Yeah, there's a turn. Now to jazz. figure out what's on this shelf in the top left. The scorpion. Mm. Kind of, kind of something. <laughs> A long forgotten apple <coughs> thing. I, I don't know. In my mind, that it's joke not... went, some, went somewhere. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, chat. It's Yoshi. That's how Yoshi says it. Chat, get him. <laughs> you agree with me? They don't have to know that. Get him. I do. <laughs> he does. Joel is hiding his, his, his position from me. My power agree level. With me. What a backstab. Get him, chat. Go. He's only got so much yeah. goo. Are <laughs> uh, trying to slow him down, or they chase him down like an alleyway with goo? <laughs> I think everyone in chat is like, "It's pronounced this way." They're all using loads of different ways of saying it. It's good, <laughs> but I'm just Yoshi says Yoshi, so I don't I don't know what I'm meant to do. And I'm pretty sure if I check like the proper Japanese pronunciation, it's Yoshi. So yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> it's not it's not Yoshi. I'm sorry. You could say it if you want, but it's Yoshi. Well there you go. Fring gave you permission to say Yoshi if you wanna. Oh you got the coon! Yeah, man. Up there that. with the I just thought you had the coom. <laughs> the oh, you had the no, coom! Hell yeah! <laughs> I got Mysterion. Yeah, he's over there. Here, as, uh, up on my shelf. They're neat. Yeah, they are. Oh, and you got Link too. And oh, there's Mysterion. Yeah, you just need to push it over a little bit. And Professor Chaos. <laughs> mm -hmm. The best characters. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got Ganon too. That's 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 okay. And check this out. What are we up to? Look at this. All kinds of shenaniglorms. Mm. It's some... painting some figurines, apparently. I'm trying to recognize what this thing is. I don't know what it is. Looks cool though. Mm -hmm. Got so many paints. Oh. Little block in the background. Yeah, we're keeping people company with all kinds of shenanigans. Beautiful. We've got a whole set of these uh, recorded into a different meme fab, by the way, which will be out at, probably in January. Because um, so you know glad. how everything works, precious EFAP audience. Sitch and Adam free as fuck. I'm assuming that's... To do with Cal Rittenhouse? I don't know. Um, but Sitch and Adam, pr 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 you know, the show that should should be known as Adam and Sitch, I'm pretty sure, right? That's that's the way it's supposed to be known. What else just said that? That's fine. Oh, hey, I think I remember this one. It was like posted under like rags, was saying, does do any does anybody read in our audience? And they were like, here you go. So there you go, rags. <laughs> I mean. I I can show you some books here as well. Doesn't mean I can read. <laughs> you got Shad's book in there as well. The book thief. I am the messenger. The secret history. Stormlight archive. Oh, so many things I don't even know, but I know the names of. Liar! Liar! Hmm. Does it make you a lesser human being to own pop figures? I can't remember. Yes. Did our science team get back to us on that? I don't know. It's like minus one human. 
Good shelf, though. What yeah. figures those are? God, I, I wonder if it would be cool to get a number on how many, in how many different versions of a figure Darth Vader's been made into. Yeah, it's at least two. It's probably going to be at least two, yeah. Man. Oh, shit, man, we're hanging out with Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> the hero J. J. of the prequels. J.J. Binks? And, uh, I think a lot of the uh, people call him Jar Jar Abrams. <laughs> he's, he's, you know, he's that, he's, he's great, he's great. What? I have a sword. Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our kitchen of critique. I, I wouldn't be against that. Um, some kind of, if we, if have grows big enough, we will have, um, you know, a, a food section. Ooh. Uh, metal, you can probably head it, right? Sure, sure, I'll do and, it. Um, maybe with, like, Squid Game level stakes. Hello? Get it? Has my voice mm. not been coming through? No, it does. No. Since, like, ever? Uh, last thing I heard you say was, like, felt like ten minutes ago. Yeah. Huh, minutes I guess ago. RTX just decided it would stop existing and working, so. <laughs> would, I guess yeah. I... Okay, whatever. Well, I'm back now. I have, I have been commenting thoroughly on all of these things. So, uh, <laughs> do you want to take my? You'll have to take my word for all my commentary for a lot of this stuff. I thought maybe mm -hmm. you were getting some coffee or something. No, oh. no, no. Fringy's the coffee drinker. True. Oh, this setup's pretty that. neat, huh? What we got? We got some cigarines. We got. Look at all those remotes. One for every time of day. Man, what is that third one? A lot of buttons. Those those lamps on the left and right are interesting. The great little, little mood setters, you know. Mm. They're very phallic. See, I wasn't gonna go there, but you went there, so it's fine. It's been there now. There has been. Oh, I like man. when I, when the hair sticks up. It look it, it's like I'm a punk from a post-apocalyptic gang. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh man, so uh, this this is frustrating. So I have Game Pass, but I have infinite multiplayer installed on Steam. I can't like there's there's no way of of game passing that install on on uh on Steam. So now oh. I have to re-download the multiplayer on the Game Pass and oh, then download the what's that? If you would have said something earlier, I had the same problem. The the I, I figured it out. I could have oh, told you, but no. Well, well you can tell me now. Hard. I you can tell me now. Well, you're already <laughs> re-downloading it, right? No, so... no, no. I'm not re-downloading it. No, oh, okay. So on Steam. what what I did, you can do like manage game or something, or there's like a drop down menu. Okay. And then you on, can change to the campaign. Okay. To Halo the campaign, and then at least I had a button that it said get for free or something. That finishes the the purchase apparently. Wait, I, sorry, I I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, it's because uh, it's fucking weird. I don't know why why it worked for me that it's way. It's because what are we... it's because campaign is considered DLC on Steam. That's why. Yeah. We have Jello. So. Oh wait, you're on Steam. Above yeah, the Jello one, what is that? There, it's like an ice cream with. Oops. It looks like some kiwi, and. I guess those pistachio. are orange slices, like mandolin, man, ma mandolins, mandarins. Those are not mandolins in the ice cream. That would be a that would mm. be a different beverage entirely. Um, so I guess yeah, I don't even know what that is. Like, it looks yeah, ice cream, kiwi, and uh, mandarins. You're gonna take the vanilla, the butterscotch, or the pistachio, Rags? Uh I'm gonna go with the butterscotch. That sounds yeah, good. Like, yeah, it does sound good. I ain't gonna disagree with that. That sound pretty good. Butterscotch. Oh, jeez. This is an image. We are OGs. Look at that. Oh, oh my no. goodness gracious, it's Ritlock Brimstone. I would love to get one of those. Um, those were the collector's edition releases for Guild Wars 2, and that was a long time ago, of course, but... Man, I need to get my hands on one of those. I bet I could look around and find someone who's selling them, but I bet they've all sold out by now. But I'd love to get one of those uh, figurines. Is that just a bunch of skulls on the floor? Um. Does he just come with a bunch of skulls? 
I guess that's a part of the platform Where? he's on, yeah. Skulls? Mm-hmm. Yeah, skulls? right next to your, your paws. Oh, yeah. I I don't know, actually, if he comes with the skulls. He probably should, though. Because fuck skulls. humans. I mean, humans had it are coming. okay. I had it coming. I, I think humans are alright here and there. Oh no, the corpulent. <laughs> <laughs> As an additional cost Never to cast a spell, sacrifice three food tokens. No. Roberto the corpulent. So let's see, defender. <laughs> so he can only attack, or he can only defend, I assume. Uh, as an additional ca cost to cast this spell, sacrifice three food tokens. That's, oof, man, that could be, yeah, that's good. Beginning of each, at each turn at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice an additional three food tokens or Roberto the Corpio. Man, that is an expensive card. Maybe he's like really good defense though. I don't know. His six six. It's got a six. Is that well, I mean, good six or? is it's it's pretty good, but it ain't worth sacrificing because when you sacrifice something, you're not tapping it. It's gone. So, yeah, that's a uh, that is an expensive card to maintain. Now, granted, it has a very low cost. It only's got <laughs> two fire, two mountains to, ca uh, to cast, <laughs> cast. But jeez. <laughs> uh. I mean, <laughs> listen. It depends. Okay, like <laughs> sometimes. That was a clip that I'd forgotten about because we were talking about the Predator movies uh, on. Uh, it wasn't open bar. I think it was a happy hour and. Um, in the Predators movie that Ro Rodriguez was responsible for, I think, in most part, I can't remember if he directed, wrote, or whatever, but um, spooky Predator dog is running at somebody and it has like super armor, and um, I think she's down to a pistol, she fires it at a bunch of times, and then she goes to shoot herself in the head, um, because it's not going through, and I was just like, huh, that is kind of like, probably... A smart thing to do if you get to the point where this horrific alien dog creature that's growling and snarling and huge and has enormous teeth is coming at you and you can't think of how to kill it and you got a couple bullets left, it might be worthwhile to just spend that one on yourself. So anyway, next topic in the happy land of EFAB. <laughs> Let's see. We'd like to hear if pl we'd like to play some go oh no. So get out. I'm pooping with my. <laughs> I'm watching as you leave. You don't want to go to the toilet without your weaponry, I'd say. You never know what's gonna happen, you know. A lot of stuff could happen in that toilet. You never want to be caught true. vulnerable. <laughs> it looks. It really, truly looks like a throne. Indeed, I'm just on it with. Like this little pistol down there as well. Earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Just in case. It's a redundant safety feature. Um, I don't know what to make of this. It just seems some kind of weird propaganda is being made. <laughs> <laughs> average fa fan, average fringy appreciator. The mask and a boomerang. Or maybe it's a well, flute. Well, I'm inclined to agree with this. You're part of EFAP, <laughs> though. No, I know, but I mean, you know, the appreciator. Look at that schlong right there. And look at how his arms bend weird. That's just, that's, that's, you know. I was going to say, at least the average EFAP fan doesn't need to go to the hospital immediately. <laughs> <laughs> so I like how his, his legs are so twisted <laughs> in a way. <laughs> I think that's what I thought when I first ever saw this meme. I was like, wait, why is he all crippled and stuff? What's the joke? I don't remember when this meme first turned up. Feels like it's already either. been forever. I feel like I grew up with this meme. This meme was a part of my childhood. Some say Charmander is the best, some say it's Squiddle, but deep down we all know that Shelob boning Frodo is gay. <laughs> 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 oh yeah. Oh that that's good. I did not see that one coming. <laughs> that was a fun inference from the meme fab. Just like wait what? Where did you, you learn to the three act day. structure? On a farm. Ozod. 
he has trouble watching close look videos as well. This is when we were talking about how um, split screen is like held now exclusively almost by Lego games. Like, well, not really split screen, mm. but you know, couch co op, I guess, call it. Don't think that's true. No, there's going to be more than one. I was just, just an exaggeration. Much like this is probably an exaggeration. Well, let's take a looky dookie. The Strange 2. That's what it's hmm. going to be. It's going to suck. What's the thing in the top <laughs> right? <laughs> is that... Sp oh, that's... Like uh, Spaghetti Monster? That's, is that, that's Shimagoroth? Yeah, is or it? what Fringy said. Shiagoroth? Or maybe it's something else. It looks is like it someone's Shep using something there. The Hawkeyes? Uh, it looks some purple outfit. Oh, wait. Know. So that's... I think that's... Uh, I think that's Wong. Because like, the one above is Doctor Strange. Yeah, and the one on the other side is America Chavez. Okay. Well, that's going to be that's amazing. That's a Lego set for, the, uh, for that movie, yeah. I can't wait. Uh, uh, yeah, I think that's all the movie's going to be, probably, is. I understood that reference. Exciting. Uh, yeah, it's going to be great. <laughs> so what in chat said is it true that you do a review every year when leftist has no fails excuse me what what <laughs> when leftist has you no say that again. <laughs> <It's> a, <laughs> leftist has many long. fails what are you talking about if so then you're holding on pretty well I have no idea what that means but um I just even read mind. that <laughs> I just I'm baffled yeah. by the the, the, the sentence it's so interesting Oh, there it is. That is an odd one. Also, this is fun. This is, this is from when we're watching the Resident Evil the guy with the tiny glasses. He did have very tiny glasses. Yeah, narrow Those sizes. just seem like they'd be annoying and not helpful <laughs> at all. I, don't I think know. some I've people were like, no, no, they have purpose so that they don't get in your way when you're looking around at other things. And I'm just like, what the f***? <laughs> right? You can't see the other things because then you might have glasses. Right? I have to. I get to see most things well, but when I'm reading, I have to snipe. <laughs> Literally, yeah. I want to focus on that one letter really hard right now. I saw I this. Hold my breath. And I couldn't tell if it was entirely original or it was taken from one of your comics for you. So I thought I posted it. It was here. taken from the recent page. Yeah. Did you. So the text is what they put on there then? Or. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's in Fringy's universe or not exactly. I, from the the, the one. Was, is that from the game? From, I forgot the name. Oh, it looks Dark, like Darkest Dark, Dungeon. Dungeon. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's what but I mean. Yeah, okay. The, the comic is, that, that's that's mine. New comic page up now on Twitter and everywhere. And like, Twitter.com. Oh like Twenty minutes ago. Go oh take a goodness. look. I haven't checked. Well, the voice is just so annoying, people do what you tell them to do to make you stop. Like, mother, it would be epically <laughs> bone-chilling, downright celestial. You were to create an inciting event by transferring the drinking glass to my side of the table now that 12% of our time together has passed. Holy shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Please, no. The glass at them. <laughs> memes you can hear. A little bit, yeah. That's really funny. I like that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is just an obvious meme, but why not? Ruler really of <laughs> Spice Melange. I mean, I hope if if Stalin Skarsgård doesn't reprise the role, maybe Bob can take over. I don't know. Hey, my water is empty. Thanks, Mauler. What fine looking <laughs> Bob or TV show. Why does his mind look like that? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, I saw somebody, um, <laughs> this really upset me, I saw somebody say like, oh, you know, like, WandaVision or Loki are up there with, like, Daredevil Season 1. That was, that no. was upsetting. No. <laughs> Daredevil was an actual TV show, the rest of them barely qualify. It's a show with characters and, like, a plot and themes. It's... <laughs> it's got a story Man. in it. What are they gonna do to him? Uh, but, uh... I, we'll see. We'll see. God, I feel like this meme just evolves over and over again to the point where he's like, well, but it is this. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> All right. <laughs> I didn't recognize him at first, but I'm not that I familiar with him. I didn't recognize him at yeah. first, obviously. <laughs> I recognize what who he looked like. <laughs> Which, you know what? You're not wrong, so. I like exactly. it. Exactly. 
I'm the voice doing the voice disguised as another voice. That's when he was doing the, uh, the impression with his goofy In voice. It's not even yeah. his voice, yeah. Mm-hmm. Weird times. He was very proud of that. You could tell. Mm -hmm. We kept coming back. He was like, all right, yeah, all right. You go right in, you do that. Um, And now to close us off for the day of, of memes, I feel like I saved mm -hmm. the best to last, as you guys know. Top Ooh, quality. Boy. <laughs> Activity <laughs> lantern. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. So, so floopy. It's so terrifying and floopy. Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Objectivity lantern or some shit. <laughs> what? What is an objectivity lantern? Uh, it lights the way. It does, and yeah, I I need to just figure out how to just get myself a little more under control. I'm all I'm flopping around all over the place. Hey guys, let's go on a journey. I like to think <laughs> I was saying hi to Rags though to make sure I was on you. You know, you know what this this is going to be a deep as fuck reference that. I, I okay so when I was very young we're preschool level in age I didn't I didn't get to I didn't get held back or anything is what I'm just saying um but in preschool when it was Halloween we would have a song that we'd sing called the spooky walk I don't know if anyone in chat knows about it or has heard of it we're gonna take a walk, walk to a place that's dark and spooky and and in you'd go to different places. You would walk through a field and it, it, it would describe the grass and there'd be sound effects. And then there would be a lake and you'd swim across the lake and you would get to the end and there was a cave. And in the cave, you were supposed to like reach out and touch the walls and they'd be all slimy and everything. And I'd, I would always get very scared during the cave part because the voice that would do the little song would be like, oh my goodness, it's so scary in here, and it's all slimy and dark and cold. And what's that sound? Rattling bones and rattling bones and ghostly <laughs> moans. And I, I just the way it was, it was so just visceral to me as a as a tiny little paparino. And I I would get scared during the section, and I would just like close my ears and close my eyes until that section was over. And man, this this picture, this goofy meme with Mahler. It reminds me of the section in the cave where you're walking through the cave. And I don't know why, but it does. Okay. It takes me back to a different place in a different time. I don't know how I don't know, man. <laughs> it's a weird one. We learned a lot today. Yeah. Um, oh man. That spooky walk. Spooky yeah. walk. Oh man, it's I'll never oh, forget it. It's something. It's just ooh boy. Thank you all. Water your memes. Uh, now we shall commence the Super Chat catch-up. Okay. Yeah, I know, right? Right on time. Oh, we're okay. doing it. I might need a moment to calm down, but mm -hmm. I think I think we're alright. I think we're okay. I think we're alright. We're gonna be okay. You wanna, you wanna go get a, go get a, a water is what you get, right? Um, a... I think, I think I'm okay. I think I'm alright. All right. I think that I've, I think I've grown as a person. I think I can handle that sort of thing now. Hmm. So I guess what I'll do is uh, we'll knock out just the ones that came in today, real quick, and then we'll 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 do streamlibs, and then we'll do the last EFAB that we did, and hopefully that'll knock out a decent chunk, and we'll see where we go from there. How about that? Yeah, sounds good. Um, I, I will say though, one of the songs that we did have though was really bopping. It was Hap Palmer, is the name of the guy or gal? I think it's a guy. Who who made it? It was called a Witch's Brew. That song's bopping, man. That's a great song. Even to this day, I like because I have a copy of it uh, that I've saved in MP3, and I'll listen to it. It's really good. I won't spoil it by singing it or anything, but man, you guys should check out Witch's Brew by Hat Palmer. That's that's some good shit right there. What does it mean for a song to bop? Oh, you yeah, you gotta feel it. You gotta feel it, Mahler. Yeah. I can't just tell you. You gotta feel it. Metal knows what's up. You gotta oh, yeah. feel it. What's the song again? I need to listen to it now. Witch's Brew by Hap Palmer. I'll, Here, I'll I, be, I, I can get you a link to you. Real quick. Oh, I think I got it already. Unless it's a fake version. It's the, If you type in Hap Palmer, Witch's Brew is the first thing that comes up because it's just. Yeah. 
That it's it's just the tits. <laughs> is it as good as the song from Scooby Doo on Zombie Island? Oh, on the Zombie Island, I forget the name of it. On Zombie Island, or are we talking about um the 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 Hex Girls? No, I'm pretty sure I said Zombie Island. <laughs> Oh, okay, because because I think we talked about really good songs before, so I was just making sure. Um, which uh, which song from uh, which song from Zombie Island? Uh, if you YouTube it, you'll be able to play it real quick. It's uh, it's one that's like it's hard to replicate because it's very like kid rock or, or children's rock almost. Anyone chat? Uh, you know what the it, Terror oh, Time again? Oh, you talking about Time? That's the one. Yeah. Yeah, man, that was a good one. Did that one bop? Uh... Uh, I don't know. I don't know, <laughs> I'd have to listen to it again. I'd have to really get back into it. I do I do know it's a good one, though. There is a science. That was a great bop. movie. I really like Scooby-Doo on Zombie Island. Oh, dude, we'll, we'll eat that movies that shit one day. It'll happen. I think they really appropriately did the... the we'll, we, we'll talk about it another time, but that... That movie's good. I I think that's my favorite of the um of the the old animated ones. It does rank it pretty like high four. for a lot of people, and rightly so. What is the best Scooby Doo movie other than that one? Do you reckon? Hmm. So are we are we including like we're talking about all of the like all the ones ever? Or are we uh, narrowing it down to maybe animated ones or the live action ones or hmm. maybe a time I mean, period? As far as I know, you got the animated ones and then there's only two live action ones, right? Or am I missing some? Well, there there's were there were the ones, made yeah. for TV animated ones that were older. I, I think like 70s, 80s. But when it comes to that was that was where Shaggy, Scooby, and Scrappy would be at they'd be teachers they were teachers at a like a spooky school and you had like the little werewolf and the little mummy and the little um frankenstein they were like kids um i forget what it was called like it monster was like school or something yeah something like that it was like a monster school um but uh, i don't remember too much about it it just that it exists and i i saw it many 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 years ago um what about cyber chase well, there was there of the anime of the newish animated ones around the two thousands or so. We had Zombie Island, Cyber Chase. Oh, Ghoul School. The, Ghoul School is what it was. Okay. Um, we had the the space one, Alien. Uh, what was it called? Alien Attack or uh, there was the Alien one, and then there was the Witch one, uh, Scooby Doo, and the. Uh, I'll have to look it up. I think I like the witch one second most. Uh, but I, let me remember. Scooby Doo and the Witch's Curse or Witch's Ghost? I think it was the Witch's Ghost. Let me see. And that was. Uh, yes, because Tim Curry voiced Ben Ravencroft in that. That's right, yeah. Uh, Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost. I, I like that one quite a bit. I think that might be my number two. Mm -hmm. Scooby Doo and the Witch's Ghost. Um. So anyway, why are we talking about Super Chats? Halo Infinite campaign is out. Oh, so yeah. None of us have played it yet, but we probably will. You gonna stream it, guys? I, think uh, I, I actually it. don't know if I am, depending on how long it is. And I hear it's quite long, so I'll stream it tomorrow. And more because I finish it on stream. <laughs> mm. So said Cyber Chase and Alien Invaders were trippy as fuck. Yeah, there was something about those two that got I don't want to say outlandish, but um, there was an odd, trippy, just those ones seemed weird for Scooby Doo movies because they did the extraterrestrial one, and then they had just the the computer one, and they just don't. It's not that they don't work. They just didn't seem to fit with the Scooby-Doo, I guess, the, the, the Scooby-Doo flavor. 
that the other ones do. Because you had zombies, you know, those are like ghoulies and spookies. And then you had the witches, ghosts. It's like, okay, like witches and curses. So they, they just, you know, aliens and a, a, a computer virus, they just didn't quite seem to mesh in the same way. I'm not saying they're bad, but ah, they just didn't quite fit. Can we get like a multi-hour breakdown? Oh no. No, no, I'd be doing the Barbie movies way before that. Um, mm -hmm. That makes is, sense. So, but that's a maybe though. I, I have seriously considered that because Princess and the Pauper is the, uh, it is, I do think it is the superior Barbie film. I think Preminger was a, an excellent villain. I think he had a very like, down to earth plan that you could see being, you know, potentially something that could actually Thematically, you describe it as powerful. Powerful in the sense of it had more believable, I don't want to say grounded necessarily, but well, yeah, sort of grounded, but the stakes in that one were very, they felt very real to the world and more personal to the characters. Whereas in some of the like Fairytopia and Mermaidia, right? Because Mermaidia was an offshoot of Fairytopia. They, they, they take place in the same world. You have fairies and mermaids and they were in their own thing, mm -hmm. but most of them were standalones. And even when you get into Swan Lake, and when you get into, it was, I forget that, even Rapunzel, they almost felt so, there was, they were super magical. In the case of Barbie and the Nutcracker and Swan Lake, those kind of took place in their own separate area almost. Uh, especially when we talk about Nutcracker, it's, it's, it's almost sort of like a, like a fever dream and whether it's real or not. So the stakes are a little bit harder to connect with. But with Princess and the Pauper, you have, a, a set of characters who are living in this kingdom and the they, the stakes for them are very real and they're a lot more relatable and i think part of that is because it seems sort of low stakes to us we're not talking about an entire a super curse that destroys some kind of magical world we're not talking about some some crazy mythical dragon level things that are just it's clearly fantasy and your mind just can't quite you know accept that as being real but we're talking about like maybe like the political fate of a kingdom and were the villain to succeed, it would be something that you could see the world continuing, but it, 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 it approachable levels of stakes, really. I think that resonates most with me when it comes to the villain's plot and the journey of a protagonist. And not only that, it's the plan to stop him is equally on those level of stakes that you're like, okay, I, I can see how that plan could work. I can see what they're doing here. It doesn't rely on what a lot of things do, which is just, and then magical bullshit happens, which you're just like, okay, you just pulled that out of your ass. Like, oh, we just have this one magic item, or we just have this one spell that will just solve everything, just go get it. It's like, oh, well, good thing for that. You know, well, you just made that up. 10 minutes ago, that shit didn't exist until we needed it. So how many hours do you think you'd spend breaking down the Bobby movies? Oh, many. It'd be, it would be... Oh, mm. it would it would be something else. Exciting. I I'm not I'm not gonna say it would be sad, but it would be. There's a lot to discuss. Well, I'm sure that there Barbie's an IP has been ruined since its golden age, right? I don't know. Has Disney know. gotten After... their claws on it? I I never saw all of them, but once my sister started kind of growing up and they stopped watching them, I mean, of course, I stopped watching them too because they didn't watch them. <laughs> um, so. I just don't know a lot of the newer stuff. Well, it would be exciting to to see. To you know. compare. Yeah. 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 We. It would be interesting to see if there's already such a huge swath of quality in terms of these movies, where you have like Princess and the Pauper on one end, and I'd probably say, oh, the. Mm, Oh, I'd probably say the worst, or at least my least favorite, was the Fairytopia Mermaidia one. Yeah, I think yeah, the yeah. first. Um, I didn't like that one really much at all. They leaned a little yeah. bit too much, too far into the silliness quality of it. Did they? I think so. Yeah, with with how they yeah, tried, because all of the scary. villains to different degrees would be, they wouldn't be too grim, of course, and too serious because right. of the, you know, it's it's for kids, and you know, you don't want to make it too dark. But they made the baddies in that one. Because there was the, I, I do forget the names. Um, there, there was an evil, uh, there was an evil fairy uh, princess, or uh, and, and she had two henchmen 
Haku would do her bidding and the henchmen would go underwater to the mermaid land where the movie takes place to stop you know, the, the plot from happening. Um, and they were just too goofy. You couldn't believe that they could act, they actually posed any level of threat. And they were just too dumb. And they're, they're supposed to be like silly, but it's I, I couldn't buy it. They were just too stupid. Um, right. now I feel like the villain was far too removed from the plot to be much of a threat either. Mm -hmm. It just didn't work for me. Um, but I, I think it was... Someone said, why is Preminger the best Barbie villain? First off, best songs. Uh, Preminger's songs were great. His, his singing voice was decent, but he was trying to play it as this sort of... Um, almost cartoony villain singing and it and it kind of works he's got this really great voice he's got this amazing kind of like you know how villain it's gonna be a weird day that evil cackle uh he has a really great one where he tilts his head back and leaves the frame and it goes like ah, ha, 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 and it, it's, it's really good um but i think his plan makes a lot of sense um because it's an economic based plot where he needs to marry the queen so that the queen can uh, so basically, the kingdom is in dire straits when it comes to finances because the mine uh, that they used for gold and jewels and stuff is seemingly dried up. But he knows that it hasn't. So what he's going to do is essentially convince the queen to marry him so that he becomes king. And in return, he will allow for like the riches of this mine that he controls to be used for the kingdom and the queen is like, oh, I don't like you. And I know you're a right bastard, but I got to do it for my kingdom because just the kingdom needs finances and our economy to run. So it's not like an unheard of crazy kind of story. It's this, it's the thing that you could see kind of happening. Um, so I, I really like his plan. And his stooges aren't completely worthless either. Um, but and, and he dresses really snazzy. And he's got this, 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 um, like, uh, this. 18th century French aristocrat look with this big puffy white wig and the outfit and all that. Well, all right, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Uh, moving on. Yeah, moving on. Shout out to Greyfruit, a fun streamer. I have no idea Gray who that Fruit? is. Greyfruit? I don't know who he is. Uh, I guess he's on Twitch. Greyfruit. Metal Commando wrong. <laughs> <laughs> the grapefruit? The, is it the grapefruit? Uh, no, just but grapefruit, more importantly, apparently. Witch's brew is a pretty catchy motherfucker. <laughs> Belch. I thought Rags would react to that, would be happy, I agree with him. But so, sorry, with what? Oh, it's just said Witch's brew is a catchy motherfucker. It is! It is good! <laughs> it's sung well and it's got cool lyrics. It's like it's like rap for preschoolers, you know. It reminds me of Blues Brothers song, actually. Just Blues Brothers songs. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Spider web, moldy bread, microwave two, Um, did I miss one sixty two's catch up? I think all of the catch ups are currently out on Moolah. This is the only one that'll be a few days from now. Um, one sixty two. Um, I'd have to check, but I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure we've done 162. What was episode 162? What did we do? It was two ago. Episode 162? Yeah. Was it Halo? Uh, let me double check. Uh, EFAP 162. Because, uh, because you know the numbers, I'm, I can't. Yeah, that was Halo multiplayer and Spider-Man No Way Home trailer. That was when John was on. Did we not do all the Super Chats in that episode? I thought we did. I'm pretty sure we did do all of them. I yeah. think so. But Pretty sure we did. I thought we did. Well, um, I think I think I think we did it. Uh, thanks for looking at my Lego meme. I can't wait for you guys to see the video. Hope you watch. Oh. Uh, hope you watch Fat Man for Christmas. Oh yeah, we we uh, probably not this year. You know, not, but but uh, we we will sort things out. Don't worry. Eventually. But I I am interested in seeing that. Uh, hi Rags and Fringy and Mauler. Hello to you. Hello. Hey. And it just says dot 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 M. I mm. think that might be uh, the other guy. No, uh, I don't like that guy. Mm. I spit on his grave. Whoa, he's not dead, is he? I certainly hope not. Um. 
Mumbo's Mountain being the first level in this is like, wait a minute. That's <laughs> definitely a Wombo word. Wombo's Mountain? Mumbo. Mumbo is a Wombo word. Yeah. yeah. Uh... Hi, on the topic of Dune Shield's nuke, in the book, the point of origin of the explosion can come from the laser or shield. This isn't in defensive movie. Or is I would this? say that it's probably advised if, like, you're posting these things to try and counter the arguments that I would encourage against that. Um, I, guess, like that, cause I think there's just supposed to be clarification. Info. Okay, yeah. It might, yeah, might well, just be some book info. Oh, it's just because, uh, you know how, like, sometimes when, when, you know, you're talking about, like, a movie and then people start bringing stuff in the books, like, a little bit defensively? It's like, be careful, because oh, there may be, there may be context that you're omitting that might make the original material sound a lot better. Dude, but then the I of... only hear the omitted information. The amount of counters get, you know, uh, we got for our yeah. Dune arguments that are, like... Fucking idiots, the blah 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 blah. And I'm like, when the fuck was that in the film? I don't remember that. And I was like, well, if you guys are citing exactly. book shit, seriously. Well, I thought we talked about this. Gotta be we were talking about the movie. movie. Well, because remember, people were just like, whoa, 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 you can't, you know, shields against lasers can't be doing that. It'll cause a nuclear explosion. We were all just like, excuse me? <laughs> like, what? Yeah. I feel like that, because that in, in isolation. You'd be like, oh, so that's why we want to use lasers against people with shields, right? Dude, imagine so that we the, want them to explode in the nuclear Imagine fire. the weaponization. <laughs> the potential, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah if it it needs know. to be in the film or it needs to be a very reasonable inference based on the information that the film gives us, so. And, you know, one of the first things people were saying with the kamikaze thing was like, why don't we just get a small ship, attach a hyperdrive to it, and just send that into enemy ships, right? And then... I think that's when the first yeah. arguments were happening. It was like, no, it needs to be a huge ship. And it's like, why? So, no, it doesn't. It's got, it's got to be shot. <laughs> it's like, all right. Uh, it's just, I don't know why we would think that, but okay. If you if you accelerate a pebble to hyperspeed and it hits a planet... <laughs> well, I, oh yeah, boy. fun fact about uh, space. Um, it is a legitimate concern in orbit. Like, small objects. We're talking really small objects. It's space. Like, any puncture in a ship, or a station, or anything, is significant. I... And even, like, a tiny little pebble could do that. Something even smaller than a pebble can do that. It's moving the, fast enough. Little bit, bit of when I was in, uh... Um, from when I was at Houston, for the, the Top Hats <laughs> meetup that I went to there, there was a space center that had all kinds of cool exhibits and stuff, and one of the awesome things that they had there was they had actual panels from spacecraft and the ISS and stuff that had been hit by tiny little pieces of space debris. Yeah. So you'll have this chunk of metal they'll have behind glass and there's just this hole in it and it's all warped around it. So, and you're like, dang, that little thing going that fast, hitting that space station, you gotta be able to defend against that sort of thing. Exactly. Dude, this was, this was the plot of there was an old, old movie. We're talking like 50s, I think. Um, it was like Vampires from Outer Space. It was, it was a movie like that. It was like evil space vampires from outer space. And the one of the plot points in that movie was that there's space age technology that a ship has to have like a shield around it. So while it's flying through space, little bitty objects don't hit the ship and destroy it. So mm -hmm. this is a it thing. It's a, It pops up. It pops up. Well, I mean, gravity, that's what that was all about. It was a Kessler, like, cascade. Yep. One thing creates two, that creates four, creates eight, and by the time you realize that it's something that's gone wrong, there's nothing it's you like can do. It's like absolutely shreds through stations. It's a legit concern. Um, like, it is a uh, space debris potentially kicking off a cascade that we can't stop is a legitimate concern. And if it happens, we're, we're like, in serious trouble. Uh, like, a lot of our infrastructure is up there. For, like, GPS and that things. You can fix it, right? Well, we wouldn't be able to if it got bad enough. No, I meant you. You'd have to... Oh, me, personally. Mm -hmm. Fly up there and just start picking up little bits of debris as they're flying past. little goo mobile. Goo That's mobile. what the goo is for. You gotta wrap it around Earth as a big net. 
and it'll prevent <laughs> space debris net. somehow. It's like, haha, the world is mine now. <laughs> I own. Oh no. I own space, my goo. That's not what it does, though. Space is mine. Um. Yeah, because I think we were just talking about how to make that as a weapon, the laser thing. So they just wanted to say that I guess that in the book it's never said whether or not the nuke comes from the shield or the laser. I don't know. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, all right. Um. Drinker has a plushie now. Go buy it. Very true. He does. You want um, to add Drinker to the collection of fun shows? I'm sure me and Rags would like the company. Oh my. Is Adventure Time EFAP approved? I mean, I haven't watched it in a long time. I haven't watched it. I like it. But, um, but I haven't watched it in a while. Yeah. yeah, when I saw it, I thought it was awesome. Especially for a, for a kid's show. Like, uh, uh, I don't know how you'd section it out, but like it... It's definitely created to be nice and chill and soft and low low stakes, low drama, low everything, because it's like a a kid's sort of thing, but at the same time it's pretty pretty fun, pretty cute. And uh I don't know, I'd have to rewatch it to know how well it was written. I just remember having fun with it. Um, isn't there like in the first episode a lot of the Candy Kingdom become zombies and um well, one of the earlier ones. I think there's like a groundskeeper or something. There was a joke I really liked, uh, just straight up, there's a start. I think a dead person like rises from the grave and he like screams and like dies or has a heart attack or something. I I, I remember just like finding it so bizarre and random. There's a lot of that in Adventure Time where um, I think they try and remain in a particular demographic, but they also do some stuff that just makes you wonder. Lemon Grab was, uh, was quite the thing. Who remembers him? Anyone here? Lemon Grab? Mm-hmm. I think that's the only no, character I... I know because they showed we did one clip with it. <laughs> I hate you! Is that He's... the one? Yeah, he... That's the only He's... thing I know. Justin Roiland voices him. Lemon Grab was... was something <laughs> fucking else. He's, uh... Oh, yeah, Chad. Unacceptable! <laughs> yeah, he's like a lemon oh, person. Oh, character? Because I know that meme. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. But that's all I know about him is that he says unacceptable in the memes. Yeah, his first episode, I think he's like a duke or something, and he comes to the castle to like audit in a way, and he's like annoyed at how everything's running, and so um, he'll he'll like keep giving people dungeon time, and so like say for example, <laughs> like someone's fucking knock all their shoes tied, laces tied properly, he'll just be like, five years dungeon. Like he'll just say that as he's walking past him. <laughs> At one point, I think he says, like, One million years dungeon! Because he's, like, really angry. Sometimes he'll just be like, A hundred years dungeon, no trial. <laughs> just like, okay. Pretty sure I'd enjoy all the Lemon Grab episodes if I were to rewatch them, but yeah. Adventure time is fun. Ice King's pretty funny. Yeah, Ice King's great. He's really funny. Soft and chill, forgetting the Lich King exists. There are, um... Times where Adventure Time does stretch its uh, limits, and it's cool. Hello, everyone. Have a great day. Aw, nice. so nice. Hi. Yeah. Thank you. You uh, too. I, I will do. I will do the great day having. That sounds fun. I miss the Wog and the angry super chat NRX guys. Does that sound familiar to you guys? Uh, angry Super Chat NRX guys? Yeah, I got nothing for that. I don't recognize any of it. For me either. I'm sorry, but I'm... Mm, I'm a massive neckbeard. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh. Fanboy, and even I would never buy pop figures. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to dust off my massive amiibo collection. Uh... Oh no! <laughs> well, the I just, as far as I can tell, pop figures are just the, like the the tackiest ones. I guess they just have a really low reputation with a lot of people. Is there a particular reason think, for that that you guys are aware of? <laughs> I don't know. That's I think because my problem with them is that they all look. They've all got the same like. They're all very homogenous. 
it's the same face generally, and then it's just like all yeah. colors around it, the same shape. There's no variation. They're all, and I guess maybe that's part of the appeal, but I don't like it. Yeah, because it's supposed to be like the uniformity part of, of it. Set, like we're yeah. watering it down. Yeah. I can make some sense. Yeah. They look cheap as fuck, and they all look the same. That could be the main reasons, I think. Hmm. Yeah, I can see how people might like the uniform uh, aspect of them. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Metal. Possible sh stuff. show title, Metal's Kino Kitchen. It's too late, I think. Wait, is that, was that a, a suggestion for my show, or is that for the kitchen meme we just did a couple of minutes ago? <laughs> oh, a suggestion? <laughs> yeah, that's probably a, a meme suggestion, but... uh. Yeah, because I, I, I always decided on a name. I... Uh, Metal's Forge. That, that's where we where I go by now. On, yeah, on the show. that's not a pretty me. good one. Yeah, I, I, I like it. It's, uh, it's good stuff. I'm just I'm just waiting for my my Crimbus bonus and work, and then I'm gonna get some some juicy visuals so it looks nice and everything. Will be will yeah, be great. Christmas juice. Mm. Christmas juice. Oh no! Wait, hang on. <laughs> Um, hi, Rags and Gang. Hello. Hi. Are there any non-indie game devs y'all still trust to deliver greatness enough to pre-order from? For me, it's just from software no. now. Dude, no. from no. software? Don't, don't pre-order pre games. Do you don't see what happened with games. Dark Souls 3's re initial release? What happened with yeah, the PC port for Dark Souls? Dark Souls, Dark Souls 2? Well. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, they're not to be trusted. <laughs> I like them, but uh, they're not to be trusted. Until... Well, and yeah. of course, ultimately, like, a lot of these are published through, like, publishers. You know, from software, yeah. Namco, Bandai, most of their stuff, mm -hmm. Act and then Activision with Sekiro. Yeah. But, I mean, as a general principle, you shouldn't be pre-ordering games. Yeah. There's I... not really any value in doing it, other than, so I guess, mean... you get to download it early. Recommend against it. Um, yeah. And, yeah. I think it's a... As soon as I know with Elden Ring that it works properly, I'm gonna buy it. Which is hopefully the same day because I wanna play it as soon as possible. <laughs> uh, I'm sure but yeah, I'm not gonna pre order it, no chance. Yeah. Isn't Elden Ring capped at 60 FPS? Uh, I don't know actually. It's a good question. I. So they only did a network test on consoles, so I don't know how PC mm. is working at all. I mean, it's kind of lame, but I don't mind that much. It look, as long as it keeps 60 FPS, that's, that's really the main thing. But it's always nicer to be able to go higher than that. Yeah. But there will be mods to unlock the FPS. We'll see. Unless they did something weird with the FPS again and weapon de degradation is gonna fuck up. Wasn't that a thing in one of the Dark Souls games? Which one? Where weapons sorry? broke. Oh, I don't remember. It might have been one when you did higher FPS. Your it was Dark Souls 2. Ah, oh, it was 2, okay. Yeah. yeah, boosting your FPS by double means your weapons depreciate twice as fast, which it's already bad enough in that game. <laughs> that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Swing it faster, that means the air particles are gonna wear on your weapon <laughs> twice as hard. <laughs> Man. Holy shit. I mean, as, as if I don't need more reason to fucking hate that game. Weekend Warrior was fucking <laughs> streaming Dark Souls 2. Uh, I think when? today or yesterday, and I was just like, you Bullshit. How the did I miss that? Oh, because he lives in crazy land, because yeah. I probably sleep when he does that. Weekend Warrior, you know, so you're supposed to. Do that with Does at he least... put, his, put his vids up? I need to see that. <laughs> I think he unlists them. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. Um... What a dingus! He needs to send me a link. I want to see it. Because <laughs> I think uh, Critical put out a video recently saying like Dark Souls 2 isn't bad, and like loads of comments were like, thing. actually, it is pretty good. It's my favorite. I'm just like, stop forgetting everything that's wrong with that game. <laughs> Uh, I think Sean put out a tweet being like, Dark Souls 2 may not be like the best, you know, in terms of a lot of things that people look to for when you try to analyze video games, but it's got the best vibe. Best no, vibe. Best False. vibe. Which isn't... <laughs> Whatever. It's, it's <laughs> like... as close to worthless as you can be. To exactly. 
<laughs> you know, Bioshock Infinite had the best vibe. Okay, Even though then, it yeah. fails at everything else in the universe. I just, I feel like you've yeah, already made clear bad. the problem straight away when you say like, you know, when we're not talking about all of the things that we judge games by, <laughs> like, it, it does okay. <laughs> Another brilliant yeah. observation, I had the best vibe. Uh, and, I don't know. I'm in Dark Souls 2, but I would not call it the best in the series. I have like 142 hours in Dark Souls 2, and I think it's like two and a half playthroughs or something. I have too many hours in that game. How many so vibes long. per hour did you get? <laughs> <laughs> well, my first playthrough, a couple. Uh, then the second one, like, one when I faced Fume Knight, I think. <laughs> it's the really only good I boss in that game. I remember that. You know what still gives me good vibes? Resident Evil 4. Oh, best mm. vibes. Top dog mm. vibes. Very nice. Have you ever seen or heard of the Apple show For All Mankind? Worth ma worthy material to EFAP at some point? Also, the sixth day is underrated. Name seems familiar. I've heard of that show. It's got a uh, Rick Flag in it. I, oh. don't think, I don't think I've heard of it, Um, but I have heard of and seen the sixth day, because that's the Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, I think, right? No. I think I've seen that, but I... Maybe That's not. That's an EFAP movies film. There's lots of funny shit Probably. in it. As for whether or not it holds up at all, I can't say. Maybe we'll find out someday. Um, The Objectivity Lantern is an artifact from ancient times that shone brightly <laughs> when people tried to pass off their subjectivisms as facts or some shit. Or some shit. <laughs> some shit. I'm convinced. Does every entry in this fucking universe end with that? <laughs> like, for their lore? I don't know, some oh, shit. Some shit. <laughs> no one really knows what's happening. It's like, An yeah, inebriated and tired professor explaining to you all the things <laughs> in the world. Our some shit. Oh, fucking no, shut up. Hey, uh, Mola, what do you think that- what- if you had a favorite episode of- or, no, best episode of The Simpsons, what do you think it would be? And we- we talked about this before, haven't we? We, we have, but, uh, again... Choices what, what include Lisa on Ice, um, yeah. Hurricane Natty, Last I think, is in there. Field. Yeah. Um, we shot Mr. Burns as a two-part yeah. one. Ooh, I like that one. Um, there's gonna be a shit ton of examples. Um, there are. When just, uh, Homer's brother visits, I like that one a lot. That's, it. That's a cool one, yeah. The reason why I ask is because, uh... Variety has put out a top 30 episodes of The Simpsons and Last Exit is not on this list at all. Rip. It's kind of baffling. Their number That's one like is making a top the 10 episode list of Curds the Cowardly Dog and number one isn't The Tower of Doctors a Lost. Exactly. It, it, That's it, what I was thinking. <laughs> It's, uh, because number one is Homer at the Bat, number two is the Monorail episode, number three is Mr. Plow, number four is Who Shot Mr. Burns, and Best Tree, uh, no, actually, I think Best Tree House of Horror is five, not four. Four is really good. Listen but yeah, on. as I go through this list, it's like, man, I don't see, where is, uh, Cape Fear is number ten. It's like, man, really? Uh, yeah, <laughs> I mean, so, it, so, Cape Fear is something's gotta five. be number ten, though, right? <laughs> Something's got to be number 10. Where is, uh, uh, uh... Yeah, like, I don't... Mm, I don't... Oh, there's... Treehouse... Yeah... 22 oh, short stories yeah, about... Treehouse of Horror episodes, oof. Like, yeah, 22 short stories is 14. It's like, man, I don't know about that one. I feel like it should be higher than that. <laughs> like, that's, uh, that feels like top 10 to me. I guess I'm just... Yeah, uh, there's... But then again, I guess everybody's gonna disagree if you rank it like 700 episodes. Mm -hmm. Also, Homer's Enemy isn't on there, and I think it should be. I think that's a great episode. <clears throat> like, that that Grimes episode is really good. Oh, definitely, yeah. And not to send us on a reference tornado, but the, uh, the part where, where, where Grandpa says he's going to the, the outhouse, the Marge is like, we don't have an outhouse. He just goes, my tool shed! Oh, dad. And then the, the, the next scene begins with him spraying the tool shed with a hose. Also, I, that's now reminded me that Flying Hellfish episode isn't on that list Ooh, either. that's a good one as well. And that's a good one. That's like Abe's best episode. Yeah. It's, uh... Man, that's a great episode. Ooh. It's upsetting. <laughs> 
Um, I'm all up. How would you rate the GameCube Mario Party games uh, now that you played all four of them? Um, hello. And did I play all four of them? I think I start. I didn't play eight, right? So eight I played four, five, Wii. six. Oh, right. So I played. Yeah, I played all four of them. Okay. So you did play all of them. Um, the thing with Mario Party for me is that I just want. Which is what they were describing to me is the actual thing of freaking, I think, metal. That, that I want all the best games from all of them to be in a game. Oh, yeah. And then, yeah. as for how the board works, awesome. there's like, mechanically, there's some stuff I prefer in some games to other games. I've never really thought about it, though. They've always just been fun party things to do, you know? Right. Hmm. Never thought of them as like, are they very effectively using their party elements here or, or not? Um... You know, like pummel party is the same thing where I'm just like I'm much more in it for the mini games and then though I do like shotgunning people to death that's fun yeah if that Mario Party game ever happens we need to make a return for take a shot wait the, there is a Mario Party game that is just a compilation of all the, the best ones the, the most popular games mini games yeah that's what I was saying that you were mentioning before right Yes, it's uh, it's like superstars or something like that. It's some, it's, I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Wow, using me when I'm trying to abuse you? What is this? Oh, a video <laughs> game? That's illegal. Terrible. Um, every time Cinematic Venom brought up Nostalgia Critic, it wasn't to praise him; it was to show he's a hypocrite. I'm just as confused as you are. Uh, well, I think. Their relationship is complicated because um, of the of the change the channel thing that happened, and so um, Cinematic Venom went from being like his number one fan to being like very anti him. I think that's what happened. I'm not 100 percent sure. But you could tell he was very inspired by Nostalgia Critic, which is really unfortunate because uh, I don't know man. Like, go ahead and be inspired to make stuff, that's great, but, uh, just, just, the format for Nostalgia Critic is so, um... Those pores like the off fault. the jokes, man. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I guess in that sense, yeah, the... Oh. the I, it definitely... <laughs> well, I... You can't a, knock a the format, effort, though, right? No, well, yeah, he, I've always he definitely works hard, I can see that. There is an attempt to make something here, I'm just not a big fan of it. <laughs> I feel like there is a good version of the Nostalgia Critic format that could potentially Definitely exist. Definitely there's a good version of that format. It's just, I think a lot of people might not want to approach it with a 50-foot pole, mm -hmm. sort of. He's he's either, he, he's incidentally sort of taken ownership of it, and people are happy to let him do that, or maybe he has tarnished it in some way that people don't want to be compared to him by doing, either for better or worse. I don't... Maybe there are, and I'm just not aware of them. But I don't feel like there's not—I don't feel like there's a lot of nostalgia critic copycats. No. Which is interesting because he still gets a decent amount of engagement, right? Yeah, he does. Yeah, he, all of his reviews and videos, as far as I know, well, get hundreds of thousands of views. You know what? I feel like he's just been completely replaced by what people now think is the intellectual good approach to thingy where you, where you do the whole like. Yeah, he's discussing. Not you know, Teletubbies today, and it's thematic relevance in relation to blah blah blah, 20 minute video at most. Yeah, it's trying to be super highbrow and, to, and intellectual and educational. And you got some nice very, graphics. Yeah, yeah he, he's definitely more of a, you could tell that it's early YouTube, in quotes, it's more of an early internet sort of style almost. It feels, it feels like a 90s fever dream. Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it it doesn't. It's not highbrow. I've certainly not seen that way. While um, a lot of the video essays we cover are seen as highbrow, it's just fucking oh, yes. laughable. Ooh, we're, we're very intellectual. We're very intelligent. We have all the all the opinions here. Yes, we are very wise in the ways of the cinema. Have to speak a bit emotionally as well, like yes. <laughs> But not too emotionally. Remember, you're a, you're a, you're too you're too good for that. Or maybe you're not. Oh my god. Maybe maybe you lean into making people feel a certain way about. You know, there's more American ones than there are British ones. I'm just saying we have the well, lock on pretentiousness mentioned. a lot of the time. But 
Uh, I never. <laughs> what do you mean? I I never mentioned any nationality. I'm not sure what you're you were getting you, at. You didn't need to, cause I did. What? Oh, are you talking about the the British people before then? Huh? Hmm. Okay, so I said they're not even British when we've got like the ownership on pretentiousness. They're actually like majority American, which uh, they're still. Manage, they're just trying to outdo us, I guess, which is nice. But... In, in the pretentiousness, they're really mm -hmm. trying to, like, we're going to steal it from them. It's going to be our thing now. We're going to make pretentiousness our thing. That's we will be the allowed. masters of pretense. Which is rude, but, you know, do we want? We're not pretentious. Sorry, we need though. That. Yeah, America's thing is supposed to be obnoxious, not pretentious. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's us. That's us. Oh, oh, oh what is my thing? Part. What was the gem thing? Uh, um, organized? Yeah, we'll there go with that. There was an obvious joke we'll here, we'll you fucked with. it up. You, I feel like that is a good payoff for the joke. Detail-oriented. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I got over, you for over, Overthinking, maybe? Bureaucratic. Industrial. Wait, no, not bureaucratic. Dry. No, no, not bureaucratic, it's... Uh, yeah, organized, that's fine. I yeah. got the first time. <laughs> Because, yeah, some people even reckon that there was an era of people trying to copy cinema sins. I don't know if that's still a thing at all, really, because his reputation is gone. pretty low. Isn't <laughs> it? Yeah. So now who's being copied? And it's like, I think video essays are still kind of seen as like the default way to correctly do uh, coverage of stuff, right? Um... You know, a, lot, a lot of people who are starting up are like, oh, I should probably. You know, you gotta. You, what was that tweet we covered in the medley where it was like, you gotta just watch a movie, figure out some kind of point, and then you just sort of grab stuff and try and make it seem like that was the point of the whole thing. Uh. Whereas, I think a much better approach is after you watch a story without any, like, objective in mind, identify something in it that's really interesting and worth discussing, like a broader concept that you can pull from the story. Well, I guess so first step is, what do you want to do? <laughs> like, well, instead of just uh, trying to yeah, look at what uh, other people are doing. Uh, yes, that's uh, step number one. What is it that you're actually interested in? Yeah. Um... Hey, Moller, I want you to know that High Top appeared in a recent video called Why the Amazing Spider-Man 2 is a Perfect Spider-Man Movie, also High Rags. Hello. Hell. See, when you tell me the, Damn. when you tell me that shit, we're like, you know, Homecoming, maybe a good movie, but it's not a good Spider-Man movie. A good Spider-Man movie is Tasm Two. I'm just like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I'm to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I don't see it as insulting anymore to say that Homecoming isn't a Spider-Man movie. Fuck me. Tasm Two is funny. But to be fair, Tasm 1 shouldn't be allowed to get away with it either. Well, that's um, the one that people don't remember as well as being bad. Do you remember one of the biggest plot points in that is Peter's identity is revealed to Lizard because he left his camera behind with his he name on it. it. and it said property of Peter Parker, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking dumbass. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and like, so why would you even take it out like that? Take the label yeah. off for fuck's sake. It's such a big label, too. It's like, so <laughs> prominent. <laughs> yeah, and, and it's like you drop that in New York and everyone's like, Oh yeah, Peter Parker, of course. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know him. Yeah, know everyone him. knows like Peter Parker. Of those people. Like, yeah, I know exactly who that is. Oh look, John Smith. I know him. <laughs> John Smith, yeah. It's funny how there, that is, you know, John Smith is like a common name. But at yeah. the same time, if somebody well, told you they were called John Smith, you'd be like, really? So that's the... <laughs> that's another fun thing that we didn't get to talk about. I'm, I wanted to mention it about Midnight, uh, Fringy, and Rags may remember this, but it's been a while since you've seen that now. But, um, Tenant's Doctor, whenever he has to give a name in a situation beyond the Doctor, he does say John Smith, and then there's an episode where he actually, like, has to, I think, become a human persona for a decent amount of time without going into detail. And he calls himself in that environment John Smith. Um, so it's just the name he uses. And I think you could argue it started as like a sort of 
a little bit of an irony, like, 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 of all the names you would choose, yeah. the one that nobody would fucking believe, but he's actually using it, and it is, you know, you can have a valid John Smith, but in Midnight, when they start pressuring him for his name, because they're starting to wonder whether or not he's an actual threat, and, like, he's stressed out, and he says John Smith, and they're all just like, oh, fuck off, John Smith, what the hell are you, <laughs> and he's, he looks like, oh, fuck, like, cause, cause, that's yeah, probably that cost him, when it's just his fun meme of using John Smith. I do want to make a video on Midnight One Day. It's so absurdly well written. It's great. Yeah. I really enjoyed it compared to that last episode. <laughs> yeah, right. Lots. He watched the, uh, the latest watch. episode at midnight. There was a bit of a difference. <laughs> it was a bit well, of a difference. One of, the, one of them was an actual narrative. Um, yeah. And it had that going for it. It was a story with characters and plot points that connected. How that, about was, uh, that was real crazy. Yeah. I can't believe, like, that. That that episode of that flux thing, man, like incoherent, <laughs> feels charitable. <laughs> it's, not, like, it's not anything. There's it's a, just things. I saw the Discord link. There's a video of Chris Chimnall talking about the storyline of the flux in 15 minutes, and he's going over it. I'm just like, what in the world do you? What could you say? Uh. <laughs> Poor guy. The, the lines in that, what was it? Uh, morality is a strength that's like, dude, what are we doing? <laughs> like, who writes oh, this? <laughs> Camera really fluked you there. Um, uh, for your information, episode four of the Flash event is the one with Bl Batwoman. Wait. Oh, oh. She's not in it until episode four? Uh, or, or are you saying she's that's that's the season that's episode four of the season of the flash that she's doing that, I guess. The season of the flash as good as season of the witch? <laughs> no fucking way it's as good as season of the witch, bro. Uh, that's probably true. What we call Kino. That is also, transcendental. Damn it, I shouldn't have left before getting all one hundred notes. You fool. I know. Bad person. Told you um, not to do that. I told you. I don't remember you saying anything about it, actually, but... Yeah. That's because you never listened to me. I just said it again. You probably don't remember that. I too. remember that time. Did you oh. guys hear something? German snorsage sounds. <gasps> German. Snorsages? Snorsages. <laughs> uh, bring in metal. No. Hello. Loved your hey. playthroughs of Metroid Dread. When are you gonna do the same, Mutually? I still have some characters left, so hi, Rags. Oh, hi. Um, I don't feel like there's any reason why I wouldn't do that. I just don't know when, and I don't like to promise things. So, to Fun be stuff. happening at some point, that is my commentary for that. Oh, God, this is awkward. Eh, mm. here we go. Um... Yeah, soon. Check out Chaley on Twitch at Metal Commander, I guess, dot TV, Twitch dot TV. Oh, what? yeah, was Chaley on that channel? Man. Yeah, man. You may yeah, have to suffer cool. through the occasional German, though. Hmm. Uh, always joined by a, by, by a rags and a mutually as well. It's yeah. pretty epic. It sounds celestial, bro. It is. And it's celestial. On the Dude, the Scorpion and Big Team Battle, how what the exciting. Fuck? Oh, man. I, I hope. Can't wait. Wait. What's nominated? Hold on. Cause I. Hold on. I need to know. Cause Sorry, I. What's I think I could, The game awards. Yeah. Oh. Metroid Dread is on there. I, I think. Yeah, but it's not gonna win. I doubt it. It's not it gonna should, win. Though. I don't, it should, but it won't. <laughs> because it doesn't. It doesn't slot into the category of games that typically win. Because I remember looking at the nom nominees and Metroid Dread oh, should run Res away. Well, Resident Evil, oh, Rags, because I'm not, yeah. did you know that Resident Evil 8 is nominated for Game of the Year? I didn't yeah. want to say it. I mean, I, I'm not surprised I, yeah, at I'm all. Yeah, I'm not surprised by that. It. I'm not surprised at all, <laughs> even though that game's shit. Where are the, how do I, there it is. The, Where are the why, good I don't games? know why the nominees are at the <laughs> bottom of the website, but all right, hold on. Um, the, the, come on, just show it there, Game of the Year. Uh... It's so the nom yeah, so you look at this like the nominees are Death Loop, it takes two, which I guess it won't be called that for much longer. Yeah. <laughs> because, of the, 
fucking uh Take Metro two, yeah the oof. yeah uh Metro Dread Psychonauts 2 Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart and Resident Evil Village and I look at this I'm like it's probably gonna be Deathloop right like that, that I would really like, like for it to win. I've I've heard good things, um, um, and I want Arcane to do well. So hopefully, maybe you know. May, you know what? Looking at this, because I I would be surprised if it was It Takes Two or Psychonauts, because those aren't the games that typically win. Um, I'm sure those games are really great, but I would be surprised if it was one of those two, because one of them is kind of indie-ish, and the other one I guess is also sort of a smaller market game. I doubt it would be Ratchet and Clank, but uh, mm. hey, maybe it's. Oh man, so that means it really could be Resident Evil Village. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was. I was about to say that. Unfortunately, <laughs> oh, we dude. live in a world where it's a very real possibility. Yeah, we live. We live in a world where people be like, "That game was fucking great," and look at it, and then they show well, a bunch of fucking true. clips, and then they're like, "It was. It was just and, mechanically rich and content rich, and oh." Well, I mean, Last of Us Two won last year, right? So that's. Uh, <laughs> oh. I think. That one uh, won so many awards, fucking... like over a hundred. That one won, I think, like seven or eight awards. Yeah. Um. I, yeah. Though, admittedly, when you look at this, I think all it's highlighting is like, huh? How many? It feels like this year was kind of a little bit sparse for games, or maybe I just wasn't paying as much attention uh, as I used to to like releases. Um. I, I think the big one that people got annoyed with is like Forza Horizon 5 I'm pretty sure is like the highest rated game of the year but it wasn't nominated it's like is it because it was a racing game like racing games like. don't get nominated for that kind of award um cause that that does feel like the common thread right of like how often does a multiplayer game get nominated for game of the year how often does a uh how often does like a game that isn't third person action adventure get nominated for game hey, of the hey don't year? forget light stealth elements yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can't forget about that. Fucking everything has that these like, days. <laughs> everything does, and it means now we don't have stealth games, and that just bugs me a lot. It's like there's a reason why we'll never get Splinter Cell ever, because you can just do like Splinter Cell Light, where it's an action game, putting a little bit of stealth, and like that just has broader market appeal. I know the big thing that Ubisoft's getting in trouble with now is that they've started to dip into the NFT world. Where you can buy like NFTs that you can wear in game, but also sell them like on a marketplace too, mm. but no refunds because of course, <laughs> and, like no, yeah. I, I, the one of the big market things was energy efficient. <laughs> it's like, all right. Oh, goodness. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know enough about like the NFT still. It still confuses me. Oh fuck no! I've tried to have that explained to me like ten times, and I still don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> Given up at this point. Everyone, if you want to, it's it, it's like the peak of. Are we, are we are we buying that? Yes, we are. All right, I buy it. Yeah. What what is this? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, let's do it. On Scooby Doo, uh, Space Invaders execution was trippy. The OG series has one or two space themed villains, but Cyber Chase is trippy as a whole. Let's bring this digital villain to life and kidnap the entire gang. Weird. I don't yeah, the, the, plot. the digital, the, the, it's a computer virus that's the bad guy, and he turns real, and then he goes into, like, a game program, and then all of the Scooby-Doo gang, they get, like, zapped and transported into the game world, and they have to go through all the levels to beat him. Huh. It's very, it's very Dungeon Master kind of, very strange. Do you Very odd. That, that in community, bringing you know, the, they had to beat Gus in a game. And he, he was uh, like a giant digital Gus and tried to eat them and stuff. It was, yes, it, that's right. That was a, that was a cool uh, that was a cool episode. I just remember being happy that Gus was there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's it's always fun to see him show up in something. And you know what? He hey. wasn't wasted in that. No, he wasn't. Um, he was not. And then Mandalorian. He's. And the boys. What even is his character in Mandalorian? I don't know. Bad don't guy? Know. Idiot bad guy? I don't know who he is. I, I want to kill Baby Yoda, maybe. Moff, Moff Gideon? Yeah. <laughs> you don't remember uh, the incredible was, character that was Moff Gideon? He was the bad guy in Far Cry 6, which I haven't heard awesome things about Almost that game. anything about, actually. 
Yeah, no, people don't really talk about it. Um, and then you wonder why Ubisoft says, oh, hey, we're going to do, like, free-to-play, you know, microtransaction games, because... I... <laughs> people talk it's about just... Far Cry 5 a lot. That I remember Far Cry 5 got talked about, but 6, it's like, nobody really, nobody really cares. It kind of came and went. I, I will say, like, it is kind of upsetting that it's like, the next Assassin's Creed game, it's like, hey, you gotta go back to, like, you know, being a stealth game? <laughs> nope. Uh, we're gonna do live service, um, over the course of several years. It's Definitely. always gonna be over the next 10 years. Halo Infinite, next 10 years. Destiny. De Love to hear it. Yeah. Destiny, yeah. It definitely feels like a, well, everyone else is doing it. Like, well, mm. and they're, they're, here's, here's the awkward part. It's probably going to work out for them. Because I think the problem is that, like, you think about the high-profile failures like Avengers. It's worth a shot. It was probably worthwhile for them to do that rather than to make, like, another single-player Tomb Raider game or to make another Deus Ex game or any number of those investments because that one that one didn't work out but then you just try again because if you have one hit that makes up for a bunch of failures it's just the problem like the amount of profit that you can expect to make from like a successful live service game is well in excess of like the the best you could hope for for like one of the best selling single player games like ever i wouldn't be surprised if uh like fortnite made more in one quarter than god of war made like overall in total sales yeah. and that game sold like yeah. 20 million copies because there are still developers you... who have self-respect though they're out um, there well they they definitely exist you can find a lot of great games in the middle market sphere and the indie sphere because they don't have the same they, they don't have the same priorities that you have when you've got like major publishers they don't have shareholders yeah. they don't have uh they have smaller teams um they can guide their more focused vision more so. yeah exactly um but you know, and, and of course, you look at, because someone would be like, why does Sony do that? It's like, well, Sony and Microsoft have different interests to, like, uh, like EA. EA is software. That's all they do. They sell games. It's software. They need to make money through software. Like, Sony and Microsoft need to sell consoles. They need to, like, create an ecosystem. And they make money when other people sell games on their platform. So that's, you know, that's part of their interest, right? But... I'm pretty sure even Sony makes more money from live service than it does from uh, from the games that they release. I remember reading that when I did research for one of my videos. Like, that, live services... FIFA Ultimate Team makes more money than, like, every game that EA sells. Like, at point of sale. It's over. It's done. We're, we're, it's over. <laughs> and then you wonder why Ubisoft's like, Oh, yeah, we want to make live service games. <laughs> when they see those numbers... Oh, it's so sad. Does anybody in yeah, chat? Yeah, it is. Anybody in chat buy FIFA? Any of you? <laughs> Could you well, not? Somebody does. Somebody does. Maybe they're We're not going to hurt you. I'm just curious. I, just, I, I, I will you hurt you. <laughs> like, uh, will, FIFA Ultimate Team, man. Find you. God, because I bet you everybody in the industry is looking at that like, fucking fuck me. Like, you know. Yeah, what we just invent million? a sport sure to do that with? <laughs> How, I, I, hold on, let me double check, because, yeah, FIFA Ultimate Team, I'm pretty sure. Team Revenue. Holy fuck. Uh, yeah, one point, um, uh, in an annual report for 2020, AI confirmed the Ultimate Team made more than $1.62 billion. Like, that's it. I, what, now, that sucks. $1.62, for reference, there are very, very few films in existence ever that have made more than $1.62 billion Jesus in a year. Christ. In one year. <sighs> one year. God. Man. Gamble to get those cards. Yeah. 20, 29% of EA's total profits for that year from just FIFA Ultimate Team. Now, I don't know how much a, a regular game would need to sell to make that much money, but I, divide, I would be willing to bet that God we'll of War... divide that by the, 60, right? And, well, plus take out everything, right? Take out all of the stuff that you don't get, the uh, the amount of money that uh, that the, pub, the, the console company gets, the amount of manufacturing, shipping, distribution, unless it's all digital. But if we assumed it was all digital... Um... You know, even then. Oh, apparently Activision Blizzard made $1.2 billion in microtransactions in one quarter this year. Right. So you'd have to sell about 
26.7 million copies of the game. And that's assuming you get 100% of the money. Which yeah, yeah, that's going. just assuming. Yeah, that's just yeah. 1.6 divided by 60. So, yeah. so um, hey. Yeah, so so this is this is the problem with the discourse, right? When you're like, look at how well God of War sold. It's like, so sales, that's, that's only part of the picture. Revenue is the important part. Re of course it is. Revenue is the important part. Digital assets, low investment, huge return on investment because you get like 100% of the money when you sell digital assets that made in what, like a week maybe? As opposed to let's invest four years, like $100 million, potentially a new engine in developing a game that people may or may not like. Yeah, it's not it's not much of a decision at all. I remember um, we... We haven't yeah, gotten a. I know in like when you talk about a game like The Last of Us Two, like have we? Ev I don't even think we've gotten an official sales update no, from Sony. No, we haven't. Not for yeah. a year. Uh, whereas we got them for Ghost of Tsushima, we got it for God of War, we got it for all those other games, but not for The Last of Us. Hmm. Curious. Which, all that tells me is that they're not happy with how well it sold, and I that fucking, game was probably fucking expensive. I hope it it cans uh, Last of Us Three. I hope they're done. I hope, I they, hope it does. The I hope repercussions too, yeah. of what they did are that the franchise is dead. It um, sold really well in the first like week. Yes, it, it, it sold. Did, but but then, that. like man, the stark drop off in sales, and you're wondering, there's been no updates on sales. And, like, well, and meanwhile, cool. meanwhile, Nintendo's like, yeah, so Animal Crossing, we're up to like 35 million copies, just let you know. Like, <laughs> Ninten Nintendo is, uh, goddamn, like Nintendo moves games. They always have, and they continue to do so. Like that Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, I'm pretty sure sold like 37 million copies. Super Mario Odyssey is like 30 million copies. Breath of the Wild is like 30 million copies. Nintendo moves game. I'm pretty sure Splatoon sold like 15 million copies. Um, and fortunately, Nintendo has, like, largely avoided the microtransaction thing, and I hope they continue to do so. For yeah. the love of all God, it just remain that sanctuary that reminds me of, like, the good old days <laughs> when you bought a if game. You know what makes their, their services more... more... Uh, better? Just better? That'd be nice. <laughs> like, they could be, like... Because the games are always solid. That's yep. for sure. That's something you can count on with Also, Nintendo, give us game maybe some, some sales sometimes. That are more than oh, that'd be nice. Up. Yeah, that'd or at be least nice. sell your ten-year-old games for less money. Like, I want to yeah. play some older games, but they're still sixty bucks. I just then no, again, I though, <laughs> I would prefer if they kept doing that than to indulge in like microtransactions. I'll yeah, take the yeah. world where they sell me old Mario <laughs> games for sixty bucks and <laughs> do the microtransaction thing. Interestingly, as as you were talking about that, I was doing little little skimming around on uh, some sales numbers for The Last of Us 2, and I was skimming over some uh, Reddit posts from The Last of Us 2 subreddit. They don't like that game. <laughs> the, it, the Last of Us 1 <laughs> subreddit likes the game, as far as I know. But The Last of Us 2 subreddit, they are not pleased with that game. Like, no. in these comments and stuff, there's so there seems to be a, a, a skew towards people saying, man, it's a shame that we got this game, and I'm I'm not upset that this misery porn didn't sell that well, and maybe it's best that we never get another one. I'm um, like well, I mean, it's interesting to think about what, I wonder what, uh, I wonder what, uh, like, Naughty Dog are gonna be doing now. Um, cause presumably this means they have to make something new, and presumably they have less, so. they're probably gonna get less of like, yeah, you can do whatever Budget. you want, I imagine. Less no, creative probably... freedom. I would be surprised if they had the same amount of creative freedom. I would be too. It would be like, you, can't um, let him, you can't let him write another game. You just like, can't do it. It'd be like Wonder Woman, right? It's like, yeah, that was a mistake. Yeah, yeah. It's like, whoops. Okay, um, no. I we're mean, not The doing Last of Us, I mean, sorry, The Last Jedi was. Yeah, yeah. that's Ooh, another one. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Like, whoops. Oof, we got a course again. correct for that. Well, mm -hmm. Can we then at least tangent a little bit into. You know the Joker, Joker movie? It's like, the reverse is probably gonna happen with that, where they gave him complete control, he did great, and then they were like, alright, now it's time for us to come in, because we're gonna make even more money. Yeah. Now now we have to put this, now this beautiful yeah. flower that you've created, we have to dig it up and put it in our laboratory. Yeah. <laughs> and we have to try and make this something that we can just analyze in a beaker. Ugh. I think something that is concerning, and I thought about it after you, the Battlefield thing you mentioned where, like, DICE, half of the developer, like, 70% of the developers who were there weren't there when, like, 3 and, and 4 uh, came out. 
And um, I remember like the high turnover rate that was talked about for Uncharted 4 and like The Last of Us 2. These studios, it's like they've got the name and you associate it with the games that they made before, but they're like very different teams at this point. Um, and, and it is concerning how many people are like leaving. Um, because that's the talent you need for like the future. That's the talent that's the, yeah, you want. You need the talent. Maintain. They're going to be the, the next talent. directors, the next designers, and they're leaving. And they go. Uh, they go. Yeah, concerns. That's all. You know. Um. I just wanted to say that Atla is mostly trash and gets away with way too much and I think it's because most people saw it when they were kids, but the animation mm. is solid and I can see why people enjoy it as much as they do. You're not allowed to say that. Well, <laughs> I mean, I think Super Chats, you know, they, they have the freedom to say whatever they wish to say. What can I say about that? Fair enough. Shout out to the stream, Shokio. Oh, streamer Shokio. Yeah, Shokio. No, no. Well, watched him. What's he do? Uh, I think he plays, like, Smash competitively now. Oh, no. I haven't watched him in a while. I remember he got in trouble once because he got really mad that uh they put Steve in Smash Brothers. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, which, which, you know, to me, it feels like a very apt choice to put Steve in Smash Brothers since Minecraft is, like, the best-selling game of all time. I wouldn't even go that direction. I feel like it's... I'd be like, ooh, I wonder what kind of mechanics they put in with him. Um, oh yeah, of course, uh, cause they, they, uh, they did a lot to fit him in. I think they had to, uh, create a system where it's like, cause I think you hit the ground to, to get the, the blocks you need to, like, make weapons and stuff, and it changes depending on, like, what map you're on and what the terrain is, so they had to do a lot of back-end work to make that. Oh, happen. interesting. Um, I, I guess what I mean in terms of, like, popularity is that it it doesn't feel to me like, wow, bullshit, you know? Like, it's Minecraft. Well, you know, like, a if... A lot of people love Minecraft. Let's say, um, Melee had, like, announcements back when- if it was coming out these days, in the last five yeah. big unlocks. You know, like, Mr. Game and Watch, and then I was like, what the fuck is that? I don't care about that. I was just like, well, I mean, dude, that sounds like it could be awesome in terms of what it's gonna be I in relation to everyone else. He was really cool. I yeah, he's a really cool, it. different character. Um, I, like I mean, I, and I guess game and watch. <laughs> I, I feel like the thing is, you know, like if you're cool with Snake, a character who had like seldom showed up on Nintendo systems before that, and was part of an IP that is much smaller than Minecraft, I don't know. That just feels like bias in favor of I, games well, that you like. I'm almost certain that this is all about. I recognize them more, and I want like like if fucking um, Terminator showed up, they'd probably be pretty happy, right? Wouldn't make any well, sense, but but I. But I you know, I because I don't give a shit about Kingdom Hearts, but like that feels like a, a totally fine choice to put Sora in the game. Uh, what's his name? Is that his name? Sora? Well, yeah, but that's you though. I'm assuming you're not going strictly from just what you you want to see. Like you want to uh, go. I'm Ooh. not. Well, it, it's the reason why I bitch about all the Kingdom, uh, the Fire Emblem characters. It's like it's not because like I have a bias against Fire Emblem. I like that game, but like holy shit, you know, ten characters. Like, can we fucking hit the brakes? Mm -hmm. Like, give someone else a chance to get in. I, I think that's a lot of what it is, is that I No, would we need more anime variety. swordsman fringy. We don't have well, enough. Oh god, and, and, you're gonna, and, gonna piss you know, everyone off again. <laughs> and uh. it's just it's, it's <laughs> funny because like Sora, he's like uh he's kind of like an anime ish character and he fights with a swordish weapon, but it's it's he's a totally different a sword like weapon? Like, oh my god. Well it's it's a key. It's a it's a he fights with a giant key. He beats people to death. Yeah, they had it in uh <laughs> the original um, one hundred one Dalmatians movie. Uh, yeah. Um and, and I guess that's what I mean. And, and, and then you sit there, it's like, fuck, man, it would have been cool if we got Crash or, like, Dante. And that that might that slot may have been taken up by a fucking Fire Emblem character instead of, you know, getting one of those guys in. Um, yeah. So anyway. And Waluigi as well. He should be in there. I don't remember when he was revealed to be an assist trophy again. Everybody was very upset. <laughs> Like, everybody hated that, collectively. <laughs> you put Piranha Plants in there, but not Waluigi. <laughs> He's like... an important <laughs> character to the universe. He, he is! Wah. Wah, Waluigi! <laughs> he starts beating you up with a crowbar. That's that's Doom. how I love him, and how I remember him. Yeah, Doom I Guy didn't get in that either. Villain. That's right. They should have put Doom Guy in there. That would have been really cool. Freddy and Jason in there. 
<laughs> yeah, just put <laughs> Scorpion in there. Like, Dude, that sounds like a Flash Kids Mario's video, doesn't it? Like, it does, it does. <laughs> yeah. And it's it would to be me, fun. Mario. It's like, Get over here! <laughs> Rips his heart out. Uh, when are you boys gonna see the Green Knight? I've been seeing an awful lot of bad takes on it out there. My rags, can you say man again? Man? Which one's the Green Knight again? I, I don't know. I'd like to see it, though. I would like to see the Green Knight. I'm on board. Let's do it at some point, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. We'll the Mola plush finally came. Also high ranks. <gasps> Hello. Well, neat. Enjoy. Very good. Uh, you didn't read my last super chat, and I'm not gonna repeat it, Kappa Face. <laughs> uh, how do I get my Switch Pro controller to stop disconnecting from an emulator? The emulator. Uh, I have no idea. No clue. You guys know anything about that? Uh, Fringy, maybe? Nah. Yes. I don't know. I don't nope. know. Alright. I don't know. Also, all out of rags. Oh, hello. And the crying Santa. <gasps> uh, and the Australian Gruntilda. Oh, hey. I guess, yeah, there's a, there's, there's a connection there with her, her nose. She doesn't really have a beak, but I can see why they would say that. Um, I finally played The Last of Us 2, despite listening to EFAP coverage of it. I was not prepared for the awfulness. It was my TLJ, still working on videos, Mola? Yes. Uh, not that video right now, no. But, you um, wonder when somebody plays that game and sees him get shot in the leg. It's like, oh, fuck you. <laughs> like, what are we doing? <laughs> that game's horrible. <laughs> God, the, the dialogue in that game, everybody swearing constantly, is really frustrating. Everybody saying fucking and shit. It's like, oh, this is mature. See? Yeah. Look at how mad they are. It always goes like that. Where, where, where? Yeah. I, I say I all the fucky the words. reaction they wanted to these characters. Ooh, I doubt that the reaction they wanted when was it Manny gets shot in the face by Tommy <laughs> was cheers. I doubt that was what they were going for. <laughs> that is amazing, dude. I want to be. I was like, yes, he's dead. I, I own my only regret is that fucking bastard didn't see it coming. Didn't I? <laughs> oh, I'm pretty sure I like paused the game, was just celebrating. I was so fucking happy that he got not just killed, his face got blown off. That's just like, oh, he just. It's just so unfortunate he didn't feel a thing and he didn't know it was Yeah, <laughs> he's a piece of That's shit, but whatever. Shame that he was a real asshole. <laughs> it's such a shame that Tommy didn't get to finish the job. He got knocked off the edge. Everybody wanted Tommy to kill what we were playing that, as. It's, it's, they, if they wanted to tell that story, which they shouldn't have, but even if they did, they needed to reverse the order. You play as Abby first, get to know all these people, and then when they start getting yeah. picked off, you're like, why the fuck is this happening? And then, like, maybe you have the reveal, it's Tommy, it's like, holy shit, like, what happened? You know what they do? You don't- You can't- You said you made a bunch of unlikable dips fact. that you want to well, die yeah, horribly from the beginning. Thing. That's right. Because <laughs> this whole mission they've got on, you've traveled across the country to kill Joel, you know? Like... You didn't have to, but you did. What a disaster. Like... <laughs> yeah! Fucker of a game. <laughs> like... All the, all the streamers who, when they were playing as Abby, trying to kill um, uh, uh, the girl character. What's her name? Um, the the main girl. Ellie. What's what? Ellie. Ellie. Yeah, and they just they constantly failed over and over, just to see her die. Yeah. <laughs> to see yeah. Ellie kill her, and you're like, yeah, because they're, they're making the you fight they're, the game's Ellie. Over. It's done. We won. We won the game by dying. Making Abby's dead and Ellie killed her. Well, Making you fight make Ellie you as fight Abby. Oh, it's exactly. painful. It was just a really bad decision. And I bet you they thought that was really clever. It's if like, they thought oh, it was clever, they're yeah. gonna be so conflicted. It's like, no, they're not. <laughs> they're no, just... we're not conflicted. We want this fucking bitch to die for what <laughs> she did to Joel. And then of course, she you're was not allowed to... Wrong. 
you're not allowed to make choices in the game, like at the end, because they probably knew that if you gave yeah. like, players the choice to kill oh. Abby, like the majority of them would have followed through. Because oh, I why would. would you? Oh. Why would you know? You have them go oh, all I'd that way. The stats on that. Like her fingers. Me too. I feel like the stats would be like ninety ten. It would be it would be massively skewed. And like you gotta look at that and be like, wait, we fucked up, right? Like it should be you more failed. Uh, you failed it, horrifically. It should, more, it should be more conflicted than that. Like if, <laughs> if what we're going for in terms of our theme. Um But, you know, it didn't didn't work. Well the fact that you already know that the conversation would begin with like you know, considering Joel has essentially killed like the whole world, we'd be like, What stop, stop. <laughs> we'd be like, what? what? Stop. Like, I think you and I have different interpretations of the previous game. It's like that puts That's us on a really reality. bad start. Well, that's the problem is they forget what happened. In the first game, they're like, all right, get him out of here without his supplies. And if he, you know, tries anything, kill him. Like, holy shit, you're fucking him over. You and I don't think the fucking guns that he got promised. And Ellie didn't get to decide shit, right? Because she was unconscious. No. She had that choice. And also, it does when you make this cure, I don't trust the fireflies. I don't trust them to this is assuming it even works. Yeah, that's the thing. There's loads to this. Yeah. Altruistic. What even good best is case scenario. Thing? There's no it does no good. Because the fucking things kill you. They don't just bite you. Yeah, they don't they infect you. you. They bite your face off. Yeah. It's only the it's people not... who are lucky who would be like a very small number of people who get saved by that. And and again, it's like the means of distributing this. You have no resources. You're killing her for a pipe and dream. Solving, and solving, I think we even talked about it. Solving the zombie problem, quote unquote. Um, that's like that's really not going to end the problems of this world right now. No, that should be not. the easy part is getting rid of the zombies because you have like firearms and you could strap armor to your yourself like that shouldn't be the difficult part. The it's difficult the, part is establishing resources, health care. Yeah, yeah All things the people like that. Out there who don't want to, you know, like it's yeah. going to be really hard to get it around the world. There's no government th to roll any of this out. It's, you, you're screwed. And it's like, so you're killing a kid for a pipe dream and you didn't ask her and the person who brought her to you, you're going to fuck him over kick him out with no supplies, none of the guns you promised him. Like, wow. It, and, and yet the game presents this as an evil choice. Yeah, it just do it doesn't work. You you cannot convince me that that was a bad thing to do. You can't, because yeah. Joel was like, completely... Joel did nothing wrong. Joel well, so, did absolutely nothing wrong. The much, Joel's a Chad hero. Yeah. Well, I feel like the better way to do it is just have the character come up and be like, the son of just some guy that he killed, like, throughout the whole adventure, like, when he went into an error and then just started killing people. So it's a little bit more just, like, We talked about it before. Forward. I'm pretty sure on one of our streams, because we, we did it quite a few on Last of Us 2, because that game really pissed a lot of us off. Um, just, you you play as Abby from the get-go, and you're attacked, yeah. but, you know, you learn and get to love, like, a lot of different people, and then one of them is, like, catastrophic. They just wiped out a lot of them by snipers, and then... You know, you're in this really intense action bit, and you can't, you can't quite make out who it is that's attacking you anyway, but obviously the yeah. reveal being at the end that it's Ellie, it Joel, and, and a team and that they're running. Yeah. And then yeah. you're like, why the fuck did you do this? And it's like, uh, you know, you could be any reason, right? It's like, you guys got into a fight with us out, out in the outskirts or something, or you kidnapped one of ours, or a misunderstanding of some kind. Yeah. And you could even do the standard revenge stuff where they actually shoot Abby. And leave her for dead, but she, she survives, you know? Yeah, then it's like, alright, you've killed a bunch and of And then you can have your, your social experiment where you're playing someone who has every reason to want to kill Joel, but we have the matter of loving Joel. And yeah. so it's it's a conflicting that's, experience. That's, that's the way to do it. Endear us to Abby first. Yeah. And present her side as more of like a justified cause and then pit that against our already existing, uh, you know, liking to Joel and Ellie. Well, because they, they, they did that. They wanted to market the game with Joel and Ellie that, you know. Yeah, but they also, I remember like different interviews, they were like, yeah, it's, it's the challenge of having to play as her after everything has happened. And you're just like, I don't, why, 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 I don't. Why do you want? Why do you? I maybe not all to. challenges <laughs> are ones you should present to players. Maybe, maybe that's not. Well, that's maybe what, you like, don't have to do that. You know, stupid video essays were complimenting the game for that as well. It's like how revolutionary to to have framed her as like 
this antagonistic villain and then to actually make her a protagonist. That you have to get through this horrible world. I'm just like, shut the fuck up. Yeah. It's not clever, it's just really annoying. Yeah. And man, do you it... play as her for a while. Yeah, man, oof. We'll and plus, it's not just, it, it's not <laughs> just like all that aspect. It's how they just dumped all over him retroactively. How they dumped yeah. all over Joel they retroactively. They really did. They, with him, they and, kept him and Ellie and all him. that stuff. They, just kept they really just hate... I don't know... It's just, I don't know why Neil hates Joel so much. Well, he's not a beloved character. Remember? Maybe he thought he's everyone awesome. did. Something. <laughs> Like he's like cosmonaut. I mean, yeah, if cosmonaut <laughs> is fucking that detached from reality, maybe Neil is too. It's not unheard of, I suppose. I mean, Ryan Johnson still thinks he made something great. I'm sure Patty Jenkins still thinks she made something great. It's so funny because I like you sit there and you're just like, yeah, Joel, are you unaware? Everyone thinks he's fucking awesome. Where were he's you? Like at the top <laughs> of every ten Sony character lists. I mean. Ugh. Man, people love the fuck out of Joel. <laughs> I mean, like, it's like indisputable. I love Joel. Even oh, I, like, I didn't really even care for the first it's... game, but I'm like, this Joel guy? I, I Retroactively, like guy. man. Because at first, like, I, I when I thought about The Last of Us 1, I was like, you know what? Like, this it, is a pretty good story. <laughs> when you go I like back. it a whole bunch. And just <laughs> father doing everything he can to look after a kid, even surrogate kid, it's very uh, endearing. Yeah. Absolutely, it is. It's very relatable for a lot of people. And then watching him get beaten to death and executed, like, thanks. The golf club. Like, yeah, yeah like... That's, that's uh, such a I thanks, I hate it moment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, the... God, it wasn't just like... on the Reddit, but I have heard time and time again, Last of Us 2 being described as misery porn, and it it's so accurate. It's just fucking miserable. Yeah. You, you just walk away from it, and you're just... You just feel like you want to take a shower. See, I was like, like, yeah, like yeah. you just feel bad. Destruction. See, look, the two sides are killing each other to death, and if they just agreed to live in harmony, everything would be fine. Do you remember, like, I was didn't. late because, like, I, I'd heard a lot of stuff about it, but I hadn't. Even, I wanted to replay the first one first, and then when I finally got to the second one, I wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they kind of they fuck with Ellie. They fuck with Joel. Fuck Everyone's with yeah. miserable Tommy, at the end. Tommy the only at the one end who... is crippled and <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Ellie's, Ellie's crippled too. <laughs> Ellie Joel's can't play guitar anymore because Abby bit off her fucking fingers. Abby, Abby got to get away. <laughs> Abby gets away. Yeah. <laughs> Abby gets away, and I'm like, Jesus Christ! Like the worst possible ending happens. Yeah, and it's also just so Ellie shit. loses her whole family. And She's that, alone. by the way, right? I will, I will allow you to do whatever you want in terms of making whatever canon by the time you hit Last of Us yeah. 3, whatever, but why wasn't there a choice at the end of Last of Us 2? Yeah. Come on. Yeah. I would even be so tempted as part of the team, I'd be like, Neil, we should have it so that they can spare her. Yeah, that's, that's great. We should have it so we can kill it. You should have it so that there's a more sadistic option as well. We need to see what players want after the game we've created. Everyone just wants to torture Abby horrifically. Well, and that'd be an interesting social experiment, right? It's like hmm. I feel like it has to have value. Due to her, what she did to Joel. Well, well this I is think what I mean. Like, think of like POV, right? You play with POV. So if you do this for one game, and then you do a different game where you flip the order, and then you see how people react to it, it's like that's interesting. So people have a much more negative response when they never got to know that person first. And it's like, man. That's an interesting way to think about the way that human oh, and, beings react in these situations. I mean, everybody wanted to just punish Tommy to just actually do things. Become, fuck it, become Punisher. Yeah. Let us play as him. Please. No, the fact not. that he went on this whole adventure, it's like, that's the thing that we would want to do. Yeah. And the fact yeah, that he's, like, yeah, scary yeah. to the people we hate, it's like, oh. Yeah, oh, it's so but then he gets right there. at the end. He's yep. there, he's alone, Maria left him, and <laughs> Ellie is and not just... gonna follow through on her promise to him, and he's <laughs> then gets berated uh, by like fuck Dino, Tommy, because he's mad. Matter. It's like Dude, he's look at him! His head face got blown off. Of course he's mad. <laughs> 
I hate that game. Anyway, <laughs> off, of that, off of that misery. Uh, that's, a, that's one of those moments where it's like, it's been a while since we've talked about it, it's just a bunch of old wounds yeah, being opened up. Wow. Like, we've remember how much we fucking hate Christmas that? Too. Salt, salt rubbed in those wounds. Because like, we haven't done that with, um, we haven't done that with TLJ for so long, and I'm like, is TLJ just a clown movie to us now? Like, we don't even take it seriously. <laughs> <laughs> It used to, it once, it rocked our world at one point, it brought all of us together, it created this goddamn podcast, and now we just, we just, uh Because, uh. yeah, like, I, I remember being so angry at that movie, but right now I'm just like, oh, I just don't, it's, it's my metric for, like, how bad a thing is, to the point where I've disassociated it with my feelings. It's like, oh yeah, TLJ, the yeah. really, really awfully written film. Yeah. Um, what even was the super chat that mentioned? I think someone's just saying they played it for the first time in a while. Yeah. Hope you had fun. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> um, every bad movie has haters, but over time the haters stop caring and move on, and all that's left is the lovers. Yep. It's, it's yep. Actually, true. Yeah. And um, mm, when it's, it's complicated, right? Because like the the passionate passion for hatred and love. Like, the passion for hatred clearly outweighed the love for TLJ, right? Like, people don't fucking really praise that movie anymore. I think they've given up. That is yeah. an interesting one to think yeah. about when people were so vehement, and now, like, nobody really defends yeah. it at all. It's almost like, it, it's gonna be an L for me if I talk about it, I'd better not really, you know, not oh, worth I think even bringing it up. If I'm being as good faith as possible, I do think that, um, Rise of Skywalker kind of fucks up everything you can say about TLJ in a positive way, quote-unquote positive. Like, yeah. when they're like, yeah. you know, it's so interesting that she's nobody, that she doesn't have any gene... Oh, uh, hmm. And he's just like, yeah, she does, so... Hmm. Be because JJ thought that would be clever, I guess? I don't know. <laughs> so bad. Does JJ You're do clever? Your no. lineage is important. No, it's not. Uh, yes, it is. Yes, no, it it's is. Not. Yes, it is. <laughs> no, it's not. That's the so whole trilogy. <laughs> That's what I mean. The, the, the film's... That, like, you know if us lot were in just in that boardroom being like, what is this trilogy going to be about? And we had the discussion initially. That's what the movies were. Like, that portion yeah. of writing where you're just discussing what the idea might be. Because I'm totally happy to make it that Ray's lineage is actually irrelevant. I prefer that as a choice, as long yeah. as you commit to it. I don't- I don't uh, know that we should even frame it this way. could come from anywhere. Like, we're not even- Who cares about- like, like, what is the story, you know? Get all them things done. Go the on. idea that it's like, we're gonna have a, a- a warrior come from nowhere or something and have no- I'm just like, oh, that's- you want to tell that story? Okay, I guess. All right. Yeah, it's fine. Fine I with just me. Mean, we can like, work with that. We got a lot of stuff to to go through with. Uh, okay. I, I would just be like, we got so much else to talk about in terms of like, fucking, where, where, where's everyone oh, at? You know. Building. Yeah. We're, yeah. What's our heroes doing? They didn't talk about that part. <laughs> mm -mm. Well, their shit is what they're doing. Mm hmm. This. They failed, all right? That's, that's they all the failed. Takeaway. They all failed and they're separated and alone. Not only did they all fail, but what you thought was their success literally made the galaxy worse, so... Yep. Uh, um, Rise yeah. of Skywalker is a fucking mess. Like, I'm just now thinking about all the Star Destroyers lifted out of the ice. It's, <laughs> holy crap. That was just the visual, because there's nothing to that that makes any sense at all. Makes any sense, no. This was a nice little trip down memory lane. Yeah. Hmm. Talking about it's Last of Us and Star Wars. Damn well, don't worry, Book of Boba Fett will be out soon enough. Uh, I know it's your favorite show. Boba I like Fett's someone asked me on my, on my stream about something uh, Star Wars related and I just went on about, oh man, I haven't watched any of the Star Wars movies in like probably 10, 10 years, and the old ones I mean. <laughs> well, then, they... oh, I haven't watched any any Star Wars things in, in forever, right? And then someone in my chat was like, "You should forget about the Mandalorian." I was like, "Oh yeah, I did forget about the Mandalorian." <laughs> Who the fuck remembers the Mandalorian? <laughs> I do. I remember the Mandalorian. I remember it. It still is no, fresh hell inside of my head. No, you mentioned Boba, Boba, sucked. Book of Boba. It's like, oh, fuck. Book of Bumbo. 
Book of Bumbo. Yeah. Uh, Atlas animation is okay at best, choppy and cut corners. I think there's stuff I like and stuff I don't like in, in terms of how much effort comes into Atlas animation, yeah. Um, hi Rags. Hello! Just to let you know, I sent a custom VTuber application to your business email. Try it if you're interested. Oh, yeah, let me, uh, let me check. I, I need to get into the habit of checking my email more. Uh, I'll do that right after our... Well, here, let me just check it now. Gmail... I'll look at the Reddit link to get a look. Um. DS2. Oh, yeah, it's a little, little rags and he looks around. Oh, that's really cool. Let me, let me send you a little link this year. I don't know what the E equals is for. But uh, that's really neat. I think I sold one of them for a weekend warrior, actually. That's very neat. He looks around. Cool. Let me download. Oh, that. yeah, that's so neat. Have that handy. Most excellent. Thank you so much. That is really cool, yo. I might be able to bust that out oh, some later. Metal Flame um, of Fright Night Funk, and that was great. No, I'm fucking horse shit at the game. I'm not gonna touch that again. <laughs> <laughs> not invested enough to get good at that rhythm game. I'm sorry. Metal bad. Yeah, I was really bad at that game. Like, I didn't I love expect me to be so awful at that rhythm game. <laughs> mods people made of us in that game are really good. Yeah, I've I played some complete... of the songs that Rainbow Soap did. Some of them were pretty bopping. Mm -hmm. I played through the whole mod on stream two days ago. Oh. Yeah. yeah. So everybody could see how fucking dog shit I was at that game. <laughs> oh. Damn. I was actually, like, I was legit pretty confident to get through this pretty quickly because, well, I think we all played rhythm games before, but for some reason that, that one just completely just threw me off. Hmm. I don't know why, just like, I'm thinking maybe it's because it's on mouse and keyboard. I never played one on mouse and keyboard and controller didn't work. So I, I don't know, just, I think I, I, I changed my button layout like five times <laughs> until I found something that was alright for me. But I managed to get through the for all of them at least once, so there we go. So uh, this is, this is a bit of a tangent. I've been rewatching a bunch of Kitchen Nightmares lately, and just yeah, <laughs> nice Gordon Ramsay stuff because of course it's always good to revisit them. Yeah, um, it is. I watch them too sometimes, little clips yeah. and stuff. That and Gordon Barbara Ramsay Rescue. is like one of my favorite sort of like TV personalities. He is, oh yeah, he's uh, great. He is, <laughs> he's he's fantastic. Um. There's an episode of Kitchen Nightmares where he goes to uh to like a, a town in Spain that is mostly filled with like British people, okay. um, expats, and a lot of them when they they live in Spain or they go on holiday in Spain, but they go and eat like British food in Spain that is all there <laughs> like fish and chips and stuff. Now, Mubes, you're from you're from those isles. Yeah. Why the fuck are people going to like a different country to then eat the same food that they eat at home? Because British people don't like change. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I don't know what else to say to that. Like, I don't get it. I actually do not understand that. That you would go to a different country. If you're in Spain, why are you not eating Spanish food? Why, why you don't like Spanish? Maybe they like Spain, but they don't like Spanish food. But. I would I would wager that many of them haven't even given it a shot. They just want fish and chips because that's what they're familiar with. I don't know. I feel uh, like you you just you would it would be pretty difficult to to not know, I guess. But um, I don't, I don't well, know. so my immediate so rags. If you went to Spain, would you be eating Burger King? Um, or like American food there, or would you? Want so to be I I would food? to compare just to see how they do American food, but I would probably eat predominantly Spanish yeah, food. Yeah, right, exactly. Like because when I went when I went uh, to Malaysia, like I did have KFC, but it had rice, and I wanted to compare it 
Um, yeah, I would I would be super interested in yeah I would be super interested in that. Like, how does this compare? How 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 right. does this compare to it being made where I'm from? Yeah. Just to get that in interesting aspect. But I wouldn't be like, yeah, I gotta have Burger King. That's just what I love. Mm -hmm. That's what I crave. That's what gamers right. crave. Um, I guess that is the broader observation, right? Is like I personally do not understand the idea of going to a different country, but spending all of my time in essentially an enclave of people who are from the country that I'm from, eating food from the country that I'm from. It feels like it defeats the purpose of going to a different country, which is to experience that country. To like get a taste of, of what the life is like there. I, I, yeah, I guess I just remember when I first watched that episode when I was younger, I was like, this is baffling to me. And as an adult, it's also still baffling to me. <laughs> Maybe it's, <laughs> is it like British food with a Spanish twist? Or no, is it a mix no, of both? It's, is it it's, it's like fish and chips. No, it's oh. it's fish and chips. They are British restaurants. Everything's in English. It's it's br and the the people who are there are all British people who like go mm. there on holiday or live there. Yeah, um, I don't know. I because yeah, like Tex-Mex is huge. It's its own genre. Like I live right. in Arkansas, and we have Tex-Mex food here because it's just become its own thing. It's so mm. predominant to have American mixed with Mexican food of course that it's just grow it's grown into its whole whole entire type of food i like tex-mex i don't really care about um, food but i really like tex-mex maybe they just go for the landscape and for the food i mean i guess that's that would be what they tell me i just don't get it i uh i find that very confusing to me like i don't maybe they don't go really there like... every year or something uh they yeah they already I had mean, all the food do that they already had all the food well, which, uh, I've already Maybe. Had food. I, I doubt it, but uh, I, I've never, I don't quite understand that one as well, right? Like going on holiday to the same place. Um, I was like, yeah, again, of going. I, I said it because my, my mom and her husband, they, they go to Croatia almost every year and they always right. eat like the local food, so. Yeah, I guess it's just, that's not, it, it's kind of like, because a, a, a common place that people go to from Australia is Bali. Um, but that's like mm. kind of the reason why I don't want to go there ever. Um, it's too it Australianized, do you think? It is a tour it is a place it is a place that Australian tourists go to. Um, that, like just generally to, to do like Australian holiday in like that area thing. It doesn't interest me. Yeah. I'd, uh, I you like don't want a touristy going... place. You want a place I don't want it. more earnest. Um I mean, I, I like to go to, because when I went to the UK, I went to, like, all the tourist attractions, but, like, it's a different country, you know? Like, I'm going to a different country to see different things there and, mm -hmm. and to get a taste of uh, life in a, in a different location. Like, in the same way that if I went to America, it's like, well, I want to immerse myself in American stuff. I don't want to, I don't want to go to, like, an Australian restaurant. It was like that Simpsons joke where they went to, uh, I think they went to, like, Japan and they went to fucking, like, America town. Yeah. To, like, eat American <laughs> food. Um, what's the national dish of Australia? Fuck. Um, probably, like a meat a meat pie? Or, um... It's probably, like, ostrich burgers? Or no, maybe like koala cakes? Or maybe some, some like, a wallaby salad? Uh, um, I mean, I guess you could have kangaroo, like, but that's not really a common thing that people eat here. Um, but you can have kangaroo. Some, uh, some... Boomerang on the shrimp. Barbie. It would not be shrimp. I. So I'm just gonna tell you guys right now. I can't count on like one hand. I I I, I cannot remember the last time that I ate shrimp that was on a barbecue. I'm pretty sure I've only ever done that once or twice in my whole life. Like shrimp on the Barbie is not a thing. You put sausages on a barbecue. You put like steak on a barbecue. I love me a good patties. grilled shrimp on the on the barbecue. It's good stuff, yeah. especially if you're making like um, shish kebabs. <clears throat> we call them shish kebabs. 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 Fuck. kebabs. You fucking kebabs. confused me. It's kebabs. It is kebabs. <laughs> Holy shish shit. Kebabs. It didn't sound right coming out uh, <laughs> an American voice. Yeah. Um, yeah no, he was probably, doing uh, an accent. I guess... <laughs> no, I know accent. he was. It just sounded weird. Um, they, we it does sound weird, yeah. We call them prawns. We don't call them shrimp. They're prawns. What do you call so barbecues it's, it's, then? Barbecues. Some oh, people call them barbies. Fire boys. Um, I don't. I just call them barbecues. Fire boys. Um, yeah, no. I, uh, yeah, meat pie would probably be an apt choice. Like a meat pie with a pint of like fucking some shit like pint of meat. Colton's rock or something. That'd probably be. That'd probably be like a typical Australian uh, thing in terms of food.
a lot of ours is yeah that that would probably be it whereas when i think of america i think of hot dog for some reason that just feels to me like a very quintessentially american food item yeah we love our we love our hot dogs and our burgers and our ribs yeah. and yeah, yeah. We, all, we got a lot of good like ribs food over here ribs are great i do like my hot dogs yeah well, I, I, I'm yeah, not talking about Gibraltar, by the way. I know Gibraltar's part of the UK. I'm talking about like a... It's in Spain. It's like an enclave, though, where it's basically just a bunch of British people go there for holiday and live there. <laughs> Man, fucking uh, Laylee doing all the heavy flying here. Jeez. Laylee does more than... Wait, not Laylee. Fucking Kazooie. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, what the fuck am I... You can? Uh, yeah, right. Laylee. Kazooie. That's right. <laughs> She's doing all the hard work. Ukulele. DS2 is my last From Software game to Platinum before Elden Ring releases, except Demon's Souls. No PS3 or PS5. And wow. Uh, discussed with a friend already. who liked it, and he said, You have a really high standard. Thank you. I, I, I mean, it's not. That's the thing, though. It doesn't. It doesn't fail a high standard. It fails a very fucking middling standard. DS2. Um. God, that game sucks. But hey, um, if your friend had fun with it, that's great. Uh, these wounds—they will not heal. Lol. I'm assuming that's about the last of us two, probably. Mm. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah. Just a little bit. That sucks. Um, Last of Us 2 for Game of the Year 2021. Uh, it's that good. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Duh. More of a warning at that point, the Game Awards, isn't it? <laughs> it is kind of... Didn't, uh... Because... I'm, I'm finding this interesting... Because Cy uh, Cyberpunk 2077 didn't get nominated for, like, Game of the Year or anything. But what was its Metacritic score? 86. It's like, hmm, interesting. Based on that score, it probably should have been. Yeah, that that's a good game. Totally 86? That's a good game. But that score is totally disconnected from the actual, like, release. <laughs> yeah. Um... I have not gone back to it since I read that. This is Me neither. For metal's eyes only, and it just says E. <laughs> that's, that's, that's from the uh, Friday Night Funkin' mod. Because ah. always, so it was like E E E E E E E in the in the sounds. It's like it sounds like oh, a lot of okay. E's. I see. Now that's that's a small may may, apparently. The may's have been made. E. Um, fuck, marry, kill, banjo, kazooie, and mumbo. Um, mumbo. <laughs> I mean, they're all like I'm animals. I'm from that one. Yeah. <laughs> I'm abstaining. Yeah, I'm not a fan. <laughs> fuck. So what? So the no, list you don't have is... to answer it, Rex. You just don't have no, to. No, it's fine. It's I great. feel like someone gave me the uh, gave me the option. Someone super chatted it. So it's who now? No, that's the, we didn't answer ones before that have been super chatted when they are a bit awkward. Let it be. Let, let it be known, let the EFAP audience know that I was denied, but that's okay. <laughs> I've denied you many times. It's, a, it's for the health uh, of everyone involved. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I have Waluigi all. and Banjo-Kazooie Amiibos. Collection complete. Oh, just those two? <laughs> I mean, if you're gonna have Waluigi, or rather, one thing of, of like a hot toy, oh, Waluigi hot toy, that would be good. Oh, really Waluigi high detail. Better. Fucking five hundred dollar statue, was hand sculpted mm. by Jesus. <laughs> nice. Yeah, bring saying, him yeah. back. I feel like he could make a killing doing that. Uh. Um, uh, Aussie. I think they meant to say native dish. Uh, baked huntsman legs and prawns. No. <laughs> Baked Huntsman Lake Jesus, I, that looks like a... <laughs> I can't imagine what that would look like on a fucking plate. That would be horrible. I don't want to. I want to sleep fried, tonight. Yeah. Like Huntsman Legs sprawled across a plate. No, stop about... explaining. No. Oh, imagine they like twitch. No. <laughs> stop! What the... Oh. A, a stuffed, stuffed funnel web uh, spider. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> funnel web on the plate with a bunch of stuffing in it. Uh, it's like cotton candy. 
uh, yeah, you just yeah. eat like cotton candy with funnel web spider legs sticking out of it. Yeah, well, that gives uh, a little crunch. Yeah, or uh, you get like brown snake stew. Um, you leave the venom in, of course, because that gives it the extra punch. And Somehow, yeah, that's a little, a little bit of a tang to it. Yeah. That's like nowhere near as creepy as the other two, though. <laughs> like... No, I know. Which is funny because if you encounter a brown snake, you're in a lot more trouble than if you encounter a, a huntsman. Well, they like, have scarier uh, names. Are, Brown versus Huntsman. Huntsmen have scarier names, and they look scary, but they're entirely harmless. Funnel webs aren't harmless; they can kill you. But brown snakes can also kill you, and are probably more likely. All right, to everything do it. can kill me. I get it. Well, I, I mean, can. you know, I, I feel like the big one is cassowary. The fact that they they have sharp toenails and they kick so strong it can punch through metal plating. <laughs> Should have had those on the battlefield. Imagine an <laughs> army of cassowaries charging at you. Fuck that. <laughs> that's the, that's I mean, cassowaries. Freaking... That's how we get dinosaurs. Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, so it's not. Well, know. kind of. I mean, cassowaries basically are dinosaurs. Well, I mean, of course, all birds are uh, dinosaurs, right? But cassowaries, it's like you look at them and it's like, yeah, you are. You were there before really the meteor dinosaur. hit, didn't you? You, yeah. you are. You've been around for a long time. Cassowaries, like, actually, uh, though. And you're like, oh. I was there three million years ago. 65 fucking million years comet! Ago. You guys cheated, stupid monkeys. You never would have gotten anywhere. And uh, I guess also because you know saltwater crocodiles are like four meters long. Um, that's the that's the fun one. They're uh, they're huge and uh, they are they are quite dangerous. But uh, fortunately, we don't have those down here. Um. We do have fairy penguins though. They're neat. They're like little penguins that just run around and they're blue and they they're super friendly. Do they eat people? They no, they're too small to eat people. They're do only they like manufacture biological weapons? What what do they do? Well, may maybe they do that, but I mean, if they do, we don't know about it. How are they balanced exactly? What do you mean about? Oh, well, I mean they're really they're little they tiny little them. penguins, um, and they're blue. God, they're not going to stand a chance against so many of Australia's famous animals. Well, fortunately, they can swim, uh, so that helps them out a bunch. Yeah. Um, as long as they don't... I, I find it incredible that there is, like, a fish in this country that is a rock, and if you step on it, it just shoots venom into your foot. Like, it's it a just good defense dizzy, system. You know? <laughs> well, like, it's... You stepped on me, that was your first and last mistake, friend. <laughs> <laughs> that shoots venom well, you. you shouldn't have just stepped there, I guess. Yeah. Um, I'm I mean, sorry, I, I didn't mean it. I don't think it, I don't think it kills you, I think it's just exceedingly painful. The same as, like, oh, well, then. Yay. Cancer, you know. It won't kill you, it'll just destroy your head forever. Like the poopy um, poopy plant. I was about to say, you know, the gimpy gimpy plant where it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, you're just, that's, that's just like a permanent thing you have to deal with now. Ugh, yeah. Fun. <laughs> Just... That doesn't sound like fun at all, you're lying. Well, it, it, it's, um, it's interesting to think all of that. Meanwhile, koalas are like these smooth-brained, they sleep 23 hours a day and they eat leaves that have, like, nothing well, in yeah, them. They, yeah, nutrient. they sleep, so they're never gonna step on some barbed monstrosity yeah. in the ground that's pretending to be a rock. They're, they're asleep that, the whole time. Yeah, they're maybe, not even playing the game. Trees. And they're up in the trees, you know, it's like, yeah. it's, maybe that's why they've survived so long, because they're just unchallenged in the trees. <laughs> um, I I remember uh, someone's telling me, like, how they saw a koala that just kept getting poked by a magpie, and it's like, yeah, they're smooth-brained, I don't know what to tell you, they don't care. Like, they just, <laughs> they're incredibly chill, they just sit there and eat eucalyptus. Poor guys. See, Evolution was like, I'm gonna make a rock that poisons people if they step on it, he's gonna do great. Like, what about koalas? He's well, like, I don't know, they can have some fun. I mean, koalas, uh, we gotta, we gotta look out for them. They're, uh, they're in serious danger due to deforestation. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's concerning. Koalas are, like, th there's a chance that they could become extinct. I think we talked about this before, but, like, what's your stance on keeping species alive that are, like, suicidal slash too stupid to live? Um, well, so the problem is that koalas survived perfectly fine until we got h here. Um, oh, you don't have to... I'm not talking about koalas. <laughs> oh, uh, like a hypothetical species that is yeah. trying to destroy itself. Or, it, um, or has behavior that's so counterproductive to its own survival yeah. that... Like, it just um, I guess, be... like, I guess that would have to be an animal that just popped into existence, right? Because if, if not, then it would have killed itself already. 
Um, I think that I think that the goal of like intervention by humans should be to preserve ecosystems as they ought to have been. Um, you know, barring like significant human um, development. Uh, I think I think that I think that's a, a stance that I would have. So like. If, if we were to presume that there was some kind of equilibrium and then we disturb that equilibrium, we should try and go out of our way to uh, rebalance it, I guess. So I, I don't know that that would factor into saving a species that's suicidal. Um, like, I'm not sure that we should be actively disrupting the, uh, the natural um, process that that species has. I think, I think we should try to avoid that if possible. I would be fine with saving uh, animals that their, their own counterproductive behavior could lead to their extinction. I'm um, fine with us saving them. Right. I, I, I guess we... the problem is, because I'm thinking about koalas, it's like, man, koalas, like, they're pretty, like, they couldn't survive without us. Um, but it's like, yeah, but but they wouldn't be fucked if it weren't for us either, so, you know, like, we, we probably should do something about that. Like, maybe they'd eventually die out, but they wouldn't have died out as quickly. Um, Surely we should I give mean, them the benefit of the doubt, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're smooth brain. Like, we gotta look out for them. What if that um, went true, that we had nothing to do with their downfall? Um, ah, uh, that gets a little bit more complicated, because, um, I think the problem is it's hard to think about, because it's so often that, that, that that's not the case. Like, a lot of the time it's our fault. So, uh, we never really think about conservation from the perspective of that animal would have died out anyway, and we're kind of, like, propping up this species that, uh, I guess it would be, it might be worth keeping them around just for the sake of, like, knowledge, you know? Um, that maybe, maybe that's good enough that it's, like, it'll be cool to just keep them around and, uh, and, and see how they interact with other species and so we can learn about them. Um... Especially yeah. considering that it takes a long time for a species to come into existence, and it could be quick that it disappears, and it if it's gone, it's quick. gone. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, is that more I, pragmatic at that point? Uh, I well, I think that there's an aspect of because I I I see humans as like because of our our mental capabilities and our intelligence and our advantage that we have over pretty much everything else in the world at this point that we kind of should assume this responsible stewardship of the world i agree and yeah as a result of that i think that saving a creature that like because because there's an element of like take the panda right pandas often like stubbornly refuse to reproduce <laughs> yeah. they just will not do it and and so how much is can a does if you could have a panda understand that it it was very there's not many of them left and many of them are in captivity and we want to save their species and they will go extinct if you don't do this like how would the panda still just refuse to reproduce with each other yeah or, like if the panda had the capacity to understand what we're trying to do would they yeah refuse? i think yeah it's like when you when a dog eats chocolate and so you try to make it vomit and the dog just doesn't understand that you're saving its life because you love it and now it hates you uh, it's just like, man, I wish you could just understand, you know, um, mm -hmm. and maybe it's that lack of understanding that animals can potentially have that makes us really want to, if anything, err on the side of preservation. Yeah, rather than letting a species die, because once it's dead, that's it. There's no fixing that. Um, yeah, and, and however much, like, or like cryogenically freeze the eggs or, you know, something, maybe you know? something to pre preserve them. Uh, yeah, to preserve that i think would be a good idea and yeah i, yeah. I think that that's our responsibility is basically to be the custodians of the planet and to try and not fuck it up and um, plus we're, not doing a, we're not doing a great job but you know there is also an aspect of again like if something's gone gone it's gone forever yeah so you can't go Tasmanian back from that tiger's gone you know yeah it's gone the dodo has gone um, you go well, a lot unless of we get lucky moves. and discover like frozen mammal, May, like yeah, mammoth DNA yeah. or something like that, we just get really lucky that one day Jurassic we might Park. be able to actually create them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, I mean, I, I, I would err on the side of more biodiversity, particularly yeah. if you know it, if it, it doesn't really cost us much to do so, or if there's a way for us to, if anything, just make a a sort of like save point for animals where we can get back to them later when the technology's mm -hmm. there to, to, to create them. something 
that is interesting to think about though on this subject that I'm now thinking is uh human beings like the 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 first people to arrive in America and Australia actually killed a lot of the uh the the larger species so like the ecosystem that that European uh colonials came to was already an altered ecosystem where uh, a lot of the big animals so like here we had large marsupials and uh a lot of large lizards that just got hunted to extinction and in North America, they had, like, mammoths. Because woolly mammoths still existed during, like, fucking Egypt times. But they all got killed off. Um, so it's like, hmm. what You know, we're preserving an ecosystem in a sense that has already been significantly changed by humans. Mainly, you know, when humans were, like, completely oblivious to, to like, the idea of hunting animals to extinction. Or, you know, completely destroying, like, uh, biodiversity or anything like that. So it's kind of interesting to think, like, uh, what we're preserving is still fundamentally altered by us existing. And um, I don't, I don't, I don't put too much, um, thought into the idea of, like, as nature intends, because nature doesn't intend anything. Nature doesn't intend, it just um, does. They, it's so, nature just sort of does what happens. Um, it's yeah. all, it, it, it's, it's not following some kind of a plan or Is it not nature like for us to save species? Well, well, I mean, it would be because it, we're making the decision to do it. Yeah, it's it, it's sort of what I'm getting at in the turn of, I mean, yeah, sure, it's, I mean, it the natural thing is to let, you know, like vaccines and um, like uh, inoculations and stuff like that. That's going against nature, depending on how you want to phrase that or the way you want to look at that sort of thing. So I, I think there's that, that healthy middle point of, can we do good? Can we guard like like a, like gardens don't exist really in nature? They're they're human creations, but they almost help nature flourish in a sense, where they are maintained and they are in, in a healthy and responsible way. We allow nature to flourish. Yeah, um, I think so we can maybe, do that, and I think we yeah, should. I, I, that's probably the way that maybe we should kind of go. Yeah. You know, the mindset that we should have. Well. It's the standard meme, right, of, like, when people watch nature documentaries and they see, like, a lion hunt down, like, a zebra calf and, and they're all really sad. It's like, okay, be sad all you want, but we're not stopping that. Like, that's that's the process. That's how these animals interact with one another. Like, it's not our job to make moral uh, statements on, like, animal behavior. You want to let the you want to let the, the system play out as it is and we just want to, like, preserve numbers. It's kind of like, it's, it's partly hands-on. We don't want to be altering the, the behavior of these these animals. At least I don't think we should. Because that, that just feels like human interference at that point. Well, what if pandas yeah, did I... actually were able to communicate to us that they didn't want to reproduce? Um, well, I guess you just have to uh, let them make that I choice, you know? Yeah, I guess if they don't want... If, if they're intelligent enough to have that perspective... And uh, say yeah, it way. Have, then I'm I like, think, I well, think they I can guess, make that choice. All right. Yeah. It's like I'll be sad to see you go. Like, is there anything I can do to talk you out of it? Because you guys are adorable. Still gonna freeze your DNA. But what? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> yeah. 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 Yeah, absolutely. You're right to do it. Yeah. Pandas had their chance, but mm. yeah, we needed to freeze some of those Krypton embryos. Is what we needed to do. <laughs> no, too late. He fried them all. He did fry them up. That's he a did. thing that happened. He made you know, that we're... decision. He made an executive decision. <laughs> that still sits in the weird. back of my head. Superman wiped out all of the Kryptonian babies for no reason. Yeah, he just oh, that's bad. a thing that happened. Rags, we have frozen man. I know. That's why I brought them up specifically as an example of them being a thing that's frozen. So yep. yes, thank you. But um, hey, <sighs> that that does weigh on my conscience every once in a while. I do think about Superman killing all of the Krypton. Babies. Man of Steel is good, guys. Uh, had its boy. chance. I like the idea that you've got like a panda trying to save its species, and Superman's like, pandas had their chance, as he lays his all the pandas. You just need like, one ten-year-old Kryptonian to be like, yeah, Zod's a dick. We're all people, yeah. man. Yeah, like, we're fine. We'd like to live, if that's well, alright with y'all. it's interesting, right? Krypton had its chance, he says, as he lays his people who had no chance ever <laughs> exactly. to, like, make meaningful decisions. Talk about sins of the fucking father. Jesus I Christ. I know, God damn. <laughs> like, he's got this red dish with these cute little, really young Kryptonians all, like, hanging out in the, in the little spheres. Be like, can't oh, wait to be human. Can't wait to be born, yeah. Up, yeah. So excited. 
I hope I get to be a... Then one of them just Superman. melts. Too many of them. What are we going to do? <laughs> his eyes light up. We got a little too. He just got laser beamed in half. Who would do this? What yeah. enemy of the Kryptonian people would possibly <laughs> what do monster this? What monster could bring them would do this I wanted to be a mountain climber. <laughs> I remember we had people being like, yeah, because they're all genetically engineered to have particular roles in society, so fuck them. It's like, oh my wow. god. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You guys need to, you, you guys, I'm up. sorry you're to break it to you, but like, are that, up. That, well, it's just like, you're gonna have to get used to genetically engineered people, alright? That's happening, <laughs> sooner or later. You're gonna have to sorry, catch you, up. Your genes have been changed, so you're not human anymore. I mean, like, we've, okay. we've probably um, already then, entered that arena, definitionally. Like, with some of the stuff we fuck with with babies have, before they I come out. Have, like, yeah. and we're definitely doing genetic engineering. That's happening. Gattaca. It's, it's gonna happen. Gattaca's not real, idiot. Uh, that's true, you got you're me on real. that. Um, where were we? It feels it's just, I, I, I'm lost. Trump Walu on the Barbie. Waluigi. That yeah. Huntsman legs. Ugh. Uh, no one talks <laughs> about this, so I feel insane. Didn't y'all find the OST for Atla, with the exception of a few genuine bangers, sounded cheap and horrible? I'd have to listen to it all isolated. I don't, uh. I can't quite remember what I thought of the Atla soundtrack. Oh, why are there so many Atla? Th those, those are from three different accounts. Oh, hmm. Guys, don't you know? I'm not allowed to do that. Just stop. They triggered their their Atla takes uh, yeah. for each other. It looks like, but um, yeah, I'd have to I'd have to listen to them. Uh, Vizzy Pop said, "If there, if there's something you can't even enjoy, you watch it to feel the bitterness and look for the mistakes. Just grow up." Yeah, but what if I don't know if it's good in the beginning? Oh wait, am I catching that say, right? Did that... you say that quote again? Well, it's, That's it's not a weird quite one. spelt right, and I'm a, so I'm kind of a, it's. If there's something you can't even enjoy, you watch okay. it to feel the bitterness and look for the mistakes. Just grow up. I don't know uh, if they're defending okay. it or attacking I need it. The context, yeah, I feel like I I weird. need some context on that one because that's. That one's odd to me. Because uh, for a moment there, I was like, oh, are they saying, like, let people watch things that they don't enjoy because they're looking for mistakes, just grow up? Or are they saying, you only watch it to be bitter, just grow up? It could I be one of those know. two, I'm not sure. Alrighty. Um, yeah, it's... Uh... It appears the most common thing about you, Mauler, and Fringy, is that England is your city or something. Oh yeah, some people say like Wales is a town in England or something. <laughs> um, I don't know why, why you said Anne Fringy in that. I'm not sure. I don't think people don't say Australia is a town in England, right? Because holy shit! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry Australia about your brain. A town in <laughs> yeah, I know that one. I've been there before. <laughs> so, um... Um, run, Mewfly, run! Oh, it was a big spooky shark. <laughs> Any chance you can ask Wolf his opinion on Leviathan Falls? Wouldn't normally ask, but it's the end of the Expanse series. Uh, if not, that's cool too. I'm gonna go ahead and say no on that one. No, no on that one. Um, also, did you know uh, you can play N64 games in widescreen, 16x9 with this emulator? Oh yeah, but it just it matches the the super chat gaming sort of setup thing, so it's all good. And this is mm -hmm. how it looked when it came out. Yeah, nice and classic. Yeah. Mm -mm. Um. Do, do, do. What is your policy on Venus flytraps? Our policy. Bad. Hey, if they kill flies, I'm for them. I think they're kind of fascinating, right, in terms of... It's like the plants were like, enough! We're fighting back. <laughs> You're always landing on me, zabs in the round. I'm gonna eat you now. Like the closest we got to just a plant that has a mouth and will fucking eat you. You're like, ah. Yeah. Unless it's ones I don't know about, but I've always found them neat as an idea. Um, yeah. Feels like a video game enemy. Carnivorous plant. Yeah, it's not a it's not a very extensive list of carnivorous plants, so 
I think they're very interesting. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I hope they do well in their endeavor in society. They got a lot to fight. Good luck. Who? Venus flytraps. Oh, yeah, God, they are. Uh, yeah, they got quite a, a daunting challenge to, to overcome. I guess Which their whole is... thing is like, hey, isn't it like they give off a scent or something to tempt things into the mouth? Like, hey, some look, use scent, it's, it's some nice use in here. It's colors. nice and warm, all right? So the there's a there's like a pitcher one. Uh, I forget what it's called. It's like a pitcher plant, and it emanates the smell of dead flesh, rotten meat, so oh. that flies or and other insects are like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go get me some rotten meat, and then they crawl inside of it, and it's all gooey and sticky, oh, and so they yeah. get trapped by the gooey, sticky stuff. Um, Venus fly traps, I think it's the color, the bright color of the inside. kind of looks flowery, so something lands on it, and it hits a little, little trigger hair on it, and then it closes shut. It's like, Wee! and then eats it. How do you feel about frilly toothpicks? Oh, I'm for them. Then so are we. But frilly toothpicks. That is a reference ah. to the to the Mitch Hedberg. And a sandwich club. I got nothing. I'm sorry. That's fine. <laughs> Um, I'd like to thank Fringian Metal for inspiring me to watch 12 Angry Men by giving money to Mola. What a damn good movie. Hi, Rags. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, it's a great well, movie. Well, thank you. The only loser here is me, though, but cool. <laughs> I, I don't think I want to watch a movie about fucking white men shouting as they usually do. Sounds like, uh, you know. Geez. Ugh. What's... I know, it's so presumptuous of them to think they know what's right and wrong. Yeah, let me guess. They get bored of mansplaining to everyone else, so they just do it to each other. Yeah. What does really it mean well. to mansplain to a man? Is that just talking? Yeah, I think that... <laughs> <laughs> that's... that's uh, like I know. I don't know what the rule is to this weak fringy. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I don't know. Who it's hard to keep track of these things. I'm sorry. It is. <laughs> they need to start writing this stuff down and posting it somewhere. <laughs> It just tempts the, you as well to be counter sexism, where you're like, is there no female equivalent because women can't explain things? <laughs> it's like, hey! You'd be like, well, I'm sorry, you just made like a really sexist fucking term all of a sudden. It's so sexist. It really is. When men say stuff, it's mansplaining. <laughs> like, okay. I think it was the the Twelve Tables of Rome, uh, or the, the Law of the Twelve Tables, which are these massive, in ancient Rome, these these huge bronze tablets that had the Twelve Rules, uh, or the, 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 like the, the laws of Rome, essentially. And they'd be posted around Rome at the entrances or wherever, so that it was clear that these are our rules, and you need to follow them. And it was very clear, so that people knew. Like, you don't have an excuse for not knowing them. Here they are. They're, we're going to post them around in places. I don't know. It's something I heard. No, is it, no, oh, is that, I thought that was like part code, one maybe? to the story. Is there anything else? Or? No, I, I can make something up, though. Do it. <laughs> uh, well, when the Vandals sacked Rome, they took these 12 laws of Rome. Pete on them. And these massive bronze tablets. And they said, you know what? Fuck these rules. We don't like rules. We're they vandals. On them, didn't they? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, they, they on them, right? And so they melted down the bronze uh, tablets and they created a massive uh, hand, a massive sculpture of a hand with its middle finger erect. And that was, and that's where we get the uh, middle finger gesture because to the vandals, that was a symbol of um, like resistance uh, to authority. And so whenever you give someone the middle finger, that's what it's a call back to. It's like, it's to hell with you. I'm not going to follow your rules. I'm going to be my own person. And that's where you get that from. I yeah. made all that up. Yeah. No, no, that, you, that checks yeah. out. That's real. Yeah. I'd that, be tempted to, to me. have like, if I was writing a story, have a character who just makes up random facts, but like you try and make them sound as realistic as possible. That was a really cool game that I'd played. There's a... It's a it's like a board game, where that's based off of fibbing, where you were given you're pretty much you 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 had to select something that was false from cards, and you had to present it in a way that was believable, and people had to find out if it was true or false. 
That was a really fun game. I really like that. Turns out I'm a really good liar. So that's neat. <laughs> it's good to know. It's a neat skill to have. I played a similar game like this, where you got like, I think five cards with like pictures on it, and then you had to tell a story about it or give it a title. Mm -hmm. And then not everyone should guess it, but the best is when four guess it and one doesn't, because then you get four points. If all, all of them guess it, you get zero points. So, so you have to be truthful, but not too truthful. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That's like the Pictionary game I used to play once upon a time where the goal was, it was like the drawing shit we do on the other games, but mm. you had to draw an image that best represents the word you were given, but you only want one person to guess. The more people who guess, the less points you get, which is creates an interesting ah, challenge. Interesting. That is yeah. interesting. You want to be good, but not too good, but not really good. But just It'd be funny with, say it was like, you know, house, and you, you draw like, I don't know, windows and a door and you're like nah, yeah, i guess it, you know, maybe a car and then someone guesses it and you just start <laughs> drawing random shit and so people are like what was it what was this <laughs> like yeah. you'll never know bitch <laughs> i was saying to um to jay you should start up a show because he really likes the british panel shows as do many because they're fantastic but the um is it called Would I Lie to You? I always mix it up with. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I, I've seen some of that. I like Would I Lie to You. Is it That's like. One I have to, have Jay to could watch. totally make that um, on YouTube. You could invite guests, and their oh, job yeah. is to come up with four stories, two real, two false. Well, actually, you don't want to do it like that, do you? You want it to make. Just come with stories. If you couldn't make have any interesting ones in your life, come with fake ones. The host will yeah. know the truth for all of them. Um, yeah, but then you take it in turns to guess, and they'll, it'll be based on their presentation. Can you tell if they're lying or not? And their answers for questions and stuff, which I think would be really fun. Mm -hmm. and honestly, thinking about it, I'm surprised there's nobody doing it on YouTube yet. I don't know if there is. Good question, I don't know. I would, yeah, I, I like games like that where you try to, you have to be quick on your feet in terms of thinking of stuff. Like, how do I try and sell this idea? That does sound pretty... Fun. I'm missing a Jinjo rags. A ginger? A Jinjo. Oh, okay, because I was to say, are you really missing them? <laughs> I mean, some of the ginger girls are real hot, I don't know what you mean. Ginger girl? Oh, that's different. That's a whole different thing. <laughs> that's different. We've entered into a new realm. Anyone in chat, do you know where my missing Jinjo is? It would be really helpful. Um, hot take. Fortnite ain't a bad game, just has tedious combat mechanics. I got gifted a mouse with a thumb keypad, and I'm actually having fun with it. Absolutely. It's one of the first things I recommend to people who are getting into PC gaming, is get one of those mice that has the buttons on the side. Um, it, it is ubiquitously useful. I use it all the time. There isn't a game I don't use it in. Um, I've never played Fortnite. I just fucking hate that I see it everywhere all the time with everything. <laughs> yeah. I played it briefly and I didn't like it. So. I played a bit when it first came out. Um, yeah. But I haven't played Not it in Not my thing. Not my thing. I don't care for it. I much prefer other games. Yeah. But it seems like they keep... They Apparently, they, from what I've seen, like they do a good job keeping their audience on their toes with like lots of content and different mini games and stuff they get. I think they right. like just now had like a completely new event with the new season. Yeah, I saw they got Spider Man in it. They got The Rock in it now. Of course, they got everything in it. That's, that, that's just the reason. Yeah, they Master just had, like, Chief and they flipped a what oh, event or something and like a single player uh, event you could play. And then, like, the legit the whole map just flipped. Like, the island, and it's like a new map now. Yeah. Like, the in, like it's inverse? Like Mirror they, mode. They... Okay, that sounds nifty. That would be interesting. Like, I know if Apex did that, I'd, get, I'd be very interested to try it. Because that would just be familiar yet different. Because you get so used to these maps when you play them enough times. Let's go here, yeah. let's go there, the sight lines here, sight lines <clears> there, we're in the pathway here and there, and just kind of shaking that up a bit in an intuitive way. That sounds really appealing to me. <clears throat> oh, there he is. I thought I checked the palm trees. My bad. 
Gotcha, bitch. If I can just... Eh. Um. Okay. Hmm. Fun fact, England is the name of a city in Arkansas. I mentioned... There is an England, Arkansas, yes. The England is. is my city thing because it was a big meme in 2017. Jake Paul did it. England is my city? Mm. I don't know anything about that meme. Um, I don't, don't know about the England. Can I post Vi's pop context to the Discord? I, um, I, I don't know who this person is, and if, they, if they're just doing the standard meme of uh, stop hating things, weirdo, like, I, just, I don't care, it's fine. You go, you go right ahead, you have fun. To that person. If they're saying there's value in criticizing things, whatever, good, good stuff. Yeah, there is. Neat. I approve. Um... I'm gonna get some rotten meat, rags, 2021. Hi, rags. Yum. Hello. Ringy, did you know that England is your city? I, I, what, England? Is this like that Jake Paul meme I've heard so much about? <laughs> I guess, is this a meme or? I guess so, yeah, I'm, I'm unaware of this Logan one. Logan Paul. I'm, I'm, with this I'm, I'm very unaware of the polls in general, so. I, yes, I know I nothing other than they are appalling. But uh -huh. that's, that's really about. That's, that's about. I remember it was the suicide forest thing. Yeah, that was big. Yeah. Did that did that cause an ad apocalypse? I can't remember. I it probably it, it probably did. <laughs> I can't remember. I There's been so been. many where uh, something happens and there have been so many. Ad. Yeah. There's a new wave of What makes me think, like, were YouTubers just making shit tons of money back in the day? Because, like, you know, it's still steady, as far as I know. It's not like there's no I think it was money. just... You just didn't have to worry about... I don't think you... It's just that you didn't get videos demonetized constantly. I think that was one of the things, yeah. That's, I, think oh, I, I, just I, meant... I think I got in at the tail end of it, where just everything just got monetized. You were just able to monetize everything. Yeah, I meant more so the, of the things that are monetized, how much ads they get. And, you know, because, like, different companies being less inclined to do YouTube, which I've always found curious, because YouTube seems to have the lion's share of the online video market, you know? Yeah, yeah. you you, of, you often do wonder, like, what, you're going to give that up? Are you really? Really, like, well, they are had, you? They had an evil thing. Like, yeah, it's just the one so video, you're just going to stop know. putting your ads on YouTube because of one video? It's like, fuck off. How much of this is real? Yeah. Um, EFAP Movies idea, Red Dawn 1984 and Red Dawn 2012. Oh. I mean, if you guys really wanted to, I would join. I don't want, I don't want to watch, like, the Red No, I've, I've heard the new one is, I just don't have that much, in, much interest in Red Dawn. Like, I, I think the old one's pretty good, but the new one I've heard is terrible. So I'm just not, I just don't really care, yeah. Very well. Um, hi, I'm all the high rags. Hello. Hi. I know this is out of nowhere, but I hmm. found a series you guys would like to see. It's called Twelve Monkeys. It's a TV series and it's pretty good. I'll provide a link that has all four seasons. And then they got a Twelve little, they got a Monkeys. Is a, well, I think it's meant to be like based on the movie Twelve Monkeys, right? I've never heard of it. Um, I think I've heard of the show, but I don't know anything about it. But except that it's based on the movie. <laughs> Movie's better. I'm not surprised at all by that, but hey. I'm gonna get a drink. I'll be right back. Very well. <laughs> Uh, Dune doesn't stand on its own as a cohesively written movie. However, it's beautifully shot a visualization of the novel. Definitely hope to hear your thoughts on it after reading the novel. If you're not looking at it purely on its own, it's a great joy. Uh, I'm not planning to read it, but I think, Fringy, you're, you're partially interested, yes? Dune, yeah. Wait, how did you get Gruntilda's eye to move up here? I remember being able to do that, but I've completely forgotten how. 
I'm gonna keep an eye on chat for a minute to get me me answers. I've completed all registers, fine. Shut up, you didn't. You can't do that. This is mean. Yeah, you deserve it, you fool. You guys should check out the six hour miniseries of Dune from 2000. Budget is $3, but it's mostly solid. Best adaptation of Dune, arguably. I Is that the thing that I got sent the clip from? Because holy fuck. I hope that clip is not representative. <laughs> That's all I'm yeah. saying. Oh, you know what? I know what this is. Uh, it's, uh, it's on the back of the lighthouse, isn't it? Alright, I can't get in this way. My bad. I remember. It's a Gruntilda icon. Um... The date tree scene is meant to convey that while the Fremen care about survival, that's not the end-all be-all of their society. It means they're willing to sacrifice themselves for a greater cause. That's the point of the palm tree scene? Wait, sorry, I was not listening. What, what, what was the thing? It was to show the Fremen care about survival. Uh, they don't just care about survival. Um, it shows they're willing to sacrifice themselves for a greater cause. Okay. I don't know about that. <laughs> I mean, they are in the distance in the scene. I, I wasn't even clear that they were there for the trees. Yeah, they just burn it later on. You see them burn. Like, oh, well, for, that that's not really... frames or so. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they're talking about that. They're just... It's... Yeah. It's, um... I just... I didn't pick that up. Um, but maybe it was there. If I rewatch it. Yeah, maybe. Um, what if he was sleeping when the drone was sent in? Well, yeah, because apparently some people were saying the drone only detects movement, which I still think is retarded, by the way. Yeah. All this technology. <laughs> you tell me there's no computer technology to do with that Hunter Seeker, by the way. It's like, hmm. Like, how is a remote controller not... Computer but the books stuff. say computers are not allowed. I don't really I see how that doesn't count as a computer of some kind. <laughs> but moves. And then if he was sleeping, I guess the hunter seeker drone just sits around for a while. Like, oh. hope he turns up at some point. Oh, uh, It'll be shitty gene. breakfast. And then it just kills the 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 maid because she's walking around. Oh, that man. seems like a major mistake, right? Like. It'll just kill whatever's moving. It's like, there's a lot of things that might be moving in that room. If we really want to kill him, we might need to come up with something a little bit more, um, specific. The Underseeker? Yeah. Well, it had an operator, right? I assume that's what the operator's sort of for, to verify the target and to drive it Did you get that from the into... movie? Because I certainly didn't. Well, I... I, I guess if, it, if there is an operator for it, I think they even call it there's a... What do they what what do they call him specifically? I assume he was controlling it. Well, so it gets much worse if that's true, right? Like everyone's defense of that is that he's not controlling it because it just randomly attacks someone who's entering the room. Like if he was controlling it, why would he do that? The hunter said so the one that tried to kill Paul. Yeah. Is that you were. You, I don't know. Maybe it was waiting for a certain time, and then it came into the room and it had to verify that it was him. And I... I'm not sure. This switch is already pressed? Now I'm getting very lost as to what I was supposed to do. Oh, am I dead? What? <laughs> yes, the momentum works that way. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> he was going like, whoa! There's just a little sploosh noise and I'm like, hey, let's go. <laughs> I'm fine. Do I have to... Collect gingers to open up that, because I can't remember what prompts that little, little, little thing now. Gosh darn, misremembering some things and it's causing me grumplings. Not the um, grumplings. Grumplo. Yeah, that Hunter Seek scene was very strange to me. I, um, I was getting a little lost at that point in the film. Um... Mm. Uh, Muller, I asked if you c and Co. could forget a movie, which one would you forget and why? And everyone back then agreed on Lord of the Rings, so you could experience it anew. Same question, but game instead of movie, Soma. Soma. Ooh. Um, Soma's definitely up there. 
I might. Oh man, I might go with the first Bioshock. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, I might go with. Oh, there's, oh, man, because I'm trying to think back in the day, a lot of the games where I was just absorbed into them. Those would probably be the top two at my list, I think. I might go with playing the COD 4 campaign fresh again. There were some really good moments in that that I enjoyed. Um, hmm wouldn't mind having my first time experience in the Dark Souls games again. Yeah, Dark Souls 1 is a big one for me as well. Yeah. Oh yeah, Outer Wilds. As someone just mentioned in chat. Outer Wilds for sure. I... That is true. Thank you for reminding me. I I just did think about that just now. I'm... Yeah, I think I'm... Whoa, that's tough. Yeah, it's like Soma or Bioshock. Um... Maybe Minecraft, because um, I have a lot of very fond memories of just that game and exploring and building things in it. Maybe not, because I still get, like, it, you don't lose enjoyment in that game, sort of becoming more familiar with it, so let's scratch that. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll stick with those two for time's sake. I, probably Soma or Bioshock. I might lean towards Bioshock because it's more gamey, I guess, and there's more of a maybe gamey element of it that me meshes well with the environment, but it's really t it's really tough for me to... Th they would both be excellent answers, but I'm, I'm going to go ahead and go with Bioshock. I don't know about Bioshock. Uh, someone remade Bioshock 1 in Half-Life Alex as a mod. <laughs> Neat. Gonna, really? Gonna wow. Check that out at some point, yeah. That sounds really interesting. That's the kind of game that should be VR, like a Bioshock game. Yeah, being I feel in like that would work pretty well. Like that. I guess Fringy's just got not got an answer for this one. Well, it was a hard. question in full. There's been a lot of discussion on it. If you could re-experience yeah, for the first time, uh, any game would it be? Might be Super Mario Galaxy. Yeah, but there are a lot of games I'd want to have that. Uh, yeah, that's through. a long list. That's a long list. Because even uh, games oh. like um, like Metro Last Light, I was really absorbed into that game and the world and a lot of the characters and, you know, things that happened in it. And it would be, there's so many games where if I could just get those for the first time again, that that'd the incredible high that is the discovery of a new great game atmosphere. That is a, yeah. that's the, that's the dragon you're always chasing, but you do catch him. And then he gets away, and then you gotta chase him again. Uh, what's everyone think of Swift's new Red album? I don't know. I don't, is Swift the band? Because I'm not familiar with that band. I, I do not know if it refers to a particular singer or band. I, I, I don't know. Do not know. Do we need to get Swifty? It'd be Swifty, but yes and no. No, the band is the band is Swift. We'd have to get Swifty. No, they must conform to Rick and Morty. Get Swifty, you mean? Yeah. <laughs> have to conform no, get to Rick no, and Morty. No, yeah. get Swifty. That's what you mean. <laughs> no, get Swifty because it's about the no, band Swifty. Swift. It's about Swifty. Because if something is Swift-like, it is Swifty. Swift, yeah. No, it, it's I agree, Swifty. Hmm. The issue is that the Atreides are aware of the Emperor's role in the plot from the beginning. Um, I don't know if they're aware. I think they're suspicious of it. Are they thinking of it? It, it could be. It's They see it as a potential. They're almost incredulous of that he would do that because of how unprecedented it is. They seem to have some awareness that it's to shake things up, but I don't think they were aware that they were going to be fucking all killed. Yeah. yeah. Until maybe the scene where he talks about how he wants Paul to be taken care of if anything should happen to him. I remember being like, you yeah. you, you sound like you'd chill with a potentially very bad outcome. Yeah. And I don't want him to be because I like him. 
I want to watch the whole too. movie with him. Absolutely, Leto is Leto's a Chad man. Mm -hmm. Master Mola, how exactly do you catch clunky expositional bad dialogue in general? I sometimes struggle to understand what exactly makes a line poorly written when it seems fine surface level. Just um, whether or not someone would say those things is usually where you start, right? And it's oh yeah, also someone brought up Prey 2016. Yeah, that's a really good one for forgetting again. Um, but when it comes to clunky dialogue, oftentimes in movies, same thing with plays and just fiction in general. When people speak, they speak in almost an idealized form of how people truly speak. Mm -hmm. There's there's not a lot of ums and uhs and stuttering. And characters who speak like normal people in media, sometimes they could stand out because they're not quite as refined in speech as everyone else. And a lot of this is for expediency and for the sake of time. But it, it, it generally is used to contrast normal speakers with poor speakers. So if you take a, a character in media who doesn't sort of speak in that way, this refined, uh, well-practiced, I guess, version of how people normally speak, it can come across as clunky. Can you name an example of that? Um, uh, let me see. You know how a lot of the Star Wars prequels, how people talk? I could see how some a real person might, if you just talk to them on the street, they might speak like that, because it's so it's it's so vulgar sometimes, but in an odd way. And it's not typically how you see people talk to one another in media. It's not typically how you see people talk in you know in, in works of fiction. And it like you're never gonna say, oh yeah, that's well. It's tough to explain. Um, I hope I've made some kind of, like, some understandable sort of concept. Um, I guess it's, guess it's hard to get across, because people in fiction don't normally speak like people typically do. They speak better than people typically do. Well, I feel so like a big thing when it comes to good or bad dialogue is, are they talking to the person they're speaking to in the scene, or are they talking to you? If you can really notice they're talking to you, then that's a good example of bad dialogue. Like, man, yeah, remember the... on uh, December 4th, um, 2003, when you and I, my best friend, went on an adventure to the realm of Schlubelbot? which was currently under siege by the Gunjupis. Man, that was crazy, wasn't it? It's like, yeah, you're talking to me, you're not talking to him. Because you both know this. You it both came back down to consistency as well. Ultimately, they like, the they would saying what they would say. Yeah, they're, they're, what they're saying is incongruent with who they are. People are pretty predictable would be like the takeaway, right? People are unpredictable in a certain sense, but like, generally, as long as we have an understanding of who somebody is, we can reasonably predict what they're gonna do in a certain situation. And of course, a lot of drama and stories comes from putting them in a really stressful situation and seeing what they do. When it comes to dialogue, the idea would be, if you've established that this character is really friendly, affable, they're just a really nice person. If she was to then, I don't know, out of nowhere, just be like, wow, you're a fucking piece of shit. It's like, oh, okay, is that... There's got to be a reason for this, right? And yeah. then, like, the next line, it's totally fine. It's like, oh, something's wrong here. You're not... That was a mistake. Or, yeah, or, this I is don't in know real life, you notice when people are supposedly out of character. They're not behaving normally. Yeah. Yeah, and then, you know, bad dialogue could be bad exposition or whatever. It's like a type. But if, you know, someone is... Uh told something that they find absolutely shocking, but then it's like, oh wait, they knew that already. Whoops. Like, mm -hmm. so it's, it's like that dialogue could have been good, but the information makes it a uh, bad dialogue, so they shouldn't be saying that shit. That's just basically how I do it. It's like, Core comes back to, should they be saying this? Um, yep. And I'd rather <laughs> appeal to, like, say someone says something cringy. It's like, can as we do... As they're a cringy character. Yeah, like, it can work. This is the thing with the prequels, there's a lot to discuss, because, like, a lot of people defend the stiffness by being like, well, that's Ugh. what Anakin would say, and that's how Anakin would deliver it. Man. And so, yeah, you have to really figure it out, get get down to it, if you can argue. But it's like, why the fuck does everybody talk like that in this universe? Except for Obi-Wan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, special. 
Maybe it's because he's the only actor who was like, hey, I would fucking do all kinds of shit with this. I just gotta deliver it very, um, meh. Nah. Whimsically. Yes, he, he he's fun to watch. He stands out compared to the rest. Same for Palpatine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely the top two performers there. And it's doubly weird when you see talented actors and actresses behaving like like Padme, right? The way that she talks, particularly in The Phantom Menace, is just like, what even are you? What are you? Are you some weird text-to-speech android experiment? Like, what's going on with you? Sam Jackson and McDiamond did great too. Sam Jackson, that's that's a reserved Samuel Jackson in the prequels. I, yeah, I don't know why they got an actor who is known for being so dynamic and bombastic and really gregarious as him, and they got him to play this super stoic, dull, boring character. It feels like a waste well, of like, the actor. Uh, it's like um, After Earth, right? Will Smith playing a fucking flat, emotionless, st like, tree star. No. Yeah, What was exactly. his character's name in that? Um, uh, Cypher Rage. Cypher Rage. Cypher Rage. <laughs> that Jesus fucking Christ. Movie. Cypher yeah. Rage was his name. Oh, well, there, there's a good example Shadow of bad the dialogue in, in, in that film. There was a lot of bad information. Oh, Shadow's great. Uh, bad dialogue. Like, fucking just a giant speech of like, oh, the the aliens attacked. The Ursa, they smell fear. What a stupid alien race to, like, that were created. They smell fear. They can't see. They can't Or you can give them eyeballs. You just give them eyeballs, or have them smell -uh. everything. Give them both. Fear. Give them both eyes -uh. and smelling fear. It's scary give them this ears. way. Yeah, it is. <laughs> you know, like if you were designing a race, uh, like if you could create some species, you'd be like, "All right, I'm just gonna make you great because I can just pick and choose the things that I want." Yep. Like humans, oh, maybe give them a separate. No, but it's so the scary. They the hunt fear. That's terrifying. Oh wow! Yeah, but That's then when, when wow. they're not afraid, you can just kill them like nothing. Yeah, like you're invisible. <laughs> you're yeah, yeah, it's like for your see. fear. Exactly. You have to be a psychopath who's not afraid. Then you can kill them. Yeah. I like how in that movie they're like everything on this planet has evolved to kill humans. It's like, but you haven't been here for like a thousand years. What do you mean evolve? It sounds so cool, Fringy. Evolution in a thousand years. Yeah, that's what years, Australia is. A thousand <laughs> years mm -hmm. for evolutionists. Like, interesting. Also, there were no humans here, so they evolved to hunt a species that doesn't fucking exist. It'd be like if you said that humans have adapted to hunt flugel goops. Like, what's that? Oh, they're like an alien species for like 10,000. Well, that's how good we are at hunting yeah. flugel goops. Right. Maybe There's we have evolved to hunt them. We didn't even. But we evolved to hunt a species that doesn't exist <laughs> in on Earth. Maybe they're really weak to nukes, and it's so residual. we kind of like, just nail it. Yeah, we hunted them all, and just we just haven't evolved into something else yet. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, because you never get to the end of evolution, so you never know. That's right, it just keeps going. Yeah, nothing's more highly evolved than anything else. There's a lot of internal politics with the Landsrad, the other houses, and the Emperor that's explained more in the books. Feel free to critique the movie for it, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, you know, I don't... Like, I feel bad for the movie that it has so much, like, will to plot out first. Because, yeah. um, I've seen a lot of people talking about these other houses, and I was like, other houses? Uh, yeah, because the the movie just sort of mentions other houses existing, but we don't really know really anything about them. I feel like they'd be big potential players if an uh, if an event like this occurred. Maybe they will. Yeah, maybe as it'll the turn story progresses. Two. Yeah, maybe that will be a thing that happens. It's like all the houses got wind of all this bullshit and they come into the story later. But I guess we'll see. I guess we'll see in Dune Part Two. Arkanen just wanted to ruin Atreides' day, then after that, the Emperor comes in and says, Hey, I want them dead. I'll help. And none of it gets out, because they're all wiped out except for Paul and the mum. Yeah, I find that very hard to believe. I do find that hard to believe as well. Um... They don't have to communication with the rest of the galaxy, and after the fact, the Emperor can point to their lack of output as justification. 
<laughs> like, I think uh, I saw people discussing this in the comments section because this is apparently a contentious topic without uh, myself, Fringy Rags, or, or Metal bringing any of this up. Um, they weren't even there for that long. The Atreides house had only like just fully arrived and production had just started up. The idea that they're all yeah. massacred, like when they've been there for what could be a maximum of uh, two to three months or something. And it's like, ah, they their fault for being so inefficient. I'm like, yeah, that's gonna be a pretty difficult sell for me, bro. I just yeah. feel like, they're all dead? What the fuck happened? <laughs> like, oh, you know, it's, 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 they're just so bad at spice mining, you know? You're like, yeah, okay. They just all died. <laughs> well, cause like people saying they'll frame the Fremen. It's like, well then, how does that make the Atreides look like terrible if they were just all killed by like ambushes and stuff? I guess that just makes them look bad militarily. But at that point, that's super fucking suspicious, is it not? Yeah, like why and that's, even and that's assuming they're not capable. And that's assuming no word somehow gets out with all those people involved. Yeah, one guy. All it takes is one guy to say, oh well actually this is you know, we blew him up. And you know what? We're just four guys from house uh boom 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 boom. That's how it's pronounced. House house that. And we're just we're just like you know the Emperor like switched out um uh, fuck, Dune, I forget, what's what's the name, what's Dune's planet name? Brachus. Brachus, yeah, he's like, he switched that out from the Harkonnens to the, to, the to, to Atreides, that's a bit weird, right? And we're like, yeah, yeah, I think, do, what do you think he's up to with that? Like, oh, I'm not sure, I, I don't know, and then it's like, and Atreides just got wiped out, like, yeah. By who? Oh, man, yeah, that's Well, weird. they like, say the weird. Fremen did it, and you're like, really, the I Fremen wiped out yeah. the Atreides? Like... Yeah, the, the, they're famously the best warriors, the Atreides are. It's kind of... Seems hmm. unlikely. Especially if anyone knew that there was a right? peace between the Fremen and the Atreides. Uh... Like, don't, aren't the people who, like, live on Arrakis in the city and stuff, don't they, like, hey, there was actually, like, a huge battle and there were spaceships and... This is... Like, it's weird there was a bunch of Sardaukar there. That's kind of, like, huh. Well, that's... That's, <laughs> that's something that I... I don't even know why the Emperor did that. Uh, why use, like, Emperor's assassins to do the job when you don't want to come across as having anything to do with it. It's like, that's probably your first mistake. And people saying, like, there was no arbitration because the Emperor doesn't care if they die. It's like, you're gonna want to pretend that there's arbitration, okay? Mm -hmm. That's another raised eyebrow right there. Um... Our guys in disguises or something, because, like, I don't know. Yeah, make like, them dress up as Fremen. Up on... Fuck it. Yeah, dress them up as Fremen. That would be something to do. Hey, Mola. Been rewatching some Gedelbs. Is Dr. Ugin Souchavle referencing anything in particular, or is that just a flungus name? Also, hi, Rex. I think Ugin Souchavle, if it's inspired by anything, it would probably be the stupid Dr. Dames in Metalocalypse. Hmm. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah! I know the, the Metalocalypse doctor names. <laughs> just we read them out on an EFAP once. I know one of them. The surname of the doctor was Him and Flab or something like that. <laughs> it's just like, Blab. Or Him and Blab. It was something that makes Mark Hamill like struggle to not laugh, which is the whole apparently the whole motivation behind writing those is trying to make him laugh when recording it. <laughs> oh yeah, I heard about that. <laughs> That's fun. That's hilarious. Uh, speaking of sprayed with water, what's your favorite type of drinking water? For example, bottled, fruit, sparkling, toilet? So, some of those are not mutually contradictory, but, um, let's see here. My favorite kind of water? Um, I don't really care for flavored waters. I just like, I, I man, like I just, I just like water. I think I just like plain water. Yeah, I'm super old-fashioned, like, you know? Like my water. Yeah, depending on where you are. Tap water is great. Uh, the tap water around here is really good. It's what I typically drink, is tap water. There are some places, I know when I visit my folks in Albuquerque, their tap water is shit. And so I drink bottled water when I'm over there. Um, when I was in Richardson, Texas, there were some relatives down there. Their tap water wasn't that good. Um, but yeah, some tap water is great. Some tap water is... Mm, But I don't. I typically, I typically do not drink bottled water unless it's the water because I, I don't buy bottled water. I have some relatives who buy the shit out of bottled water because I guess they just don't like tap water. 
Balls. Um, but I, I just don't, I don't drink bottled water unless I have to take water somewhere with me. And even then, like if I go hiking, then I'll fill up my water bottle with tap water. I'll bring it with me. It's good stuff. So I don't know. But I don't like fruity waters. I be fruit or be water. Don't try and be a, don't try and be an amateur version of both. You know, wow. I, I like a good, a good fruity beverage or like a nice, clean, smooth water. I don't like them mixed up together. I don't really have anything against fruity waters, but I just I take normal water. Yeah. I think they're valid and can exist. That's not. I don't like mineral water really. Just like normal, normal water. Well, Mel, you're the only one left now. Uh, I, I, just uh, plain old water bottle. Though I don't really like our tap water here, so no. I, I buy them bottled. I don't I, really I have, care I... for the fruity ones either. It's just like, uh, if I want something fruity, I'll get some juice or whatever. Yeah. I don't. I don't care for sparkling water. I will say that. I just don't. I don't, like don't really water. like it. I don't like it. It's just. It ain't. It ain't right. It ain't right. It's. It. It's it ain't right. I know. I I've used got, to I've got drink a, really a lot thing. of sparkling water, but these days I like the unsparkly water better. Still sparkly. <laughs> unsparkly. Like dull water. <laughs> yeah. I like. I like matte water. Yeah. <laughs> Makes you think of like the welcome mat. You squeeze it and you get the water. Oh, <laughs> uh, you get some welcome. You have your welcome juice. <laughs> like no, I don't want it. Complimentary want welcome, welcome juice. juice. It'll oh, offend no. our culture if you don't at least sip it. And you're like, I, I, I. Uh, oh, can I just spit on the floor? Yeah, that'll be that'll be better. I agree with your point. The movie should have handled it better. Also, the book is great. You should read it. Um. Fringy, go read the book so we can say we did it yeah, as an EFAP right? thing. <laughs> I read it a long time ago, and I only remember so much because it was a long time ago, and a lot of shit happens in that book. It's like two things. Just At a, least three. Come on. Just a, just Fine, a three. Yeah, it's better. Um, best example of having to use outside resources to understand a story is Halo 5. Yeah, it's a fucking mess. Like, it's, it's, it, you need to read, like, several books, comic books, watch a TV show, listen to, like, a podcast series to t understand what's <laughs> happening in that game. Well, that's shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's remember really stupid. <laughs> yeah, remember what was great about Halo 1, 2, 3, Reach, and ODST? Because you could just play the game and you know the story. Yep. Wow, that's, that's like really revolutionary, dude. That's yeah, amazing. more games should start doing that. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I'm meant to make sense of that game, given what happened at the end of Halo 5. It's meant to be like an edge- Oh, look, we're like kind of soft rebooting, but I'm pretty sure it's like just a direct sequel to Halo 5. And Halo 5 was really cataclysmic in terms of like plot, character, world building, so... Mm, yeah, it makes you wonder. Oh, I'll have to see. Uh, Paul and his mother weren't supposed to die. I th well, I mean, I think they were supposed. to. I think to. they were supposed to because Hawkins yeah, said the desert will kill him. him. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's more about plausible deniability rather than stopping all rumor and speculation. Remember how Epstein officially killed himself? Well, nobody believes it. <laughs> yeah, nobody <laughs> believes that. I mean, I feel like that's going to create problems for the Emperor if nobody believes the official story. And I just don't think he's helping himself when he uses the Sadaka. Yeah, if, if you're if you're a house in that universe and you see what happens on Arrakis, you're like, hold the fuck up. Are we next? Hmm. I gotta go talk to these other houses and see if we should, like, do something about this. Because this is, this is, look, look, this is just not okay. This is unacceptable behavior. I don't know. Oh, fuck's this. sake, I just read the one next one ahead. You used the adaptation argument for BVS. Why would non Superman fans care about Jimmy Olsen, Mercy Graves, or other versions of Lex Luthor? BVS is bad. Yes, it's bad because it makes no sense, which is our position. Thank you. 
<laughs> yeah, we think what a, what a PBS bizarre... is really bad. How do people what misunderstand this? When we bring up, oh look, that's Jimmy Olsen that's about to get shot in the back of the head. That's that's meaningful because of the meta. The film isn't bad because that's happening. Like, people who know Jimmy Olsen, they're like, holy fuck, he just got assassinated. You're like, yeah. Isn't that nuts? Oh, I like nuts. He shouldn't have this much trouble separating that out when you hear us mention it. Until I like you how get you think that's gotcha too. Like, oh, no. <laughs> use that argument for Batman v Superman. Even if we did, which we didn't, that wouldn't be a point, like, for you. Because we would have been wrong. <laughs> well, if, that's not what we did. if the goal is so... to simply prove that we hypocrite. There was, there was a post in the subreddit relatively recently about the exact same thing, but in regards to. I think it was, it was uh, the DC stuff again. Just like, okay. you know, because like we, we we were just referencing it today, right? S Superman ripping apart the Kryptonian children, and then we're all ki kind of commenting on it in the sense of our understanding of Superman, how bizarre this is. And if someone was like, well, that's, that's a different Superman in that movie. It's like, like yeah, that's fine. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it seems <laughs> like you Yeah. Yeah, we know he's different, all right. Um, is Tremors a prequel to Dune? Yes. Arizona um, Akis. They didn't say it in the movie, but if a laser gun hit a shield, it causes a nuclear reaction. Small, but nuclear explosion. That's why swords are used. <laughs> I feel like you would want to... I feel like that's something that you'd actually want a lot of the times, especially if enemy soldiers are fighting in these clumps. That, to me, is just not an effective explanation. Do you know why they use swords? Because if shields and lasers hit each other, there's nukes. I'd be like, are you... what? <laughs> <laughs> it's just a bizarre to hear still. <laughs> um, Arcane EFAP when? Preferably with Shad. Hi, Fringy. We'd Hi. have to watch it first. We haven't done that yet. Yeah. True. Um, I'm not against watching it. FYI, I just, I, I just gotta find the time, but... Fucking Drinker has seen five episodes and he said it's excellent. Um, Duma, Duma Media said it has no right to be as good as it is. It's like, Jesus. I'm sorry, what show is this again? Arcane. Arcane. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Everybody's praising it. Does anybody not like Arcane? Has anyone seen a negative review of Arcane? No. Because I haven't. I have not. I'm watching way better stuff like Red Notice. <laughs> Arcane is great. Arcane D's nuts. Nice. It's lol, so it's automatically bad. <laughs> <laughs> lol is pretty cringy. Cringobulous. What you said. Um, but yeah, maybe we'll cover it once we've seen it. I don't know. The animation is spectacular, 1 out of 10. Oh, oh that's not bad. Red Notice is an anti-film. No. <laughs> <laughs> Just super chat, I really liked Arcade, but I really tried not to. <laughs> that's how they get you. Damn. Yeah. Really tried not <laughs> Uh, regarding third-party info, there is utility in knowing what is trying to be done in a story, even if the strictly judged by the content it doesn't fly. There is utility is in knowing what is trying to be done in a story, even if the strictly judged by the content oh. it doesn't fly. So they're saying there's benefits of knowing what the writer basically was going for. Okay, sure. but that doesn't change us saying what is there or not. Yeah. yeah, I'm not sure why you said that. But sure, it can it it can certainly be helpful to understand things, but I mean, I mean, <laughs> it is what it is. It can be detrimental, though. To well, yeah, like it it didn't help us to know that James Gunn wanted Polka Dot Man to be a self-centered narcissist vying for attention in every scene because it was like, yeah. um, okay, failed. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way to put it. Um, but yeah, no, I I don't disagree with that. It's just that, you know, I would expect the same for anything we're covering where we're all familiar. Like Lord of the Rings, for example, that TV show when it comes out, 
you know, let's pretend oh, for, a, for a second, a second that it's actually good. Um, but something doesn't quite make sense unless you know about, you know, XYZ from the book. It's like, yeah, that doesn't work. They have to put it in the show. Mm. Uh, question to anyone who got both rags and molar plushies. Did they come at the same time, or did one arrive first? I ask because my rags may have been nicked by a, a porch pirate. Oh, no. No, oh, no. Oh, shit. I think the rags ones were coming much f earlier than the uh, the molar ones, because... Yeah, my, my rags one came, like, three weeks before the molar one, or two weeks. Yeah, like, the creation for mine took a little bit longer. I don't know if it's simply because of the tentacles or not, but I... I, I'm amused by that idea. Yeah, sorry to hear that, if if that may have happened. Oh, well, that's not the case, man. That sucks. Fuck those mm. people. Get your own bloody plushie. As a huge Dune fan, the nagging issue is knowing where the beautiful atmosphere comes at the cost of important character moments and relationships. I don't know. I feel like we can... Can do it right. I feel, like they did a, I feel like they did a decent job at that. Yeah, I guess I don't know which ones they're referring to exactly, but mm. um, I feel like we shouldn't be at the point where we simply have to have character moments come at the expense of a beautiful atmosphere. That feels weird, right? Both? Yeah, yeah. Mm. Because I don't think Lord of the Rings have to make those sacrifices. Though, if someone said, "Yeah, but Lord of the Rings had like twelve hours," I'd be like, "Well, maybe Dune Dude should had get twelve hours." I don't know. Because imagine crushing the three extended Lord of the Rings movies into a two-hour movie. Or two yes. and a half hours. Could you imagine? Fuck like that. It'd be horrible. Uh, is the secret EFAP an SK homecoming FAP? No. But no, we will discover what it is. It won't be this Saturday... We're, 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 we're one EFAP ahead right now, so it's, we're going to do um, probably a catch-up stream. And then the following week will be Spudderman. And then the week oh, after no. that will be the the famed recorded one, which plenty of people in Discord already know what it is. That's fine. We've made it very obvious with certain things that were said. But who knows what it is? Who knows? Do, 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 do. Um, mm. Warts and all, this movie left me wanting more. You've seen Last Night in Soho? Bye, Rags. Goodbye. I want more Dune, yeah. Um, I have not seen yeah, I do. Last Night in Soho. Me we will watch that eventually. I just Every time it comes up, I just say it. I've heard a lot of bad things, which sucks. I hope mm. it's good. First time on the book side of an EFAP, it's so frustrating seeing the important little details not be included in the movie. I mean, I've heard that from quite a few um, book fans of Dune, but I've also heard a lot of book, book fans of Dune be very happy, so, uh, you know, yeah, know, a bit of a mix-up. Mixed bag, rather. Sorry, guys, gotta go watch DSP's stream. Hi, Frings. <laughs> All right. Show me a perfect shield. Advanced technology doesn't imply perfection in defense, and you wouldn't have a movie. Huh? What? Can you sure. say that again? I guess they're saying, like, if... Because we were critical of how the shields work, and they're, they're saying that if they worked perfectly, then you wouldn't have a movie. you just change it. You'd have different... You'd... We can make them what? have, like, what? energy limits. We can make you it can, so that they're yeah, weak to explosives. The way that they're written. Yeah, they're weak to force. We, there's loads you can do. Why would you just give up like that? Don't give up. <laughs> You'll be okay. You can do it. Uh, justice for Cyber Weasel 89. She was shadow banned from C H Y A O A. Ciao. Uh, by gaslighting mods. Check her Twitter for the full story. It's a long one. Oh, I have I have no idea what that is. But, uh, very well. Very well. I'm kind of happy Rags isn't here because chat hate, chat hate would have been targeted at him for no reason. He's here most of the time, I'm going to say. 
I'm used to it. It happens. It's this rags guy. He's here a lot, you know. EFAP crew needs to cowboy bebop with a critical eye. It's not the standout weebs would have you believe. Oh my god. That's a risky thing to say, sir. Flash madam. Uh, Ruroni Kenshin, trust and betrayal is better. And see, this is why it's good that nobody in chat knows who, the, who this person is who said this. I'm sure that they, they would be slaughtered. <laughs> slaughtered, yeah. Because, uh, yeah, that's one of them animus that has, like, top tier re uh, reputation, right? Yeah. Um, a white unicorn with rainbow hair. That's all it says. Wait, oh, okay. <laughs> I was waiting for another... I don't know if that means anything two. to you guys. Uh, I don't uh, know. I don't think no. so. Um, oh, someone just someone just pinged me with this. Um, yeah, that's, I, uh, oh, I guess you didn't hear that earlier. I think I mentioned it. Yeah, Ubisoft are now doing NFT stuff. Well, I I, I saw the announcement that they were doing it, and now oh, did they're not the doing video? it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the reply for those who want to dislike it. <laughs> I'm just disable oh, comments. But I thought, right? but I thought dislikes are not real anymore. What, how did that happen? Well, I can still see him. <laughs> <laughs> Bullying. Yeah. You bastards! Bullying the big old corporation. Oh my God! What's this character's you know, name? What? Oh, the I think there's a character called Gloomp. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Maybe. Anyway, carry on. <laughs> Good old gloom. Uh. Oh boy. Okay. Um, Persian well, slash right. derpy cats are my favorite cats. Persian cats? Slash derpy cats. Derpy cats. Become their own species. The cats of the derp. For whatever reason, derp. I love derpy animals. I don't know what we were talking about that spawned <laughs> that, but all right. Humans are kind of derpy animals, aren't they? Whoa, how dare you? I'm sorry. Some it's of them certainly humanist. are. Some of them certainly are. <clears throat> hey, Mamblo, unrelated. Do you ever see Sherrod, 1963? No. Any of you guys? No, I've not seen. I've not seen that no, one. I don't no. think so. No. Raid not. Uh, I can't see that one. I wasn't alive when that aired, so I can't watch it. I misspoke before accidentally. Though you were talking about the armor missing in the night attack, not the shields. Um. Oh, um, maybe they're talking about, because, um, what's his name? Uh, Josh Brolin's character and his men, none of them have armor or shields. Uh, which I think is a bit of an oversight. And then the dudes they attack have no shields for some reason. I don't know if yeah. either of them are what you were referring to. <clears throat> this one is retracted. I'm afraid I can't read it, but thank you. Can I read it? There's no computers thing is really inconsistent and dumb thing from the books. There was an AI rebellion, therefore calculators are illegal. Like I said, I don't really see how you can get rid of all computers with the technology we're seeing. And you still clearly need computers to have like spaceships and stuff. It's not, yeah, it, it, I, it, yeah not, not it just that. It must be advanced. It, like, sure, like, hmm. You gotta, and, and, and just the advantage your civilization will have if you, uh, you know, on the down low are using, I mean, you know, because, like, they have Mentats, apparently. This is another thing that, um, people mentioned in the comments, like, Mentats are computers, and I was like, okay, that, I, I don't, I don't think that was in the film at all. Like, I get that that's probably the book, but, because House Mentats are, like, those guys with the thing on their lip, I think. 
And he's one of the ones that puts his fingers to his brain and then his eyes go white and he calculates things. I was like, okay. You know, I... I don't know what that means, really. Yeah. Is it like, does that, does it mean you're really smart? Maybe because there's some level of essentially magic system going on here. Maybe the effect that it has on them is that they could be like supercomputer brains with it. So, I guess there's just some special people in this universe, like the witches. Yeah, I don't know if the Mentats run on magic or not. I'm not sure what the film's trying to say, but that's the thing. I think the film st would struggle if it were like, right, we, you know, we just explained Arrakis, we just explained the Fremen, we just explained Atre Atreides, Harkonnen, Emperor. Yeah. And it's like, now we need to explain me Mentats as well, and it's just like, yeah, I mean, it's tough. But I'm pretty sure you could still do this in a very smooth way. Yeah, there's a way to do it. Bum, 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 bum. Only in book, film did not explain. Spice changed humans instead of computers because AI uprising millennia before. So the spice makes you, like, able to compute things as complicated as a computer would be required to do? Oh, okay. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Are you still human at that point? I guess, you just have a super mathematical brain. We must. But I assume, um, do you become like, like, data? Where you're like... You're, you're kind of weird? Because you, you see everything <laughs> in Tim... You know what I mean? Maybe, <laughs> maybe. Maybe, it, maybe, maybe it would only... Only in certain circumstances, like it could only only when it comes to numbers or mathematics, like a like a mega artist or something. Mmm, the power. I'll look up a predator's dude. Oh god, I'll do it. <laughs> uh, computers were made illegal when the Harkonnen banned pornography. Damn. <laughs> the funny thing about that, that is, I'm like, that's a joke, Did right? Ban pornography? Right? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, chat, shut the hell up about the damn book and talk about the movie. Look, it's understandable that the book would come up. I, I Yeah, just I, don't bother us with it. <laughs> well, I just, I just, I just don't know what they expect us to do with it if, if they're like... No, 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 it makes sense because of this thing in the book. We're like... Uh. Uh, Fringy, this was the same defense for Halo 5. Just read the extended material and it'll make sense. Yeah, it is, and it doesn't even fix it anyway. But <laughs> you're right, it's the same defense. Oh, is that we dealt with it with fucking TLJ of all things? There were people who yeah. were like, if you want to know all of the information about blah 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 blah, go read the fucking books. And it's like, excuse me? Yeah. The fuck are we doing here? This ain't like tertiary law. This is literally like, why is the hyperspace kamikaze never used? It's like, go read a book. They'll say it, maybe. And then you feel bad for that poor <laughs> yeah, writer who was like, how am I supposed to explain this? And they're just like, do it. Um, yo, I subjectivisms love this film, but was well aware. I had book info which won't help film only viewers. Film needs extra half hour at least, IMO. I don't know about that. Maybe. Um I mean it depends on how part two handles everything, I guess. Mm. They read now. They read now. <laughs> My first Classic. super chat. As someone who has read the book but not watched the movie, the movie does not sound very good because of how little some of the things are explained to you. I mean, we took a lot of issue with it, but I liked the movie. I enjoyed it. Um, I suppose people who have read the book and know it inside out, uh, your experience may vary from this is great because you understand pretty much all of it, or this is bad because they've missed out really important things. I can't say which one you will have. Hello, hello, hello. Next year, the movie The Time Machine will be 20 years old. Man. They're 
it goes. Jeremy Irons is in that. He plays the Goblin King man. The Goblin King. Okay. I was 20 year old once. No. No? Oh. No. Well, never mind then. Um, any interest to cover or talk about it? I would like to hear your opinion. Um, maybe we could someday. I don't know. Kind of a neat movie. The story has been told many a time. I think it has a couple of uh, adaptations, right? It's not just that movie. I'm not sure. I do not know. Yesterday on Twitter, I lost 30... Uh, either 30,000 or 3,000. I'm not sure what they're trying to tell me with this. Um, many friends in the blink of an eye, and the world just fucking watched. Tomorrow, there'll be no shortage of kings, no shortage of pepes. I know you understand. That's a Modern Warfare 2 reference. Ah. Uh -huh. Fringy uh -huh. understands. Um... Catching up on EFAB 90 now. Uh, Dune leaves out the book stuff, then adds some scenes that raise questions about the thing. Movie a 5.5 .5 disappointment. Oh my. Hey, uh, Mola, I just... Did you know that, uh, that you, um... That you are bigoted towards anybody who's not straight, cis, white, or male? It's been said about me several times. Yeah. I, I've just been, I've just been told that this, this is true. <laughs> I just find that amusing. It's a fucking meme, isn't it? Like, Wait, did someone send that to you? Like, no, no, no. It's just something I saw on Twitter uh, in relation to that fucking Doctor Who uh, episode. Really? D of all the things, you don't like... know about filmmaking, and also you're being a towards anybody who's not you. What? <laughs> I'm just sitting here like, is there any point in countering that? Or like, just... <laughs> like, yeah, what am I supposed to say to this? I just, I think I'm oh, just baffled. Like, why would you try to defend that of all things? Yeah. Dude, I'm watching you doing this part right now. I'm having like flashbacks from like five years ago. Well, I'm trying to do it the cool kid way, which is don't <laughs> stop. Try and do it in one. That's the Chad That's way. Book. Streaming it with a friendo, and you were trying yeah. to get over there while being really drunk, and it was really funny. <laughs> well, also, the emulator is not running as good as it usually does, um, and sometimes freezes. You could probably see that. Yeah. But, um, oh, no, that was my bad. This is hard, okay? This is, this is harder <laughs> than Dark Souls. Dark Souls. Not possible. If any um, game is harder than Dark Souls, then that ruins what Dark Souls is. <laughs> <laughs> Disgusting. I don't Cup ever want to play tutorial. Dark Souls. Don't want to play Dark Souls ever again if there's another game that is harder than it. Somehow I... That, che that cheapens my achievement. It, it actually froze, but I still made it. I don't, I don't I know. I saw it. I was very, it was very suspense second for me. <laughs> I was like, oh shit. Oh. Can he do it? Um, hello, Mubshli, Frongo, and also Hi Rags. Hello. Hey. Frongo. Oh, Frongo. I said Frim hi. What? Frimgo. <laughs> Frimgo said hello. No, but Rags didn't say hi. Oh, yeah, that's, hello. I, that's what I mean. I was waiting on that. That's all right. Peace. Hello. Hi. You did it. What's up? Hey, everyone. Oh, hey, what's up? Um, hey, over the last two months, I consumed all of EFAP. Thanks for all the free entertainment. You should try and get Patrician TV on. He's a fellow longman. Anyway, much love from Michigan. Much love indeed. Michigan. Yeah. Michigan. 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 That's a hate crime. Yeah, cool. Consumed all of EFAP in just two months. Damn. That is impressive. I mean... Because I was going to say, we'll get to a point where that's an impossibility. Is that possible? Well, the thing is, a lot of people might listen to us on times two, so. That's Even then, is that possible? Um, check efap.me, I guess. It. Yeah, that's where I. Yeah, that's the thing. Efap.me. <laughs> Every frame of pause. So let's see. Efap runtime is. 
Ooh, 54 days, seven hours. Oh, yeah, so, so this is possible. But here, yeah. I don't. But don't you have to sleep and eat and poop? No. Well, I guess no. no. <laughs> <laughs> but the mini runtime. Well, maybe if we just that's just mainline EFAT because the gaming oh. movies and minis they add up to five, six, seven, sixteen, seventeen days. Uh, seventeen Damn. and a half-ish days, maybe. So. Uh, run multiple yeah, videos at once. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And the meme <laughs> videos are 22 hours. So, EFAP ME is an encyclopedia of all of the it's information so we good. never knew that we needed to have. Oh, yes. It's way too good. We are not deserving. Dune Part 2 isn't finished. You guys should send emails to Vilduv or Spates or Spats, I don't know how it's pronounced. Uh, they should fix the logic problems with the slow-mo darts and shields. I don't think they're going to give a single shit about <laughs> what I think. I would... Vilduv, go nuts. Let's do it. I'm more than happy to see what you come up with in Dune Part 2. The Dune again. Yeah, we ain't, we ain't close to looking this thing, all right? It's too awkward. Though I would love to watch Denis Villeneuve watch Closer Looks video. See his reaction. my ass. He can suck my cock. <laughs> I don't know if that's how he's actually like. I just imagine <laughs> that. I just imagine that that's how he's like in my head. Suck my butt farts. And we're if like, I oh, want no another way. scene of the ornithopters, then god damn it, we're going to have another scene with the ornithopters, all right? <laughs> he's doing oh, that in the interview, oh, and he's like, so make, cool. Oh, oh, make that noise again. Oh. Now I don't want oh. Two long videos have gone up this EFAP. Critical said Dark Souls 2 is good, and Elvis said the TASM films are better and worse than you remember. Uh, so the first one's wrong. <laughs> I'm trying, I was, I was going to say, so yeah, Dark Souls 2 is very bad, but as yeah. for TASM 2 having things that are worse than you remember, yes. Also better than you remember. There may be... One or two scenes in those movies that I'm like, no, no, yeah, that's fair. Because I, I don't think they were absolutely horrible. I think there was some stuff. Some Tasm stuff. movies? Yeah, I, th I think there was like a scene or two. Yeah, there was some good stuff. Andrew Garfield's a good Spider-Man. He's a good actor, and he cared, darn it. Belch. He did. Is it, is it really a Spider-Man, though? Hmm. I hope so. Who is the true Spider-Man? My ass. <laughs> the real Spider-Man? Who's is that what we said? Yeah, who's the real Spider-Man? Can he please stand up? Can the real Spider-Man please stand up? Please. Please web up. Please web up. Please web up. Please web up. Noise. All the pimps in the crib, ma, drop it like it's hot. Uh <clears throat> well, that was fun. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go read the 200 books, 450 comic issues, and watch 66 shows before I watch the next MCU movie. Jeez. Mm, is That's that enough, real though? Plan. Disney appreciates your patronage. <laughs> that would be funny, though. It's like, you won't understand Avengers 5 unless you read and watch all of that. You're like, oh. I don't know that I want to. Good. <laughs> Uh, 5 out of 10, main guy is a Gary Stew. <clears throat> a lot of us wanted to, th th there were, some people in the comments were disappointed we didn't talk about that as a subject. Um, as it didn't cross my mind as to whether or not Paul is a Gary Stew. Mm. You guys got thoughts? Feelings? I mean, he isn't really liked by everyone for once. He has to kill someone at the end because he doesn't like him. That's one thing I remember. Well, I think he's just fighting Penny. for his mum at that point. I don't think that has anything to do with him. Yeah, but d d d doesn't... Don't they all just go ahead and say, uh, Oh, no, we don't accept you until the leader says, No, he, I, he has my protection. 
No, it's, um, he wants to kill the wife, or the mum, sorry, and then they're like, can't kill the mum, she's a uh, hooble booble, and then... Yeah, I mean, before that, but when they get surrounded... Well, yeah, but they're, they're not like fighting a... for that reason. He doesn't like them in general. Yeah, yeah I know, so. I know. I'm just, I'm just... I mean, in general, they don't accept, accept them immediately. Sure, um... I said before, I'm not particularly invested in the label anyway. Um, yeah, I'm just. I don't find Paul it. interesting. Uh, yeah. Me does neither. he solve all really of his problems either. with ease because of abilities he just happens to have? It's like. <clears throat> trying to think. Mm. He doesn't encounter a lot of issues, right? I guess there's the one where he has to use the voice. And then there's where he has to... Which he turns, fails with as well. Turns off the... Well, you say he fails with, but I mean, they succeed as a result of him doing it. I think that, because like, the, this is where it gets really complicated, right? Because a lot of people in defense of this will be like, well, to be fair, this is stuff he was trained to do. Like, well, as we know, that wouldn't make Rey a good character if we knew mm -hmm. that she had trained with all this stuff that she can do, it's the fact that it's all the perfect thing to get her through the plotline. Yeah, I think... It's really only this... You can only decide after the next one, see how he handles the whole situation that he's been... put in now. <laughs> with being, uh... I guess a new lord. Of House of Three Days. And see how he fares. We'll have to, yeah. Is, we'll, it, is it his holy crusade or whatever happens next? I don't fucking know. I felt like he was more so moved around in this film with other characters' interests. I didn't really yeah, exactly. feel like he he was just like dominating or anything. Um, he shouldn't have defeated the Fremen at the end. I don't know. I, I couldn't say, because he was personally trained by two of what are apparently the, the best fighters in the fucking galaxy. You know? What is that? Does that mean he should win or shouldn't win? I'm not sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's Honestly, it's hard for me to say. I need to see Dune 2 to see what the fuck's going on with Paul, because I, I, I just don't have yeah, a lot exactly. to say about him, honestly. He's a pretty big nothing burger. He doesn't do a lot. He has like some of those visions. Then he gets high on spice once or twice. He just passes out That's and gets eaten by a worm. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Uh, yeah, I don't feel much about him. I think he's okay. Yeah, my my he character no profile Lido. in my head is very thin for him. He ain't no Lido. <laughs> Um, so better than Atla? Good. I think uh, the number I gave is higher than the number I gave to Atla, yeah. Um, just saying from titles, I haven't seen either yet. I'm not sure what the context for that one was, but very well. Um, strong setup for a new universe, Hyrax. Hello! It was a cool world. I want, I want yeah. more. I want to eat uh, it. I'd like to see more of it. Uh, you guys should invite on Patrician TV. He makes good videos, is a long man, and has done streams similar to EFAP criticizing videos. Hello, Fringy. Hey. Yeah, maybe. Maybe ends up your trap. Maybe. Uh, did you know you can force a widescreen on GameCube and Wii games in Dolphin Emulator? It's pretty celestial, epic. Bow. Bound chilling is how they spell bow, that, aren't Bound? Bound? Blorm chilling. Um, yeah, I, I, I believe that is an ability you have. I just uh, opted out of that one for today. Uh, my favorite part about adding back the dislike is seeing you have zero dislikes on stream. Hi, Rags. Hello. I mean, I wonder if dislikes in general will go down because there's no dislike bar. They probably will. Yeah. Yeah. Probably people will if people can't. The thing. Yeah, if people don't see that it's actually, if they don't think it's something that matters now, then a lot of people just won't do it, or they they'll they'll stop caring, and that will just build up as a habit over time, and people won't even think yeah. about doing it. Yeah, because not everybody is even aware of extensions. But like. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh. 
Um, how do you image gunfights in structures playing out in a universe where every gun is essentially a grenade launcher? Um, I'm not <laughs> sure it's common sense countermeasure to the Holstman shield. High rags. Hi. I think it makes way more sense to have one guy launch a grenade at a group of soldiers heading towards you with knives as opposed to sending all of your soldiers toward them with knives. Yeah. Absolutely. I will, I'm just, I'm I mean, not impressed I mean, was... by the fighting I saw in the film. I don't understand why people are doing it that way. Yeah, I mean, that's what was like a whole discussion that we had, right? It's like, why don't they just shoot those people with the grenades? Yeah. Well, the, all the vehicles, all the, um, the artillery, all the groups. like blowing yeah, up the their turrets and their, their different areas of their sad spice mining and stuff. It's just like, man, if they just did through one at all of uh, Josh Brolin's soldiers, they'd be fucked. Yeah, yeah. that's it. That's GG the immediately. End. Which, you know, militarily, that's probably a really good decision. Yep, that's what oh, I'd yep. be doing. I'd be like, oh yeah, blow up the ships first. Also, all those guys that are just out there, yeah, blow them up. Blow them up, sir. Give him the big suck. No. Uh, welcome back, Daddy Raggle Daggle. Did you put the oh. snow in your fridge? Also, high rags. Hi. Oh, not cold enough here for snow. Not by a long shot. It when's, was downright warm the other day. When's the coldest part of the year for you guys? Around now? Uh, December, January. Hmm. Yeah. Just being uh, uncharacteristically warm. It was downright, it, it was legit warm the other day. It had been pretty mild on most other days. Neato. <clears throat> uh, don't know anything about Dune, but I want to know if y'all have heard of YouTuber Zuli the Witch. Amazing Soulsborne Sekiro content. Short, fun videos. Yep. No, I have not heard of I her. have not. Uh, it's, uh, Dark Souls, Bloodborne, I think they call them call themselves hackers because they go like through all the code and find like little neat little neat stuff and thingies mm -hmm. for the game. Okay. I think Zuli which came up with the whole uh, thing that there's actually a health bar when you're getting grabbed by enemies in Bloodborne oh. or in Dark Souls in general. I think it was like 25 button presses you have to do. So that I think that came up on EFAB as well on a, as a comment I think. Uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty neat. It's like Bloodborne, Dark Souls, like the lost, uh, what's it called, lost models from enemies that haven't been used, or zooming out during cutscenes where you can see what kind of camera trickery they do. It's pretty pretty neat. It's okay. like every day it's like two to four minute long video or something, like little tidbits and trivia almost about the games. It's pretty nifty. Interesting. Yes. Rags to the rescue. Hi, Rags. Hello. Hi there. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, CL talks like a gentleman. Y'all just jealous. No fucking way you call that no, a gentleman not, talk. He does not talk like a gentleman. You've never seen a gentleman Wait, in your life. Wait, the look talks like a... <laughs> if you went up to a what? woman and started talking to her like that, she'd, she'd think you're a freak. <laughs> what? Hey, what the... <laughs> Uh, what the hell are you getting at? This, this wine what? selection is bone chilling. <laughs> You're like, no. <laughs> Check, please. <laughs> Stop right there, upsetting everyone. <laughs> That's what... I know it tickled me so much, it was funny as fuck. Uh, the dart that goes through the shield is a Camino Saber dart. <laughs> <laughs> Camino Saber Dart. Hi, Rags. Lovely to see your return after that incident. Hello. It was very good to be back. Mm. I, I was very surprised that I was able to come back that day at all. I was. That was my good news of the week. Mm. <laughs> uh, great voice. It keeps the country of England alive. No. <laughs> stop! Oh, doesn't stop it. What have we they taught you? I hope so. Yes, they are. I'm gonna believe that they are. <laughs> They're I'm memeing, yeah. They gotta be memeing. They would never betray us like this, I'm sure of it. Um, 
Thanks for all the quality content. Since y'all are gluttons for punishment, when is the EFAP movie on Mortal Kombat Annihilation? Merry Christmas, Mola, Rags, and Fringu. Hello, Merry Christmas to ye. We'll do it back to back with Mortal Kombat 2 whenever that comes out. Assuming they're still making it. Use the loo real quick. Be right back. Because I Shrek and that'll be a fun back to back. Mm hmm. Yeah. Compare how those sequels both did it. Everyone says Mortal Kombat Annihilation is just one of the greatest movies of all time. It's just going to be really fun to see. I don't think you're lying to me. What? I would never lie Come to you, Muntlo. Oh, okay. I believe you. Okay, one or two times, maybe, but, you know, it's fine. Yeah, but those ones didn't count, obviously. God damn it. Uh, when is EFAP movies on the mummy, Mola? I can't say exactly when that'll be, but it will happen. You know, there's only really one time you can do an EFAP movies on a thing, okay? So you gotta make it just right. Oh, no, not just right. <laughs> what happened to movie Roberto? I think he's still around. Still Pretty doing sure his thing. Still, doing stuff, yeah. still eating his fairly small amounts of food. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, quite... Never, get <laughs> never would not funny. Never would not be funny. Man. See, that would be described as just like... Some of the stupidest dialogue ever. Cause you'd be like, nobody would say that. <laughs> like, yeah, Actually, I know, right? <laughs> one source. <laughs> what if they were insane? You're like, oh, okay. Mm, that's fair enough. Uh, Fringy, I can go fast and slow. Giggity, giggity, goo. What does that mean? <laughs> we all go fast and slow. It depends on what we need to, like, if we're in a hurry or we're lethargic. Yeah. True. Seems reasonable. <laughs> Stupid drugs. I was stoned and missed the start. Now I'm in time travel trying not to mess with the timeline. Hi, Arag, Smoopshly, Frongo, <laughs> and Metal. Hello. Hello. Yeah, I hope you sort out all that time travel stuff. Um, does Metal like skiing? I've never went. Never, never went skiing. Damn. Oh, there you go. There's your answer. He hates it. That's not what I said, you're a liar! That was like one-to-one -one with what you said. Oh, okay. Yeah, I tricked yeah, you. Yeah, no, never went. I, I, I hope I, I, I'll get to someday. Uh, I know a bunch of my friends go skiing once in a while. Maybe I'll, I'll join them. And then they can teach me and tell me how I suck. Teach you about the mysteries of the skiing. Yeah. Um, bit of him. And do you guys have snow already? We had some here, but it's all melted. Uh, we haven't had snow in Britain yet, or at least in where I, I think am. there was just a melted snow. Nothing sadder. I think there was like half an hour of a little bit of snow, just like really fine one though, so it didn't even stay, it just like gone immediately. Like a fine paste of snow. Yeah. Beautiful. Metal Ski stream when? I'm not streaming everything, guys. Come on. Only no, stream snow. every second thing. Stream your snow collection, Rags. I love it. True. You should do I that. would love to see the snow collection. Especially because we ain't getting any here. <laughs> um. Do, 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 do. No, 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 you can't take me back, man. I escaped 93 alive, man. You can't send me back to the potter. Hi, Rags. Back to the pasta? Hello. <laughs> it was potter. I, 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 don't, I, I don't quite get it. I am the lost. The potter. Back to the potter. Mm-hmm. Um, still odd. Ooh. I don't like how conflates respect with faithful. It's fine to change things up in an adaptation in order to fit the new medium, but don't shit on the source. You know what? That's an interesting thought. There should definitely be a difference between respecting source material and remaining faithful to it, because what if you had, like, a guy who made all the best stuff and then his, like, best work, there was something in it that happens that we all think is bullshit, and he even says, yeah, the studio forced me to, I hate that that happens in the, in the thing. If I could change it, I would, but legally I couldn't, and I think it was a horrible decision. And then they adapt that into a movie, like, ten years later. Are you respecting the source material by changing it to the ending that guy wanted? 
And they, you... if, if they made the Mass Effect or the, the new remasters of everything or the re-whatevers and they changed the horrific ending of Mass Effect 3, I doubt anyone would say that you disrespected Mass Effect 3. Yeah, because they would say the disrespect. agrees that's just a shit ending. The disrespect already took place, you know? Yeah. Go undisrespecting it. So, yeah, I don't know. That would, that would be interesting, right? Because you are not remaining faithful, but I would argue you are respecting that source material by rescuing it from, I don't know, whatever bullshit happened. A little bit of food for thought. Um, Ganomble Dalf is my favorite wizard. Yeah, that's Ganomble fair. Dalf. Ganomble Dalf yeah. is pretty good. Gadumble Dalf? Is that what it was? Ganomble Dalf. That nah, should be Gan Gandumble Dalf. I've that seen that meme many it. times. <laughs> Keanu Reeves is like the one celebrity that everyone's like, he'll make it. He's gonna go up to age 103, he'll die, and there'll be nothing he ever did wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the 666 rule strikes again. Um, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm lost on that one. Inciting incident in Memento is literally at the very end of the movie, since the the midpoint of the movie's story. I was just going to say that's the obvious one that I'd, I, I imagine the closer look would give us the answer of, oh, well, yeah, you can break the rule if you know how. It's not much of a rule. I just hate it when they say that. Like, any great auteur will break rules, but at first they will understand them. And so, understand it what they mean it. is, don't be shit. And you're like, thank you. Thanks. It has not nothing to do with that. the rule, it's just don't be shit. Don't be shit's a good rule. I, you know, yeah, I was starting to think there. I was like, wait a minute, this is a great rule. Don't be shit. I am pro not being shit. That's controversial these days. Yeah, Mel, you yeah, could really work on, you know, just that, that, that. rule. Yeah. No, that's not. Be good to see some quality around here from time to time, is all we're saying. Yeah, but not from me. I mean, Enough look at me. of your mediocrity. Crying all the time. Like, what, what, what do I do? Provide water to the Ugandan children. No, they don't deserve it. Oh. They don't deserve my salty tears. <laughs> <laughs> I know this is late for Halloween, but do you guys have any creepy slash weird stories? Also, is that the Graboid from The Mandalorian? No. The Graboid? I'm assuming, are they doing two references at once, or are they... Or are they mistaken on what it was even called in Mandalorian, which I don't know, sand thing, sand dragon. The, um, the mud horn? No, they're probably talking about the big snake. Oh, the sneaky snake. Big snake. Snakey snake. Das und big schnecken. Um, as for creepy weird stories, well, yeah, we're out of season. We're out of season, can't be doing that now. Well, you got one. You got a creepy story for me earlier this oh, uh, yeah, EFAP, so. so that was, uh, yeah, oh, that's what we'll do. we have to get some jolly stories soon. About jolly things happening in Jolly Land. Alright, where are we going, video game? <laughs> Uh, healthy father-son relationship between Leto and Paul in Dune was a much-needed breath of fresh air. Can't find it anywhere in movies these days. I just don't typically look at movies that way. I, I like, if you said, when was the last time you saw a healthy father-son relationship, I'd be like, I have no idea. I, have, I don't remember. As in, like, I don't, I have not thought to highlight it, I guess. Yeah, I just, hmm. I'm just, I just don't know. What is up here? Oh, I just fold down. What is okay. up here? It's like that, like a harbor. <laughs> um, parts. Are you guys familiar with the concept of Chekhov's gun in storytelling? If so, do you have any thoughts on it? Chekhov's um, gun? 
I am aware of the 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 rule or the not the rule, but the the concept of it. We sort of here. Let me let me go ahead and just get the straight definition because I don't think I could uh, succinctly. So Chekhov's gun is a dramatic principle that suggests that details within a story or play will contribute to the overall narrative. This encourages writers to not make false promises in their narrative by including extemporaneous details that will not ultimately pay off by the last act, chapter, or conclusion. Some people will take that further by saying that it's a dramatic principle where every element in a story must be necessary and that irrelevant elements should be removed. I think that's taking it too far, but it's a good aspect I think to follow the idea because you want to avoid things randomly coming out of nowhere all the time. Mm. If it happens once or twice, if there's some, especially if there's some kind of explanation for it, or maybe it kicks off the plot, that's one thing, but you don't want to have a story that is constantly relying on things just sort of happening, seeming out of nowhere. Um, it's nice to give, uh, it is nice to give people details. We're like, oh yeah, like, hey, that that thing that he used, that gun that he used earlier, I saw that earlier. Uh, I noticed that earlier, so I know it exists. Um, they didn't just pull it out of nowhere. It wasn't just conjured for the story. Uh, things of that nature. So would you only apply this rule to gun specifically or just like no it's any i just using the gun as a because okay. the, the well the the principle is named chekhov's gun and i think it's from a gun in a particular piece of media but mm -hmm. um it, it could be any object it could be any aspect of the world that has been established where a character uses something or there's something in the background or it is a detail that is reincorporated later on um like a piece of technology that mm -hmm. allows for a plot point to happen or we see uh, what's a good example of it maybe you know, there's probably a bajillion there's countless examples but being able to pull one out of the air is just somehow hard for whatever reason i can give you one the dead is the notice. obvious one right yeah the the gun in the uh the winchester the bar yeah. Yeah, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we uh, I think it's important for stories to have elements that you can see and understand that don't contribute to anything because it helps believe in the world that, for example, guy with like an armory, like I better see every one of those guns fire by the end. It's like, no, it's just, just that he has an armory. He has an armory. So yeah. if they can get to that armory and it will help them and they don't use yeah. it, it would be weird. It would be really weird because... I have information of that, but the people in the thing should know even better than I do. So, um, but I, I get the principle, and I do, you know, I like purposeful scripts. They'll help you chop it down to getting it yeah. to, you know, good size and but stuff. But again, that, that second part of that thing I read, don't make false promises. Um, that I think that's ulti ultimately a good idea as well. Don't... Don't try and you don't want you want people to there's a difference between subversion and just lying and knowing that difference can be important. Um, you it, the proper way to subvert an expectation is to do something that maybe wasn't expected, of course, but that makes sense in the world and that makes you go in retrospect. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can see that happening. Yeah, that makes sense. But lying to your audience is just when you you say something that doesn't seem to be true when you present information in, let's say, maybe a title crawl that happens to just flat out not be accurate. Um, things of that nature. You don't want to present the audience with... You You don't want to give the... You don't want your audience to distrust you as you're telling a story. Mm. Well, yeah, when they showed us Luke and TLJ, it's like, this is a lie. You're lying to me. It's like, no, I subverted your expectations. As with a lot of things mm. in that movie. Mm. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, it was men with robots that enslaved most of humanity, and personal shields made guns and laser guns obsolete because it will cause nuclear explosions. Please stop telling me this. It sounds so Thank stupid. You. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. 
men with robots took over, but then they were countered because they had lasers on their robots and everyone used shields and those caused nuclear explosions. I'm like, you need to stop telling me this. <laughs> stop. <laughs> Sounds funny. Oh, boy. Hello, Mola, Fringy, and hi, Rags. Hello. Hello. Hey. Uh, can you name a quote that's unironically good in bad films? Uh, a quote that's unironically good in bad films? Oh, I'm sure there's plenty. I'm sure there's pl I'm sure every bad film has a good quote or three, but um, yeah, how to? Mm. This is how liberty dies with thunderous applause. What could you mean? What do you mean? We're talking about bad films, Mahler. What do you mean? We've already said Revenge of the Sith by our rating is a four, which means it's like five is oh, like yeah, Revenge mid, of the Sith. So. You're right. Yeah, Revenge of the Sith is bad. That's a good line from a bad movie. Um, yeah. I mean, I like the line. I, I'm not sure if... I don't know how good it is. Uh, maybe if we're it's, in a stronger context. Maybe. Um, let me see. What, what about the line from... Let me see. Oh, hi, Mark. That's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that's a pretty good one. I, li I like Hello, Hello Doggy. I mm -hmm. think that's a good that's a good quote right there. Um, what what about TLJ? G a good line from TLJ. I like Ray. Ray. Um, oh, are you talking about Tross or TFA or? Um, uh, we, well, we we talk about. I, I, mean, I was just having fun with the thing, but uh, but what's a what, TLJ? Right? Let, let's take a what's a good line from TLJ, because that movie's shit. So, what do, what do we got? What do we got for old TLJ? Sure, some of, one of us will come up with something. Um... <laughs> let me... Uh, uh, let's see. I'm, uh, let's thinking, see, TLJ, uh, The Last Jedi. Why do you quote. think I came to the most unfindable place in the galaxy? <laughs> Fucking see, hate let me that look at line. Some of these Not, that's how we're going to win. Not fighting what we hate. <laughs> no. I love Hope that is line. like the sun. Yes. The opposite of good. You did it uh, Oh. Legitimately, here's a good one. We are what they grow beyond. That is the true burden of all masters. Yeah, Yoda says that, right? Yeah, I, I legitimately, I do like that line. Mm -hmm. What about... Um... Well, I mean, as has been pointed out, failure is the best teacher. Ignore all the context of it. I'm, I don't like... I, failure is... Is a teacher I like. Failure is the best teacher. I'm not sure about that. The greatest teacher um, failure is like, no, I, I think like success confirms that what you're doing is good. So, um, so success I mean, is the pretty I good guess teacher. Is it's like, well, like 99% success. So that well, you know. I, I think it's the big thing, right? Is like learning from other people's mistakes is probably the best way to do it. I think that yeah. was like Otto von Bismarck had a quote along the lines of, you know, like fools learn from their own mistakes and like. Which I'm not sure that I agree with that as a sentiment, but yeah, learning from other people's mistakes is a uh, that's uh, pretty good. But like we also learn a lot from everyone else's like triumphs as well, right? Ah, uh, yeah, sure, right. Like what works and what doesn't work. I guess it's just the idea that when you fuck up, usually you're not gonna make that mistake. Like if you make a mistake spectacularly and you figure out what it is that you did wrong, <laughs> you're like never gonna make that kind of mistake again. I just want Yoda to walk through a fucking crack dead and say that to everyone there. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good teacher, alright guys? <laughs> you you will make it. Can I have more lessons, man? <laughs> <laughs> Bro, everything you say is just so true. Well, it always feels like you need the caveats, right? Like, failure is a really great teacher as long as you, like, realize what mistake you made. Like, you yeah. you need to pull something out of it. Failing on its own is not gonna help you. And some failures are very catastrophic to your health and wellness, and so... Of like, course, don't yeah. Know. Yeah, yeah. But it's the whole idea that you can't be afraid to fail. Right, you have to be willing to fail to succeed. 
Yep. Oh, well, that's the quote. There are no mistakes. Can't be too so afraid of the thing. accidents. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob Ross. Yeah. <laughs> that's such a great way to view it. Happy accidents. He was a. Uh, he man. He was a. Uh, what a guy, you know. Like what a guy. What a. Uh, what a guy. He Trophy was. human. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, what was the story about him that he like uh that there was a squirrel or something that he saved and then he kept it in his little pocket uh to chill out with him while he was doing his paintings? I did not know that. I think I uh, let me see, was it a squirrel? Uh he cared for injured animals. Yeah. Um people who are nice to squirrels are good people. Well, it's it's the standard meme, right? Like the guy who kills dogs. It's like the fuck is wrong with you? But conversely, yeah. the guy who yeah, the guy people who, who kill dogs, care of little critters. Yeah, um, you, I see some. I watch videos like that sometimes on YouTube, where like just people just being nice to animals and good animal stories, like like the Dodo channel and stuff like that. Um, like rescues and just funny animal stuff. And there will be these yeah these instances where people just like tie up dogs in the woods to die. And just like abandon animals are just, just just awful, horrible things that people mm -hmm. do to. I mean, animals. Yeah, are, but remember there yeah, was but... that time when someone said in chat like that you didn't give a fuck about chickens, like the welfare of chickens because they were a chicken. It's like man. Yeah, but I don't know, man. I like <laughs> animals. Ex expand I'm sorry. your uh, yeah. I really like animals, and it's pretty clear that a lot of animals are like capable of thinking on well, some like... level and feeling on some level. I find spiders creepy, right? But if someone has one in a glass and then blows smoke into that glass from their cigarette and just watches it curl up, that makes me sad. Yeah, of yeah, course that's it just... does. It, it's alive. Yeah. It's alive, you know? I think that happens in Constantine. He lets it go, though. But, uh, yeah, no, it says that, uh, that, that, uh, he cared for injured animals, including armadillos, snakes, alligators, and squirrels. One of which was later featured in several episodes of his show. Oh, that's great. Man, that's really great. This um, is Nazi, my little rescue squirrel. Listen, in chat, someone mentioned, like, many people ridicule those who fail. It's like, yeah, it's kind of the shitty aspect, right? Yeah, it depends how they fail. fail. Sometimes you're um, like, oh, that's, you should have seen that coming. You just. Uh, you know. Sure, but I mean, even then, it's like, I don't know what good comes of it a lot of the time, right? My enjoyment. <laughs> well, I guess that's it, right? You, you're doing it to, to extract some sort of a uh, joy out of it. But, I don't know. Uh, anyone in chat, did you see a video that was near the top of Reddit Is it today or yesterday? I think it was today. This guy is like filming this lady who is speaking in like a really weird way while holding a dog. Like, it's kind of hard to explain, but she's, she doesn't, she seems like she's on drugs. Um, and at one point, she says, like, she's gonna call the police or whatever, and, 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 you know, she's, like, randomly, like, y and you're black, so. And the guy's like, what? what? What does that mean? And then, um, when I, like, that seemed to me, like, the surprising part of the video, if you know what I mean? I was just like, oh, is yeah. that why this is going viral? But no, at one point, he's, he's, uh, he looks at the dog, she's not holding it very well. And he says, like, is that your dog? And she looks at it, looks at him, frowns, and then literally fucking hardcore throws the dog at him. Like... What? Like a basketball. What? Like, like, not... Not at all pleasant at all. Uh... And the dog, like, obviously hits him, hits the floor, and then is just crying and runs to him, not her. Mm. Man. Um... Jeez. He's taking care of the dog now, gave it an Instagram, too. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> Uh, but yeah, she's a dog. fucking nutcase. Um, and it's funny, yeah. basically, well, like, she's she's being weirdly racist, no, so I was already like, eh. But then as soon as she did that to the dog, I was like, right, you're done. You're out. <laughs> like, it's, it's, yeah. the standard, it's the standard meme, right? Like, people who, like, why would you be cruel to a dog? Why? Like, it's a dog, you know? What'd it do to you? You know, it feels like just like, if you're mean to a dog, like a dog that just sits there and's doing his little barkies and runs around and is being a nice little dog. If you want to hurt dogs, like, jeez. Yeah, dogs are just like the quintessential, they trust you and they love you and they want to be around you and they look up to you. And just to take advantage of that and hurt them is just a foul thing. Yeah, you know? like it's, because of course it's bad enough to like hurt any animal for just no fucking reason at all, but like a dog, 
in particular. It's like, man, mm. dogs Those don't, like, do... They didn't do nothing, you know, like, well, unless the They've dog evolved you, right? to like us, so stop yeah, abusing that shit. I mean, that was the whole thing with that, that, uh, that woman, the Instagram influencer with her dog, right? It's like, Ugh. oh, Jesus Christ. And this is when you thought nobody was watching, <laughs> you know, like, yeah. Or, it's hard to, uh, hard to, to walk that one back, you know? Maybe you shouldn't. You should just well, maybe let the dog go first. somewhere else. I guess it's just the interesting thing, right, is that we value human lives above animals, like, for the most part. Um, but yet, if you hurt a dog, that's gonna probably provoke a more visceral response from other people than if you, like, punched a person. I think yeah, sometimes I think it's... we assume that um, when it's a person, maybe there's context there here. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, when it's a dog, though, you're like, what that... the fuck? Yeah, dogs like are dog just seen as so defenseless and trusting and reliant on us in a way it's like hurting a kid you know or a, a child yeah yeah i think i think it slots into the same it's like dude it's innocent like it's a dog it didn't do anything um but i mean it's the thing like where people watch movies right and when the dog dies you're sadder than when the people like yep. like an american psycho when he kills a homeless man like usually people get more upset about the dog I was like, man, that was a human being, but, <laughs> like, the dog has the one that gets you upset. I don't know, I just find it interesting. Yeah. Um, someone said it was a year old. It, it could be, it's just I only saw it today. Oh, uh, like I said, I think today anyway, but, um, man. It was, uh, what got me was the dog's reaction. It was, like, running to the guy for uh, safety. So it was like, like yeah. man, how, what other shit does this woman do to that dog, you know? Wait, let me see if I can find that. You said it was at the top of Reddit. It was, but that changes pretty quick, uh, so. Right. I mean, if you search, uh, like... I'll just say woman throws yeah, dog. I'd probably get it. Yeah. Oh, for fuck's sake, come on. I'm not getting those nodes, bro. Wait. <laughs> I got two more. He's good at it. Oh, no. I think... Oh, I found it, yeah. Oh, what? What? Oh! <laughs> yeah, oh, it's, it's, no! It's not a nice thing to watch, oh. man. No, listen to the little thing. Yeah, it's... So scared. Very upsetting video. Found all the notes, Metal. Nice, good job. Which means all I got left is... a honeycomb and a Jinjo. Well... Rags, you like Jinjos? Where's the last Jinjo? Jinjo? <laughs> Are you talking about Ginger? I love Ginger. <laughs> See, I only did it because I knew he would do something with it. Just... <laughs> I like uh, ginger dressing on salad. That's quite good. I don't put human beings on salads, bro. That's fucked up. Well, maybe you should. Yeah, maybe. Apparently, it's really tasty. That's what I've heard. Also, you collect I, I it, says leave. ginger. I shall leave you now, lads. Mm getting sleepies and, well, getting Yeah. Well, you sleep well, but... Maybe for people that chat are interested, I'm going to play Halo campaign tomorrow on stream. Uh, so if you want to watch that, I'm, I'm going to oh, be there. Okay. And Friday, I'm going to talk about Red Notice on Metal's Forge. Yeah, we got a name now. Isn't that exciting? That's, that is a good name. That is a good yeah. name. No, the dude who got the dog thrown instant shad points for like, this isn't your dog anymore. <laughs> just Ringy immediately doesn't seem to be interested. That. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, uh, this, this video, man. <laughs> but yeah. This uh, poor doggo. Okay, bye, Metal. <laughs> yep. Yeah, see you later, Metal. Try to leave, goddammit. Catch you later, dude. Bye, boy. See ya. Man. Ugh. This just makes me sad. As it should. And, you know what? Uh, I can go for probably another 20 minutes. Does that sound alright to you guys? That sounds totally fine, fine with me, yeah. And are you going to be streaming the, the Halo campaign? Like, I know you said you, you said maybe, right? But I was just going to say because Mel was saying he's doing maybe. it tomorrow, so I don't know if... Maybe. Because um, I might just want to... Because if it's long and I want to play it in my own time, that might be the case. So we'll see how I feel. I would do it tomorrow, but I'm on... I think I've booked in with, like, fucking three streams. I'm not even sure. Oh, geez. Talking about Squid Game with some people. And, uh, Drink is doing his... Oh, wow. I think million sub celebration-y thing. 
So uh, I won't be able to do it tomorrow, but the day after I might stream the Halo campaign. It'll be funny because I know nothing about Halo really. I'll be like, ooh, Master Chef. See what he does. Meister Chef. But until then... Um, not making an excuse for the film, but the reason advanced computers are not allowed is due to them having a Skynet-like incident centuries ago. You'd think this would have come up in the film, like... But I guess not. Because, like, I man, we've been told by, like, 70 people. It's like, alright. The thing is, I didn't even, like, I wouldn't have assumed, so... If you'd said, like, other computers in the world of Dune, I'd be like, well, yeah. And someone's like, no, 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 Gotta no. Be. Yeah. I'd be like, well, oh, there isn't? And they're like, no, because of the robot uprising. And I'd be like, what? <laughs> oh, of course, the robot uprising. Because yeah, yeah. of the robot uprising. Yeah, that of is course. Pretty... Oh, man. Of course, I feel like the I robot missed uprising. A few hey, anyone in chat, do you know where this last honeycomb is? It's being a bitch. I wonder if it's in, like, a earlier room. It might be. Uh, Denis Villeneuve obtained a restraining order against Closer Look for 12% stalking and harassment. He also has to change 12% of all locks in his house. Oh my goodness. Hopefully he makes it. That's an important number. Yeah, man. I, from what I hear, everything happens around that point. I've made a tiny rewrite changes the entire movie. Yeah, that... That was possibly the worst part of the video, because we just had to listen to him be like, Make my movie, please. I don't wanna. I appreciate the enthusiasm, though. The fucking hubris you need to say, you know what, I can write Dune better than Frank Herbert. Not even Herbert's son was up to that task. Hi, Rags. Hello. What's the thing, um... There is a level of framing you're going to want to do, even if you fully believe that you can outdo Frank Herbert, I guess. But, like, you you know, I don't know why you wouldn't want to tweak instead of literally fucking writing a different movie and then just being like, pick mine, replace his. It's like, oh, dude. Top. Yeah. Um... Imagine proposing to add your fanfic instead of the things not brought over from the book. What a... What a hack. I'm gonna make Frank Herbert's story better. I would say that's a... That would be a, a... Seems like a better endeavor for a video to be like, Okay, here's what they didn't put in from the book that I think would have made the movie smoother. And here's my suggestion for how you could possibly get it in. Mm -hmm. Um... Going strictly for... Yeah. Like, you, you just... You're invested in the adaptation. And you appreciate that Denis made the same decisions, you know? It's just that you disagree with some of them, as opposed to, can you please make my movie? <clears throat> what is everyone's favorite Disney villain song? Uh, Pink oh. Really good. oh, yeah, that's instantly the first one that came to mind. Yeah. Um, I really like uh, Frollo's song. Uh, the I forget what it's called, the fire one. Or he's, um, you know, by the fire about Esmeralda and stuff like that. Um, uh, let's see, what else? Um, hmm. I would say, there's one from, let's see, it's because Pocahontas comes to mind. Uh, let me see. Which one? It would probably be... Hmm. Because I, because I have to think about the song in my head and play it for a moment. Um, are we not? I'm, I'm kind of treating the Pixar ones separately. So. Well, Pixar ones don't usually have like a, like a musical number, <laughs> if at all. Um. I really like the the savages one from Pocahontas. Um, I like what was Ursula's one? Uh, the one about making a deal. Um, yeah, I remember gotcha. liking that one. I can't. I just can't. Poor unfortunate souls. That's what oh it's yeah, 
You poor unfortunate soul. I and I know it's not one. Disney, but we have to give an honorable mention to yes, like we do. all the songs in Anastasia. Especially uh main villain song. Why am I forgetting in the dark of the night, right? Yeah. Dun, 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 and just pulling up that clip from Little Mama, it's like, oh yeah, that's uh they're remaking this one. Yeah. Yeah. Melissa McCarthy's gonna be us. Uh, so. uh, <laughs> <laughs> um that song, by the way, is the most, like, people be like, that doesn't count, but you'd listen to it and be like, yeah, yeah, that does count. You, you'd watch it as well, it feels like it fits right in. Um... Yeah, there you go. We've Pretty talked about that. Alright, oh, well, Deliver Us is fucking amazing, but I don't know if that's a villain song. I wouldn't call it a villain song. That'd probably be the Plagues one, I guess. Which yeah, is Deliver also Us really is great. the is the the song the juice the, from a juice perspective. Yeah, that's uh exactly that one. Uh, man, that is one. That song is phenomenal. I I really like Deliver Us. It's a really good one. Uh, I mean, the, the Aladdin's got a whole bunch of good ones. Aladdin does. Yeah. Lion King's got a bunch of bangers. Uh, and, and especially when you start to talk about how visuals are incorporated into a lot of the songs, it. Mm -hmm. Some of the some just shoot up. So, yeah, it's yeah, a lot of really really good ones that we've got going on here. A lot of good ones. Um I'm Just looking, we've got like a selection left from the Dune stream and then we got a selection from this stream. And then we get back on with our normal stuff, so I feel like we'll just... That's what'll happen on Saturday. Uh, okay. Uh... Because okay, I just finished the, the, the banjo level as well, so I feel like, I don't know, this, this feels like a natural end point. Uh, you guys are right that? Poetic. That's fine with me. Very well. Um... All shall be gotten to. Believe me, the, the overall the list time. is getting shorter, everyone, and one day... You'll be listening, and I will say, that's it. And you'll be like, what? Yeah. Because it'll be so unreal. Yes. Uh, hmm, what else what is to be said? I, I'm interested in streaming Halo Infinite. We'll see if that happens. Um, this Saturday, uh, we'll be doing one of these streams in place of the normal EFAP, and then you'll be getting weird things happening because of scheduling issues. I think... I posted them in our group chat because, like, we got, got. Basically, you're going to get two EFAPs in a week and a week without an EFAP because of the way we're trying to make the numbers work, all right? Trust me, this is yeah. for you, okay, chat? This is for you. Yeah, we're doing this on your behalf, all right? Um, I'm still working on things. I believe Rags and Fring are doing the same. Uh, so. yes. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, yep. there'll be something soon, but I don't know what soon means. <laughs> Others said. Keep your expectations a little lower this Christmas, because we, we haven't been able to sort out as much as we did last time. Um, but you'll still be getting a Christmas Eve at movies as a guarantee. I just, uh, I don't know how much stuff may happen in, uh, as well. Because it's also difficult to, to organize guests as well, because everyone's super busy in December. Yeah, once Christmas rolls around, it gets tough. Even before then, because everyone's but like making January, plans. Everybody slows down a bit. Yes. And things will charge right up, I'm sure of it. But uh, we got big topics on the way. Obviously, Spooderman and the Halo Infinite campaign. They're going to be big boys to talk about in terms of just where the fuck are we right now with games and mm -hmm. movies. Um, but yeah, you know, more will be caught up in future. Thank you all for joining us. Thank you so much for your Absolutely. donations. And, uh, well, we're going to see you next time. That's right. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.